everybody. Uh, <laughs> run a little behind this morning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I always underestimate the start of Seventh Continent setup and cameras and stuff. Man, I always underestimate it. I remember starting late last time we started the three curse run we did on the channel. But hello, everyone joining live. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Uh, so Jot's on a train with Spotty 4G. Such a shame. Oh, no. Oh, no. At least you're not on an island trying to uh, get rid of a curse. <laughs> that would suck. Yeah. It'll be archived on YouTube. You can watch later and troll me in the comments. Uh, but I do appreciate you being here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you can join us uh, tomorrow. I'm assuming we survive and we make it to tomorrow. I'm assuming this playthrough series will go into next week. Again, like our previous Seventh Continent playthroughs, I have not played this curse. Um, I also, huge warning, I haven't played Seventh Continent in like eight months. So I'm coming at this uh, rusty. And I, I have notes, but those notes I took like before the last playthrough. So I do have some things jotted down that I learned from previous playthroughs. But I'm not, I didn't really take much notes while we played. Uh, I didn't go back and watch my footage. So, yeah, I'll be a little rusty in this one, but I just want to get Seventh Continent back to the table, so we're here streaming it. We're playing the Forbidden Sanctuary. Thank you to our supporters and producers over on Patreon for voting on that poll, those who are fans of this game and voted on the curse we are playing. Uh, Forbidden Sanctuary was Sanctuary uh, beat out the other three options, which were the first wave of content I had. There is still the Swamp of Madness I've yet to play. And then um, I put up a poll originally voting on the, those two curses. Uh, and then I remembered that I, I was making, I did make notes about what expansions to buy before I played again. And then I just forgot all about it. I forgot about ordering. Uh, I forgot about going and checking what was available. I remember we sat at the la end of the last playthrough series deciding what expansions I should buy, which ones I shouldn't. And then I forgot. So I put up the poll for those two two curses, and I was going to play this a, a couple weeks ago, and Swamp of Madness originally won. Then, as that poll was up, I realized, wait a second, I forgot about the expansions. I should get those too. So I researched, I, I got a few, um, and I threw them in, and then I realized I have a couple more curses. So we reposted the poll, adding on a couple curses, and I, I, I don't know, I, I, I didn't know what I expect to happen, but for, uh, Forbidden Sanctuary won. I thought one of the newer ones would win. Uh, just because it's like newer content, more exciting. This game has been around for a bit. I figured people want to see the newer stuff. But everyone knows I'll probably play through it all on the channel at some point. Uh, so no fears there. But that does mean we have some expansion stuff shuffled in. Uh, Sajat says you should buy all the stuff, obviously. Well, here's the problem, Sajat. They, they don't have all the stuff available anymore. So back when I was looking, you could still get the white uh, what goes up must come down box uh, in Canada. But some other countries it was sold out. Well, now when you go to their website, it, it's just gone, at least in, in the Canadian side of things. That, that is not an option. You cannot buy either the Kickstarter black starter box or the white uh, second Kickstarter whatever expansion. Uh, so that means there are some exclusive Kickstarter curses that I don't think I'll ever have. And I don't care to chase down. I don't want to overpay for them or anything silly. Uh, but now they've packaged stuff separately. So we'll, we'll look at some of that actually. Uh, it's interesting coming at Seventh Continent a little later. I see a lot of um, people posting things about Classic Edition. Like it's it's a now now a rarity that people have the black. Um, I have it, the Kickstarter one, uh, the black box. So there's some stuff that's gone lost now, unless you get it secondhand uh, for new players coming and finding Seventh Continent. So if you're here, I may have some things. Some cards, some character cards, some options that maybe you can't even get anymore because I have the Kickstarter original um, base box uh, and uh, the Forbidden Sanctuary and whatnot I bought from the Kickstarter. So I don't know if it's going to be a little different than the retail Forbidden Sanctuary. But... I'm going to find it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I probably did the same speech last time, but I feel rusty. I feel worried. Uh, I may have learned a whole bunch of stuff playing those curses before, but I remember when I take a break from this game and I come back, I'm like, I feel like lost. Like setting this up, I was even like, I read through the rules again. 
And I was like, oh yeah, that happens. Oh, that's how items work. Oh yeah. I've done so many other games since. It's like, you forget. You forget a lot of stuff. I'm going to forget the weird things, the traps that I got trapped by, the choices that we made before. If you guys remember stuff from a previous playthrough that we did, and I should remember things, feel free to throw them at me in the chat. But keep the spoilers very to a minimum, like to nothing. Unless it's something we already did in a previous playthrough, then, then feel free to spoil it. If it's something I've seen and I've forgotten, uh, if you remember, feel free to spoil. All right. Uh, okay, so on this... Uh, Stop here. So uh, it's going to send me to the Canadian one. Yeah, Canadian English. Um, depending on your location, I remember looking at this at the end of the last playthrough. When you go to the shop here on SeriousPulp.com uh, and you, you, you start searching through, it, it will redirect you based on, I guess, your IP to whatever country. So they may have different stock levels at the different warehouses in different countries, the distributors or whatever. But now, this is all my choice was for the what goes up must come down. So now they sell what's called the What Goes Up Must Come Down Classic Edition, but unfortunately it doesn't come in the box, it's just it's a bundle of the separate curses you can buy and, and some extra cards and a, and a pack of sleeves. So I don't have all the fancy stuff, I'm missing curses and stuff that you would have got in that second Kickstarter if you backed the, the big white box. Because uh, that white box is not available anymore, uh, at least at retail. I, I didn't want to go paying secondhand prices or anything for it. I was just like, nah, I'll just put it all in the order. Just buy it direct. Um, so, this is what I got. And well, I guess you can just see it here. So, in here, we have the Prison of Clouds curse. The vein of something, something about the underground. Uh, does it show it here in a list? Here does it show it. Oh, right here. Veins of the Earth. And then I have this Forgotten Passages. I don't think that's a curse. Because it says it only comes with two curses. Uh, this says, you thought you'd been around the seventh continent and know it inside and out? No. Oh, I've been around and I, I don't remember Jack, so I don't know it inside and out. Uh, with this expansion, you'll discover that it still hides some of the mysteries from you. Okay. Oh, this is the characters? Okay, so this gives you the characters and some cards to spice it up, I guess. All right, I need to check the chat. I see the chat going here. <laughs> you never troll me. <laughs> Well, it's a seven con, and I expect a little bit of that. Uh, Dragon Shadow is a step one. Find the goat. Feels here. Good morning. And Dragon's asking if I got Sands of Shirox Explore it yet. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Is that is that arriving to people right now? Might be a little bit longer if it's if it's if you're if, when you're in the U.S. and you got it. It might take a little bit extra for it. Get to come to Canada, like a little bit of time. Uh, but I haven't got a notification that's shipped yet or anything. Being told this curse is not really long. I think Sirius Paul promised that some of the Kickstarter would not be available in retail. That's good. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I, I don't need it all. I'm not. I'm not worried about missing curses that some other people have. Don't care. There's so many other great games out there, like. I, I don't I don't need other little exclusive curses. That's fine. I feel like I have enough with this game that I'll played it out. And then Seventh Citadel is coming, so like there's that. There's always more Tainted Grail if you're into this type of game. There's like so so much other stuff. I'm not. I don't need it all. I'm I'm fine without that stuff. Uh, I just bought whatever bundles they had. Um, Sanctuary is fun. Swamp is great. So this will be great. Awesome. Uh, and this just says, we intentionally played curses five to six months apart to forget things. Makes the game so much more enjoyable. I'm, I'm hoping it will. It's just on stream, like, yeah, you guys, if you've just watched, if people watching this later, I guess, or who just recently watched one of our past playthroughs might assume I know stuff that I, like, it's like, dude, he just did this. Like, how does he forget? Yeah, it's because it's like eight months apart and uh, some of those other curses were even further uh, in the past, obviously. Um, so yeah, and I spread some of those out where it had, had a quite a bit of space between them. So, um, yeah, so I'm coming at this kind of like rusty, th certain things will come back to me as I play them, but, um, there is one controversial puzzle in this game. Some people are not happy about it. In Andy, is it in this curse? Is it in this forbidden sanctuary curse? You're saying there's a controversial puzzle or in general in, in the, the content somewhere. 
I may have already done it if, if it if it's just a generic puzzle that, that you could stumble upon in any curse. Because I, I did find some. <laughs> oh, Dim, Dim's here. Only found your channel this week after researching Alan's End and ended up watching your whole playthrough. Keep up the good work. It's excellent content. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, anyone has tips to remove crease from playmat? So annoying. Oh, there's a playmat for this game. Uh, there's was crease. That sucks. Uh, use an iron. Can you not just use an iron? Look that up though. I'm not sure if I've ever ironed out creases out of like a if it's a like a rubber um, like kind of mouse pad playmat neoprene. But I swear I have had to do that before. I forget which one I came that was kind of bent. But I, I think an iron, but there's like, you got to be careful with the settings. I don't remember if it had to be like low or high or what. Just just Google that. Google that. Don't don't take my word for it. I, I, but I think there's something to do like you can do with an iron on a certain setting or something. But maybe someone else in the chat will know. Maybe someone else in the chat has an answer for you, Juan. Myself and Dice is here. Hello, hello. Daniel says, like Jon Snow, I know nothing about this game. <laughs> thank you, Daniel, again, for becoming a Patreon. I appreciate your support. Uh, thank you also to Eric Braun, who recently, and the Dis Geek Podcast, uh, our most recent Patreons. Thank you. Just reminded me. I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, it's Tate and Grill's second wave. All right, all right, all right. Oh, it's in this curse, Andy. Okay. It only happens in this curse, the controversial quotes, action. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Maybe I'll get to it. Maybe I see it. Maybe I don't. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, Daniel, that's you. Okay. Okay. I know you're in the uh, Discord. I didn't realize that was you. Daniel, thank you so much. The this Geek Podcast. Awesome. I assume it's a podcast, not just your email. <laughs> not just, that's, you just thought of that name generically. That's cool. I'll, I'll look it up and check it out if, uh, if it is still a running podcast. Not just an old email you have from, from a, an old podcast or something. That's cool. Uh, that's cool. Oh, it's about Disneyland. This Geek. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah I, I don't know either i've never been to disneyland or disney world or anything like that okay never mind never mind <laughs> anyone who's interested in a disneyland podcast though uh, i do know some fans that i will let know uh, but yeah there you go <laughs> that's cool i'm all about the amusement parks like uh, i love me some cedar fair and cedar point Let's uh never 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 desire to go the Disney route. I like me some big record breaking coasters. That's what I like. <sighs> Game is amazing, but you really need to get the survival aspects so not keep dying and repeating content. True. True. Yeah, that's that's agreed. Yeah, you gotta keep alive. This is a survival game, that's for sure. Similar to Tainted Grail, same aspect to that. It's a survival game, primarily. Think you're on an adventure, but no, you have to live or there is no adventure. You have to survive. Everything's always trying to kill you. Okay, uh, the other thing I got, the other thing I got on here is, where do we go? Uh, I grabbed this. The Allies and Foes Pack. So now I have Comfort Creatures, Fear the Devourers, I have whatever those green and purple plant things are called, uh, let's see, the Flying Roots, and I have uh, Facing the Elements, which I've put all in here. I don't know if I'll do the Flying Roots main cards, we'll talk about that, because I, I don't get what's happening there or why you take them and why you wouldn't, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but we will play other playthroughs of the game, so maybe I'll mix them in, or, or, or actually start with them. There's some, like, starter cards or something, uh, which we'll discuss in a second. Uh-oh. Where is my... Oh, there it is. Okay. Have the cards. Have to find where I put them. We'll talk about those. There was some other stuff 
uh, that I got. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, also, I threw on the order. I remember you guys saying before I didn't need it. Some people were saying to get it. Um, but for me, teaching other players uh, and relearning the game after I haven't played in a while, which I should have done. I just didn't have time. I should have played through this uh, before jumping back into the game, and I probably will play this before the next curse. I know it's very tutorial. I probably won't need to do it. You guys said I didn't need it, blah, blah, blah. But I still bought it because I thought I can use it to teach other players if I were to sell my game when I'm done playing it. Uh, I would like this to be in the in the content because I do agree that that is probably a better way to learn the game Even though I haven't tried it just the way it was explained to me that that's a better way to learn the game than telling someone Yeah, start with voracious goddess. That's how you should learn the game Because I know a lot of players who got rid of their copy of the game after trying to learn the game with voracious goddess because they were frustrated so uh, I wanted to just get that so my set was a little more complete and be nice and new player friendly or if I had lent it to a friend or something like that but after buying it and opening it yesterday, I realized there's some good stuff in here uh, that we may use today. We may use. Not worth it for new players. Now that you've done a full curse, it's a waste of time and not fun. Ah, okay. E even, if, even if I took like a year off from playing Juan, you still wouldn't recommend to pull it out to just relearn the game? Or you think the rule books is not enough and, and that? But there is something in here we're going to use. We're going to use, I think. I think we're going to use. So let's jump down to the table here. Uh, and you can see. So here's, here's the stuff I got from the bundle. Oh, I also bought the... Uh, I needed this to, for more storage. I bought. They sell like an empty box. <laughs> so I bought this box. I'm just using the lid right now just to store this stuff in to bring it on video here. But I got, got the sleeves. Got a couple sleeves to help us out. We may need to use those. Uh, so yeah, Comfort Creatures, Crystal Song. This is all the stuff I add to my collection for those who are watching the previous playthroughs and know what I have. Uh, so yeah, so they come like this now. I want to show this. So this is only one curse, I guess, from the What Goes Up Must Come Down expansion. So you can buy this separate, I believe. You don't have to buy the whole bundle. So if somebody told you like, ah, if you can only buy one curse, like this one was the best, if they said. You could just buy it. You don't have to get the full bundle. Um, but they are a little bigger. So Prison of the Clouds, like... These are bigger than normal curses. Like, these are what my uh, Forbidden Sanctuary were like. They were, like, thin. Um, but the uh, ones from the What Goes Up Must Come Down are bigger, and they contain more stuff. A lot more cards and things, uh, which was interesting. And then we have this other stuff. So on the back, they kind of explain what's in there. I don't know if this is the way these things came or not, or if they were all just included in the white box. But this, this is the junk that I added. I'll get rid of these boxes, but I just want to show uh, how, how this stuff arrives now. So it's just, it's all sold like individual packs. And you can get the Crystal Song is just like a super thin uh, individual little pack. And then they have like the small little expansions that look like so. There's a little cute expansion. Okay. Just for those who are curious, who are like, oh, I, I just got the Classic Edition. What the hell else is there? Those are the things. Those are the things. <laughs> um, Black Cheval says, I wouldn't really get the, the, the curse, I think, the, uh, the Crystal Song, or play it, but it's really great for new players, but playing just a little bit works as a refresher for me. That's what I was thinking. I think I could use it as a refresher, but also as a teaching tool, or if I give it to a new player and say, here, play this game solo, but start with the Crystal Song. Like, that'll help you. I think that curse the least interesting part of the entire package. Remember, it was supposed to be an easy teaching tool. It's not meant to be like a full, full crazy curse to blow your mind. Uh, okay, okay. Designed to last about an hour or so, so we could see purpose in playing it to recall the rules before going into curse. Yeah, that's what I, I was thinking for. But, but, uh, it does come with some modes. Um, the heck is it? Let's see. Oh, right here. Uh, okay. Yeah, and they come with rules. So here's the rules. I don't know if we'll need any of this stuff, but I, I did shuffle in the content from these expansions in there. So I'll just have those nearby in case we need some rules for special cards. Uh, but you get this little paper inside that tells you. Okay, you can throw this stuff in, even if you're not playing with the curse, just throw all the cards in, whatever. Um, 
But here, it, it comes with these modes. Uh, we're obviously not playing there's a traitor among us, so if you have two or more players, you can throw a traitor mechanic in. Uh, I don't know how it works. Don't care. But uh, for those interested, there, it does come with gameplay stuff that you can use with any curse. So you can use these traitor cards. Okay, we're not using those, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I thought that was neat. Um, but then there's this prodigy mode. And I think I'm going to play with this uh, because I, yeah, like I like the challenge and all, but for streaming, uh, you guys convinced me last time to use the easy mode, the little, uh, this, this triple seven card. All it is is like a free life. I, I don't think it really makes the game, like, it doesn't make the constant day-to-day -day play of it easier. But if we just, you know, walk into like, I don't know, some big stone rock falls and crushes our head and we're dead and the playthrough's over... Uh, this gives us like a, okay, you can continue on. It's like a one free pass, like an extra man, a one-up, uh, if you will. So we're, we're going to play with this. I remember last time you guys voted on it. I, I think we used it. I don't remember if we used it. But either way, it'll make us get a little further in the playthrough. We'll see more stuff. That's the way I want to play. But there's this prodigy mode. There's prodigy mode compatible with easy mode. I like the way they call it easy mode. Like it doesn't. I think having one life extra isn't doesn't make the game any easier. You still fail tests and everything the same way. Uh, this mode makes the game easier. Before the game begins, you may shuffle the five learning from your mistakes skill cards into the action deck. There's also a mortal mode that comes in here, compatible with the prodigy mode. If you're more into exploring than surviving, you may choose to play in immortal mode if you do take an 888 card before the game begins. So that is like... That is like adventure mode in Lord of the Rings Journeys Middle Earth, where if you just want to enjoy exploring and chatting and, and talking to people in that game and not just like constantly the fighting and the dying and the fighting and the dying and all that stuff and you're just like i want to go do everything in the game i just want to enjoy the story have a good time sit back with a glass of wine and, and, and enjoy the story part of it you can play adventure mode in that game and i feel like immortal mode is that probably which i'm gonna look at what is 888 i have not looked at it yet but You could get the medallion of resurrection plus two. A medallion that you wear regularly, rigorous, oh, religiously, religiously, sorry. Uh, if you lose the game, take a 699 card. I'm not going to do that, but obviously it's a medallion of resurrection. I don't know what the plus two is. I guess you get to do it twice, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure what this is, but uh, yeah, it's something to make it your immortal. I'd assume you can never die, maybe. I don't know. I'm sure some of you guys know, but that's okay. We're not going to do that. I don't want the playthrough to go forever. Because if anyone saw my Icy Maze playthrough, and this may happen in this one, we may spend like 8, 9, 10 hours before even finding anything to do with the curse. <laughs> Shoot me now. All right, uh, so we'll see. And then also... They have hardcore mode. Even if you manage to lift a curse, you can still try to play it again later in hardcore mode if you feel up to it. Take a 650 card before you begin the game. So it adds these new modes. So buying the crystal song, even if you don't want to play the extra curse to learn, there's stuff, they put stuff in here for players. Like they put stuff in here. So if you're, any of this stuff interests you, there's another reason to buy the, it's a cheap, it's cheap. Uh, the crystal song. So that's why I just threw it on the order. I figured like, ah, I don't remember. It was like 10 bucks. Oh, it's 19 Canadian. So like, yeah, like 13 US probably or, or, or 14 US. Um, I think the plus two is just for fun naming. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, Justin, yes. No, you're not supposed to be drinking wine while you're watching me, but you can totally. I just meant for a player who wants to put it on uh, immortal mode. Maybe it's more like super chill. Like, you know, like no matter what happens with that, if I draw a bear when I'm hunting, I don't have to worry. I'm good. Um, but anyways. So these learning from the mistakes cards. So these work with easy mode. And this interests me. <laughs> Before you start the game, you may deci uh, decide to play in prodigy mode. You may shuffle this into the action deck. And that's all these say that. Learning from your mistakes. You may discard this during the cost step of an action you're involved in in order to apply the following effect. You reduce the cost by three. Look at on the side, though. This, this feels like super cheating. Uh, look at these, like, 
is always a success and more like <laughs> but it does add these five cards in i guess they also help you have uh we got aggressive skills or any stamina skill will stealth vengeance aggressive stamina um but we're gonna shuffle these in because i'm i'm just yeah i don't care <laughs> so i need to sleeve these guys uh but yeah i was just reading that yesterday and was like oh Okay, so this, this expansion is not completely useless to me because I'm going to use that stuff because I haven't played in a while and I just want to play it that way. Um, so we're going to try them out here. Oh, Bernardo's here. Oh, let me scroll up. Bernardo says, greetings from a police station. Talking with Somerset and Mills, who looks just like Brad Pitt, about an unusual case they are dealing with. Not sure, not sure. <laughs> but hello, Bernardo. Uh, in my opinion, the game got too bloated. He says, it's a good game, but suddenly I feel it has too many notes. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's one thing where like I, in previous playthroughs, you guys were always asking like, do you have the white box? Do you have this stuff shuffled in? And, and I was always, no, I don't. And they were like, oh, okay. So then you're only going to see this or that when you hunt. Or you're only going to see this or that when you're digging for this. You won't see this cool thing or that cool thing. Um, there's also uh, optional characters. So I have some different characters now. Uh, and we're going to talk about our character setup. Um, but we're throwing these in. Oh, okay. So we're playing Prodigy mode. We're playing Easy mode. Uh, yeah, I just... I feel weird saying it. I don't, I'm not usually that type, but uh, we're doing it. I, I just, for the playthrough sake, uh, I have the time. We're going to play through it uh, however long it kind of takes or however long it is before we die twice, I guess. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll just see as much as we can. I'm okay if we don't complete this curse, though. I am totally okay if we get, you know, far-ish and we just learn a bunch of stuff, see some new cool things. And hopefully shuffling in all these extra little expansions, we'll see some different things too. And so Jot's correct. We're also playing chat is here for you mode. That's true. That's true. Maybe I, like, these are the things. So like, do I need to shuffle those in then? I don't know. It's just I assumed, because we're playing an expansion curse, uh, less people will have played it. And maybe some less viewers too, as opposed to playing a curse that's in like the base game. As you play a curse in the base game, way more people have played it by now, or multiple times even, or you know maybe even not beaten it, but played it like six times, that kind of thing. Lots of information is gathered from playing those beginning curses over and over again, and in general, more people will play it. But having a forbidden, uh, I don't know if the forbidden one was a Kickstarter exclusive, or Swamp of Madness. I think one of them was, right? Or is it Icy Maze? Maybe it's one of those three. One of those three, I don't think you can get now, but I could be wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it was one we already played. You look in the store. No, I see Forbidden Sanctuary is there. You can buy that still. You can buy that still. What else? Um, oh, yeah, we're going to have weather effects too. I, I don't know how that works, but we'll figure it out. Um, oh, I did not buy the Path of Repentance. That's one I was just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> That's just a little box one. I don't have that. Uh... Yeah, maybe it's a Swamp of Madness. I, I don't see the Swamp of Madness to purchase. Or, or the Icy Maze. Oh, there it is. Icy Maze I found. Swamp was exclusive. Icy Maze and a Swamp are, are one are expansion. Yeah. I know they're expansions, but I know they're not available anymore. One of them. I see Icy Maze is available to purchase, but I don't see Swamp of Madness. Yeah, so Swamp of Madness is one that maybe even less people will have played. So having help from the chat, I just assume there won't be as much. But general gameplay, yes. I, I do appreciate it. You guys will remind me like, idiot, you have this item. Or, duh, look at this ability in your satchel you totally forgot about. That stuff I appreciate. <laughs> and yes, that does help out a lot. Uh, let's see. Oh, Brian's dealing with snow. Yeah, it's snowing here a little bit, but not, not that crazy or anything. But I hear there might be snow here before Christmas, like on Christmas Eve, like a big dump of snow. That'll be amazing. 
That's like a rarity. Definitely a rarity here. Usually it's like snow happens in November or December a little bit, but then it's like for some reason there's a, a, you know, a warm spell right before Christmas and then there's like no snow on Christmas anywhere. Just looks like crap. But yeah, I love me snow on everything. For Christmas. Extra lights, snow, all good. And Eagle Len says, if you're lending it out to new players, Crystal Curse is a must. Exactly what I was thinking. Uh, it splits out learning mechanics from learning strategies. I didn't even have it at the time, and I played it and played the first island wrong a few times. Yeah, see, that's the kind of thing. Like, uh, Voracious Goddess, this doesn't, like... I know there's that, like, tutorial island at the beginning that's supposed to be, like... That is supposed to be, like, the teaching part of the Voracious Goddess because the where they start you on the island is, like, a new player-friendly little setup. But the whole curse in general, like, once you're off that island, even getting off that island, I remember the very, very first time when Mel and I were, like, learning that game together. We had trouble on that little learning island, figuring out, like, how does this work? What does this mean? Even after reading the rules a couple times, it wasn't that smooth. But uh, Crystal Song, I'm hearing, is, like, so straightforward, which is good. <sighs> Scott says, uh, it's fine to add these cards in, I guess. Uh, this curse can get mean. And Swamp was exclusive, okay. You know the channel Watch It Played? Yes, yes I do. I've met Rodney Smith in person. I know him. He's a fellow Canadian. I don't live near him at all. His igloo is, is further away from my igloo. He's on, on the other side of the country. Um, but yes, I, I've met him at Gen Con. Very, very nice guy. <laughs> no worries, Daniel. See you in a bit. Uh, so the expansion content, all of it. Everything I just showed you, all that stuff shuffled in. All that stuff shuffled in. So, brings me to my... So we have, uh, oh yeah, facing the elements. So like lots of stuff to talk about here before we get going. Uh, so I have facing the elements shuffled in. This mini expansion introduces a new mechanism, weather cards. A weather card is put into play next to the satchel and journal card and its effects impact the entire board as long as it remains in play. There may only be one weather card in play at any given time. Then you must return all, uh, when you must return all the cards on the board, also return w the weather card that is in play and remove the corresponding figure from the board. It tells you here, you may prepare them in the game box before you start your game, follow the same guidelines with cards from the base game, and make sure that for each number, green adventure cards are placed before any gold. So it's the thunderstorms, blizzards, tornadoes, brave the elements, and hope that you can survive their fury. So this stuff's all in there, so we're going we're gonna to learn some of this stuff here. Uh, I've not seen it yet in a playthrough, obviously. On uh, the Flying Roots. If you choose to play this expansion, shuffle the four, the Strange Encounter action cards in the action deck before the game begins. You may incorporate exploration cards from this expansion, even if you initially decide to not play with the Strange Encounter cards. When you are to return all the cards on the board, remove any Flying Root figures that are in play. And then there's this mastery thing. Mastery X, so it's like a red diamond. If you draw X cards or less in the action deck during the cost step and the action is a success, you may shuffle some or all of these cards back in the action deck during the skill step. What the hell is that? Oh, when you're choosing a card to put to hand during the skill step. Ah, okay, I get it, I get it. So after you're done, you're like, okay, we can take cards to hand, you can, you can shuffle them back in. I'll probably need some help getting used to doing that, if we see that, but... So this talks about strange phenomena are at work on the continent, like these plants that grow to full size before tearing themselves from the earth itself to explore the world around them. When, whether they help or hinder you, these flying roots will certainly have some surprises in store. Wow, okay. Uh, Justin's out too, want to say, see all and say hi. Peace, no worries, thank you, thank you so much. Um... Yeah, Armageddon, I don't have Armageddon. That didn't come in that bundle. I can't find that to buy, so that's okay. But that one's exclusive too. So yeah, if you don't have the white box, you don't have that expansion. Simply explains what the red diamond numbers mean. Oh, okay. Hopefully we, we have some here. Uh, that makes these cards, I understand these cards a little better then. Um, but what I'm playing with, this was recommended last time, and I totally forgot about it. I didn't even know about this in the box for a while. Because um, I think it was, these were like this in my box. 
So I had these cards in there, there's a whole bunch of them, and I just ignored them and never looked at the back. Then you guys explained to me when playing solo, you should play with one of these. So you can even like draw your own face here or put something there or whatever. Um, I probably could get funny with some of the Pandemic Season Zero uh, you know, stuff there. That would be kind of funny. But anyways, freely choose five character cards, character specific cards among those available. And then I may use up to four fire figures simultaneously during the game. And then the movement thing, if you move to terrain card where there's a fire figure, I, I like it's extra, like minus move. Like I reduce the cost of moving, which will be good. So I, I don't know. This was like I was told like I'm crazy because I didn't play with these in solo before. Um, but I, I don't know the cards well enough and whatnot. So I reached out in the Discord uh, asking like George A and, and whatnot, do they have any recommendations for cards? George gave me some recommendations, but also sent me a link. I was looking on Board Game Geek too. But he sent me a link to a thread that I had not seen before uh, and I, when I was trying to look it up. Because I'm not a pro, I haven't played with all the characters in the game. Plus I got some new characters added to my collection. Um, but I just wanted to show... Oh, where is it? One sec, sorry. I'll bring it up here. Open. So there's a thread on Board Game Geek. Uh, for those who are curious, called Best Solo Skill Cards. I, I read some of this, but uh, Isaac Newton here took the time, and it's awesome, did this last year. So it includes some stuff from the newer expansions that I just recently got. But it talks about if you want to go for like the best item strategy, here's the five cards he recommends and the downsides to that. You know, residual cards that don't go away, which I'm all about, but here's the ones he recommends. You know, replace them if you're not playing the appropriate curse. The problem is I don't know what they mean by that. Like, I'm assuming he's talking to people who've played all the curses. It's like, oh, you know you need this action a lot. Take this card. I don't. But if you guys want to help me pick cards based on this uh, curse, I'm okay if you played it already and you have some tips. It's all good. I'm just here to enjoy the, the, the story and the adventure of this, this expansion. However short or long it may be. Um, but... Here's a list of the best cards, literally, okay? And writes up a nice little thing about each one and explains why they're so good, okay? So I read through that part. I read through these and I'm like, I don't know what to pick. I'm like lost. But based on some overlap, based on what he recommends as his favorite list and other people's recommendations in this thread, just talking generically, there's no real spoilers here, at least that I could find uh, or that I noticed. Um, but yeah, some good recommendations, plus George A's recommendations in the Discord. But at the time, I didn't have the expansions that added the extra characters to give me some of the cards. So one important card is Solitary. And you guys are going to help get involved here on what cards I take. But I think I have four of them decided. So Solitary, I was told, this is like a must. It's funny, it's named Solitary to play with Solo. If you are the only character on your train card, you may discard this during the cost step in order to get two stars or a seven success, whatever it's called, during the result step. Okay, it also has a seven, which is awesome, and on a half star there, and it's a will card, okay? That's going in for sure. And I was told Scholar seems to be pretty good. I don't know if, this is the thing, for Forbidden Sanctuary, correct me if I think any of these are good, or was recommended that they're good, and they might not be, because a lot of it was generic stuff, where it was like, oh, play this, or this, or this, and it's like, but, but I don't know what, for which quest, right? Uh, so Scholar, the following effect applies as long as you have this in hand. So if you're doing the Decipher, I think it is, the Think, and the, uh, the Low Five. <laughs> I don't know what one that is. Uh, you reduce the cost and or take a success. Okay, so Scholar seemed to be recommended by most of the threads I found and by George A. Then the other one is this one. We know this one. I think we played with this one before. Uh, this card's awesome. The following effect applies as long as you have this in hand. So um, as long as I have this in hand, it has a star and a half star, which is awesome. But I'm holding this in hand a lot, I think. Randomly take one card from this card pile and shuffle it back in the deck every time you eat. So if I'm taking that food action, I get to do that once. Gourmet? Okay, so Josh recommended Gourmet also, okay? So we're, we're on a good, good start here. Now that's where it falls off. That's where I'm done. Those are the three that I was like, everyone recommended these three in their solo list. But then after that, it was like everyone had their own personal taste and their own, like, if you're playing this curse, a curse that involves the balloon or whatever, you should play with this card, but I'm not, so I, I don't think I am. 
Um, <laughs> so, I, yeah, I'm not playing with one with the balloon because that would be uh, the, the from the new expansion stuff. Um, but this one was I saw recommended a lot. Mad Scientist. The following effect applies as long as you have this in hand. So, again, for this thinky stuff and crafting. The crafting is key, and I know George A. recommended this because I know he's all about craft, craft, craft. And I like crafting. I think that's great, getting some good items built. Reducing the cost of craft by holding this in hand, I think, is the reason why this is recommended. But I shouldn't have too many keep in hand cards. Are all these keep in hand? Oh, two of them are. Two of them are. Well, three, those are all keep in hand. Solitary is one that you'll play, I guess, in cycle and stuff. Yeah, so if you guys have any recommendations, I have the whole the whole set here. I'm assuming I have every card. I don't know if there's an exclusive character from the Kickstarter second wave. Um, but I have the black box, and then I have whatever was in that side uh, Forgotten Passages expansion. Itchiologist is great. Hunting and fishing are what keep you alive. If I'm saying that right. Itchiologist? Probably not. <laughs> Uh, where is that one? I have some other ones here that, that looked interesting to me and I was curious about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one I remember. So when fishing... Are we fishing a lot with the Forbidden Sanctuary, though? Are we near the water? I don't want to wander around in the swamp if or go near water if we're not really near water ever. I, I don't know. This is the problem. I don't know. So it's like, this could be a big waste of time. But it does have a 7 on it, so that's not the worst. But yeah, this helps you, uh, helps you with fishing. Yes, near water? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. If you guys have played this and you think there's some cards that will help us out a little more and be useful, I just don't want to put in dead cards. That would suck. Uh... Victor's Forbidden Experiment. I played with the Forbidden Experiment before I streamed the game when I was learning it with Voracious Goddess. Uh, and that's okay. I see how it's helpful with Solo, but I don't, I don't think I want to play with that one. I don't think I want to play with that one. It, I, it didn't really excite me that much. I felt it was kind of lame. But I can see why you'd play with it. Uh, not take this. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. Here are the other two I was thinking of. I saw these. They were new cards. So I was like, ooh. Okay, so this one, I've got your back. So these, I hate these. I remember whenever these came up, I'd always be in trouble. So this one says, you may discard this during the cost step of a mandatory action you were involved in in order to get double success or a seven. Again, I'll be holding this in hand. I don't know if that's a good idea, but it does have a star on it. I like this. I like that a lot. So that was one. This one also, now that I understand what this is a little better, uh, but it has a seven and a half star on here. You may discard this during the cost step of an action you're involved in in order to apply the following effect. But again, these are discarding. Like, I do discard these. I don't just hold them in hand forever. But like, this, this happens enough, right? Would that be useful? Like, it seems generic enough that it'd be useful. You pick an item? What item would I pick? I'll pick an item. But yeah, this whole thing. I don't know about shuffling cards back in. Would that be good? Three? I don't know. Okay, what item? What item? What item? I'm down with picking an item. I just don't know which one. There's so many. Oh, Cushion I saw was recommended in that, in that Board Game Geek thread. That was one of the guy's favorite cards. I don't know if this one's like, like good, good stuff. But what does he say? Here, here. Oh, uh, where is it? Yeah, right here. Cushion. One of my favorite here. Why does he say? Cushion. Uh, easy to craft and grants a solid bonus in five uncommonly aided but critical actions. I don't know. That's the item? I, I don't know. Okay, but you guys are saying items. Let's see what other items we got. Uh, we have repair kit. Oh, you need bone for it, though. Well, I guess you don't need it, but it would help. Uh, when you combine this with an item in your inventory, add three to the durability of that item. 
Oh, that's cool. That's cool. We have a net. Good for hunting and fighting, it looks like. Reducing the cost and that whole red mastery number thing. Herbal mixture. Herbal mixture. Serenity and will. Helps us with those actions. Thinking, deciphering, and resting or whatever it was. Chilling in the hammock. Oh. Wait a second. Is this, is this trying to hint at something here? So we're playing the Forbidden Sanctuary, which has this purple spider. We've seen that before in a playthrough. I remember I made a note of it, I think. Um, so that's the curse we're playing. Purple spider symbol, right? It's right there. But also there's snakes. So I, I don't know if it's just trying to be cool with the art. But is the paddle? Like, are, are, we, are we playing in the water and digging? <laughs> is that telling me for the Forbidden Sanctuary I need the paddle? Is that the, is that the play? <laughs> or is it just them trying to be clever in the artwork? Uh, or just make it look cool. Okay. Bandages. I feel like I never use these ever, really, but stealth, because I never do stealth. But for some healing, bandages. Bamboo armor. Prevent getting poisoned uh, or injured. I don't know. That guy's a fighter. <laughs> Imaginary friend? <laughs> oh, it's got the key symbol on it. That's a rare one. The imaginary friend can help you with keys or praying. I don't know. But he, uh, yeah, I don't know. I see the bone, though, and it's like, that could be rare. A pole? Help you with, uh, I guess, balancing... I mean, I don't know, moving. Oh, a bone crowbar. A bone crowbar also can help you with the key in crafting and flexing your muscles. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. Cushion is a good choice. Is good for this curse. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, cushions are also darn comfy. Uh, true, it's true. Never notice this. I think it's just call art. Yeah, yeah. The spider symbol is very common on the continent. Doesn't mean it's not a clue, though. I don't know. This curse since I don't have the it don't have expansions. Oh, okay, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I would say cushion herbal herbal pull in that order. So this is just in case you go for item. I know I'll take an item. I'll take an item. I'll take the cushion. And cushion covers a lot of what some of these items cover, right? I don't know. Like, definitely over herbal mixture, it's like the same, a lot of overlap, right? A lot of overlap in items. And what was the other one? A pole? Probably someone said repair kit. That just seems like good to keep items going. But I know having them cycle is good too. Pull. Oh, yeah, if we're walking, swimming. Walking, swimming, and getting across things, right? Oh, also the keywords matter too, right? This is this is clothing and stealth. I feel like those are keywords I never really use. So building like a super item with them feels like it doesn't go with how I play, but I'm okay trying to do things a little different if we need to for this curse. I don't, I don't have all the keywords memorized, but... Walking, pushing raft, and balancing is pull. Ah. Pick one makes mandatory actions. 
there any character card that removes bloody? <laughs> oh no, we're going to get bloody a lot? <laughs> or I just get bloody a lot in my playthroughs, I feel. <laughs> uh, there was one thing. Uh, there was a card I really was looking at. But again, you guys keep saying don't hold too many cards in hand. But it was one I was like, if I'm reading it correctly, I like was it was like a must, I felt. But I don't know if it's a must for like every playthrough. Dark Regeneration. The following effects applies as long as you have this in hand. If at least one curse card is revealed during the result step of an action you're involved in, which I feel will happen a bit, you may return your freezing, frightened, or hungry, or nauseated, or tired state. Not bloody. Not bloody. But freezing, frightened, hungry, nauseated, or tired. Those are really hard to read. Red on the blue. Oh, bloody is just annoying. I agree it is annoying. You got to find water, right? Water is how you get rid of that, I remember. Or at least I think I remember. Or I don't know if that was with an item. I feel like if you can get the water, usually. Lovecraft cards have some interesting mechanics. Aim no bloody. I know, I know. Yeah, I, I thought maybe that would have it, but it doesn't. Okay. I don't know. Let's just take cushion. I don't know. The only other problem with the cushion, though, it's it's success. Success. There's no seven or full star. Ugh. I don't know if that's a thing with items. Maybe items. Yeah, items have a lot of only half stars. Oh, okay. On purpose, items only have half stars. Except for this one. This is the two half stars. Yeah, that's a that's a balance thing then, I guess. Those are all the states that you don't get very often. Bloody, injured, and poison are the killers. Ah, true. That is true. That card is not as good as I was thinking. That is true. The Black Cheval says, I think if you did Scholar or me, and oh, Solitaire is Amelia's card. Is that, that what that is? She's Amelia Earhart, I think, right? So those are three. Not teamwork. Teamwork is this one. I, I like the seven and the star on it, but yeah, you may discard this during the cost step of an action you're involved in, in order to apply the following effect. This will help us if we succeed at something with three or less cards, we can shuffle some of them back in the deck. Oh, left of teamwork? Uh, this one. I've got your back. This is mandatory action. So if I'm holding this in hand, that's the problem though, it's more holding stuff in hand. I can toss this away to help me with those crappy mandatory actions. Which I feel like those have screwed me in the past, but maybe it's only like one certain spot on the island it always happens, or... Those states are the annoying states that cause you to lose cards from states with the X on them. All right, here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. I'm gonna keep mad scientists in for crafting help. Just in general. Um, yeah, let's do it like this. I want one of these cards. These are recommended. They're on the list of like great cards. So I want you to vote in the chat a one, two, or three. So from left to right, one is teamwork. Two is I've got your back. And three is Cushion. I don't know who these characters are, but it seems like we're choosing between one of their cards. They're new guys. I've never played with these cards, so I'm looking forward to trying it. But uh, just vote in the chat. Drop a one, two, or three. I'll give it like 30 seconds, and then we'll just go with the majority. You guys can influence the playthrough. You guys can decide. I can't, so... No, Heather, I don't think you missed any good rants today. Not yet. <laughs> hey, Heather. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, it looks like three. We're going with cushion. Getting an item in the mix. That that makes sense. That makes sense. We're getting an item in the mix. Looks good. I would wait longer, but uh, <laughs> 42. <laughs> oh, here we go. ISS Vanguard rant? No. I, I don't I don't know enough about it. I watched a bit of like a, a video explaining kind of the game. Um, yeah, I don't know enough about it to rant about it. It's a space theme game again. I, I don't have many space theme games, and the space theme usually doesn't attract me. So yeah. <laughs> so no, I have nothing other to say other than I'm not too interested in the game at all yet. And from what I've seen, it yeah, it's just. I don't know enough to form an opinion yet, but I'm not I'm not your space I'm not the guy with the space uh the space game collection yet, so I don't I don't know. So these are the cards. We're playing with these, these are our five. Boom. I've got your back is like a not as good solitary. I think one is enough. That's Richard, that's what I'm thinking too. It's like almost the same idea, but it's like more situational, right? Like you need those mandatories to happen, you need to have that in car in hand. And I don't remember where all the mandatories were on just roaming around the island. But I remember there were some that would, like, mess with you. I feel like there was one. Um, kind of in the middle, there's, like, a spot where you can go north. There's, like, high movement. It's, like, right near the bridges that you cross to go to the left. Kind of near where the bear and the water with the log bridge is. There's, like, a thing where you can, like, jump through there. I feel like that was one. And I always have trouble in that. It's, like, some thorny brush or something i don't remember but anyways i feel like that was a spot where that might help but i could be wrong all right well there's the fun uh adding to additional setup if you play solo you can pick if you have all the cards and lots of characters you can pick from all these character cards any five you want to make your little combo so if that doesn't add crazy replayability i don't know that's like nuts to think you could play solo and try the same quest or curse you could retry it and do a whole different hand of five cards to play with, uh, which is super neat. You could take them all from the same character if you wanted and just not have that character's ability and you'd have this ability instead, which I don't know if that's a smart play either, but you could do that. But yeah, just a different way to spice it up. I think that's neat. Um, so these will go in here too. Yeah, okay. Jose, hey, how's it going? I've been good. I'm good. A little, a little stressed, a little worried about going into the seventh continent again. Uh, I feel like I have the rules down, but it's the strategy and, and remembering the things on the island that I may run into. Where obviously, if you play this game like back to back and you play like a curse a couple times, you try the next curse. If you leave like no, if you leave this game out on the table and just keep playing curse back to back, you're like a huge advantage every time you play. Every time you play. Uh, Janet, I don't have the plastic versions because uh, I got I bought the retail copies of the expansions. Uh, I don't know if you can still get miniatures, but uh, I have cardboard for all this stuff. So I, I don't know if these originally were miniatures, but for the weather, I have these like cardboard X-wing style stands. Um, and then for the flying roots, uh, I just have these like little standees. So this is what comes in the in the expansion I bought. Uh, just recently, and then and then here's a little little, I don't know whatever expansion these were from. I, I don't know, but Here, here's my hot air balloon. I don't know if everyone else has like a 3D printed one, but this this is what I have, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Uh, and then this thing, I don't I don't know what the hell this is, but yeah. So I just have all this stuff in a little box lid on the side, just kind of when we need it to play with it. These things are a little flimsy, though. I don't know about these, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, they are Phileas Fogg and Jean Asparo, Asparto from around the world in 80 days. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Book? A movie? Probably a book, right? Richard says, All the people doing previews seem to love ISS Vanguard, but I don't see anything interesting in the play when I watch. Uh, Richard, you gotta understand, they're, they're paid to preview those games. 
So if you had a company like Awaken Realms tell you, hey, we want you to play our prototype, which we spent lots of money making look pretty, and lots of money to ship it to you, we will pay you to demo it for your audience. You would want to most likely sound so excited about that game so that you get another paycheck from Awaken Realms later and they reach out to you and send you games early because the incentive of getting those games early and playing them on your channel and hyping them up, uh, you're, you're just like a commercial for the company. You just become marketing extension of that company. Uh, and you want more of that because you'll get the viewers and it's all about getting viewers and helps your ad revenue on your YouTube channel and stuff. So you gotta take that stuff with a grain of salt. So you may see somebody playing that prototype saying this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. This is amazing. This prototype is blowing my mind. I can't wait for more. This is so interesting. You got to remember, you'll see a little pop-up saying includes paid promotion. So just think about it. Me, I'm okay if I got that game. I played it. I'll give it my honest opinion at the end. But that's why Awaken Realms doesn't reach out to me to play those uh, ISS prototypes anymore. Like we played uh, The Great Wall and they haven't reached out to us since. And they reached out to us to play that one. But I think that one they wanted us because we had more players on the channel. We weren't just like a solo only channel. Uh, and that game at the time, the prototype was only four players. That was it. it could, you couldn't play it with less or more. So they reached out to us saying they needed four players. So that's why I think they reached out to us. But otherwise, Awaken Realms doesn't reach out to me about any of their new games because I just, I just don't do the paid you know, fake excitement preview stuff. So, yeah. That I'm okay with. Uh, but yeah. But it does hurt my channel because then I'm not playing the new hotness and, and people aren't coming to my channel from the Kickstarter pages and stuff. Um, but I'm okay with that. There's enough of those channels doing that. I don't want to be a cookie cutter uh, channel just copying and being just like other channels. Um, but yeah. Potentially, it says... Uh, a black says if you wanted a high level of difficulty for this game you could draft five character cards too oh that would be neat make little stacks and just like draft randomly in like little packs like out of these five cards pick one and then draw five more and do that that would be neat that would be neat <laughs> i'm not as hardcore and crazy like that but that could totally be done God says, ISS is my kind of game for what it's worth. Then again, looks like I am locked in on all recent Awaken Realms games. Yeah, they make cool stuff for sure. Definitely doing interesting things. Matt's thinking of backing uh, Vanguard. It looks cool. It does look cool. From what I watched in the video, it, like that prototype. Oh boy, that's a nice done prototype. That's for sure. Like they, did not, they did not stop short on, on the expense on that. For sure. They made it look nice. Paris says the theme and story look cool. Not sure about the gameplay yet. Is that on Kickstarter yet? Is that why everyone's talking about it? Or, or is it just people have released videos to hype up the Kickstarter? Or no, it's not Kickstarter. It's, it's game found now. Awaken Realms wants, doesn't want to pay Kickstarter the 9% to do their project on their website. They're trying to get all of the monies now. So they have their own game found uh, website that they are trying to imitate Kickstarter. Which, hey, all the power to you. All the power to you. <laughs> oh, it just launched today on GameFound. That's why you guys are asking about it. I get it, I get it. I get it. It's the hype of today. <laughs> it just says, I want to like ISS Vanguard, and I know the previews are biased, though most say not paid. Mm, okay, okay. But I just don't see much of a game there. But even not paid, you're still, you're still incentivized to like do a good job selling a product for a company so they send you the next thing early. And then you get in a cycle of you're, you're the place to go and then people start subscribing and watching you because you have the newest hotness early. Uh, so John says, I don't fully agree with that position on paid previews. No, they need to happen. Yeah, yeah, I agree they need to happen. But, but people who are saying uh, it's just the parts of Jot where somebody says, oh, I watched it on this channel and it looks like they really enjoyed it. That, that right there, that's when it's like, ooh, I, I don't know. Like, I've seen some bad games get played on some channels that they're paid and it's like, I know that game's bad. I know you didn't want to play that. 
but you're doing it because you want to get more games and that's how you want to build your channel. I'm not knocking it. It's not a bad thing. They got to do it. But just don't purchase a game based on someone's impressions. If they're paid, don't put that all your weight in that. You can put a little bit of weight in it, I think. But yeah. But yeah, just be cautious about it. That's all I'm saying. But I do appreciate the support on Patreon here for our channel because that's what allows me to do this stuff and not have to do that. But yeah. But I've been reached out to and asked to be play things on the channel and be paid for it. And I just say, I'm good. If I like your game and I'm interested in showing it off, uh, just send me a copy. You don't have to pay me. That's the way I roll. But yes, I know. I could be, I could be more greedy and just say, yeah, send over everything. I'll give you the best video ever. I'll tell my whole audience it's the, the best game ever. Just send it over. But I don't want to do that. Because then you guys won't believe anything I say. <laughs> One hour. They're at half a mil already. Oh my god. All right. Let's get on topic. There's our deck. Extra cards in it. Sorry, Tara. <laughs> I don't wanna, I'm not trying to hypnotize you. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, yeah, there's these. I'm not going to play with these, I don't think. But these were the cards from the Strangest Encounter thing. Some huge plants. You can put these in your deck. I'm not going to do it for this one. I'll probably shuffle them in in the next one. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it right now. But those are another option of stuff to go in there. So we're... I don't know if we'll still see some of the cards from that expansion because it says you still can put them in there. Uh, and as you play, they, they can come up. But we are going to play with the 777 easy mode. Okay, that's going to be in our satchel. Okay, we got to remember that's there. Uh, I think it's like if we die. If you lose the game, you may banish this to apply the following effect. Shuffle all the cards in the discard pile back in the action deck and continue your adventure. Okay, we have a free man. Free life. One up. I think we start with this side. All right, we're going back to the seventh continent. Here's the Forbidden Sanctuary. Let's actually do this. I set up this side camera again. Let me do this. All right, the Forbidden Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Piercing cries of seagulls. Oh, okay, hold on. Before we read this, before we read this, uh, somebody sent me uh, a tip. They said, and I've already looked at this before, so I want to show this off. This might be helpful to some who are just getting into the game because this helped me. Someone sent me this before. So over on to go. There we go. Uh, over on Serious Pulp's website, they have an FAQ and resources. If you go to the tips and tricks section, um, in here they have uh what or in what order should i play the quests slash curses and this is what i looked up before to know which order to play them when i first started playing the game i didn't know what to do and this is how i learned about the crystal song uh was in here so they recommend play the crystal song then the voracious goddess then offering the guardians yada 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 we played a bunch of these now we're at forbidden sanctuary so i was told i could look at this designer's tip it's not spoilery it's kind of like general tip for the game they do hide it behind a spoiler tag, so warning, I guess. But I was told to look at this, and I did this morning. Um, and I wouldn't, wouldn't have anything spoiled, but it's important. It says, play, pay close attention to both sides of the clue card. I feel like we usually do look at the clue card for tips and clues and stuff, or you guys remind me to. But this is something important for this quest. This is the only tip the designers will give you. Pay close attention to both sides of the clue card. Uh, so based on that, <laughs> let's read this very carefully. <laughs> okay. The piercing cries of seagulls pull you out of a deep slumber. You try your best to gather your bearings. Where on earth are you? How did you end up in this place? You seem to be, you seem unable to remember. Sifting through your journal, you come across an excerpt from John Smith's diary. John was an explorer from the Delta team who mysteriously disappeared during the first expedition. Okay. Nichols and I have discovered a collapsed building. To get inside, all you need is dot, 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 one room after another. 
we dot 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 many traps dot 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 Nichols lost his hand trying to pull the dot 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 he won't listen dot 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 made an incredible finding dot 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 I've taken notes in my journal about how to make it through Okay, I want to I want to look at that again in a sec. Okay, then it says in quotes in bold. This is in bold now. John died. He chose the wrong. Dot dot dot. Leave nothing to chance. Leave nothing to chance. Oh man. I left the tower with a few sheets from the journal. Following the wind. Visited an underground temple. Uh, I think I know what underground temple that's talking about. Uh, a heavy portcullis. I need to look at what a portcullis is because I, I don't remember what that is, but I should know, I'm sure. Comfortable bed. Uncontrollable anger. When I got out, the wind was still. Increasingly tired. Offered me shelter. Offered him to thank him. For days, there is snow everywhere. The freezing wind hungry couldn't find the others holy crap <laughs> well there's there is heavy tips in here heavy tips in here i'm sure because we're told to pay attention to this there's clues on this side so we know the underground temple that that jumps out at me because that's that's we know about this underground temple we know all about that from the voracious goddess, right? I think that's where we're in there. But we also went in there for other reasons after that, and I forget. <laughs> Richard says, okay, have fun, everyone. I'm going to watch later. I don't want to lose time. I could be playing Tangrail. No worries, no worries. <laughs> awesome. Game I've owned and I've not bothered with. Ad libs. Metal gate. Think what closes off passages in castles. Oh, is that what a portcullis is? Oh! In the underground thing. I know what that is. The portcullis was the thing where I needed the rope. I remember. I remember, right? I needed a rope, I think. It was like that gate. And then it, through that gate, it goes to like, there was like that little room with like, um, there was a few things in that room. Oh, yes. I, I have that in my notes. I made notes about that. I remember we talked about that in the last playthrough. I have my notes. Yes. I, I, my note says specifically, purple spider banner in bottom left of jungle temple where had to use rope. I, I remember this area. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Or colors? Yeah, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Okay, so that's related to the underground temple, heavy portcullis, comfortable bed. So when it talks about Nichols uh, in this paragraph here, when it talks about Nichols and I have discovered a collapsed building, I'm assuming that's forbid the Forbidden Sanctuary. To get inside, all you need is one room after another. And many traps. Okay, so there's one room after another you have to get through. There's many traps involved. Nichols lost his hand. Okay, this I kind of picture. Has anyone watched uh, Lovecraft Country? Awesome show. I loved it. Love that freaking show. So good. Um, but there was something in that show where there's like a special door they need to reach in. And it was like a trap kind of door. And there was like a guy's hand hanging out of it. It, it reminded me of... Um, it reminded me of something like from uh, Indiana Jones kind of stuff. That's what I'm, I'm picturing here. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I picture when I, when I read. Nichols lost his hand trying to pull the uh, dot, dot, dot. He won't listen. Made an incredible finding. I have to take notes in my journal about how to make it through. So, there's some kind of maze, room after room, some kind of trials. There's traps involved. He had to take notes to remember the way through. Okay, this is what I'm getting from this. And John died, he chose the wrong something. There's some choice to be made. 
and you could die choosing the wrong thing. Leave nothing to chance. Okay, so no gambling. We gotta find something. Like, we gotta find the way in or the way through or the secret code or whatever is needed uh, or the key and, and don't gamble. So there's a chance you could gamble when we see there's a chance that we could guess, I guess, or, or try a puzzle without knowing the answer or answer a riddle without knowing the answer. These are the things I would think, don't leave anything to chance. Based on playing this game already, that's what I would guess. Something like that. And then I left the tower with a few sheets from the journal. So this is the journal that he made notes about how to get through the rooms. One room after another. Yeah, make it through. One room after another. I'm assuming make it through the rooms is what I would assume. Full of traps. Made notes in journal. Le left the tower with a few sheets from the journal. I don't know what a t the tower means. Is that part of the Forbidden Sanctuary? Is the tower left with the tower? I, I don't know. Following the wind. Following the wind. I, I don't know if I should know something about the direction of wind in this game. I don't know, but... Comfortable bed, uncontrollable anger. When I got out, the wind was still. Comfortable bed, uncontrollable anger. I don't know. When I got out, the wind was still, increasingly tired, offered me shelter, offered him... To thank him. So somebody offered, offered, who is this writing? John Smith. Oh, hold on. So I'm reading John Smith's diary, and this is somebody else writing in the diary after the fact, right? Ah, uh, yes, okay, Matt's, Matt's saying, bold text is journal, bold text in journal is Nicholas, plain text is John. That, I just figured that out. <laughs> just clicked in. <laughs> I'm a little slow, right? <laughs> so he's writing in the journal now after John had died. So this is John Smith's journal, now it's making sense. John died. Nicholas is saying, he chose the wrong something, leave nothing to chance. And N Nichols left the tower with a few sheets from the journal. Following the wind. You know what? I bet I bet wherever this tower is, I bet there's like art of the wind blowing a certain way or leaves blowing a certain way on the art that maybe will help us which direction to go. But we know where the underground temple is. So if that's what he's saying, following the wind to the underground temple. We know about the heavy porcalis. I don't know what the comfortable bed, uncontrollable anger stuff is talking about. And when I got out, the wind was still increasingly tired. Nichols was increasingly tired. Something. <gasps> okay, maybe the underground temple. We know there's ways out of the underground temple that lead you to different spots around the island. Whichever spot they're coming out of, the wind is still. I don't know where that is or what that means. But they were tired. They came out of the underground temple and someone offered Nichols shelter. And he offered something back to thank him. I don't know what that is. Then something for days. There is snow everywhere. But then we need to go where the snow is on the map, which I think is like the top right uh, of the island-ish. Or it's one of those islands. Freezing wind, hungry, couldn't find the others. Okay. I know you guys want me to put out the card. We'll do it. We'll do it. All right. So we need card 149. All right. Let's. I know, I know. We'll get going. I'm sorry. Oops, you can't see that. Derp. Uh, 149. The ruins of what must have at one time been a tower. Okay. <laughs> so I shouldn't get hung up on the tower because this is the tower. Above the waterline. Remain above the waterline where it must have stood before being swallowed by the ocean. This is the front of the card. Remember, we've got to look for hidden numbers. 
So this this looks like the tower right here. There's the tower. And there's the wind, the art, right? We've seen this before on the cards. There's the wind and the leaves. Yeah, yeah, see? Direction of the wind. Do you tell? Like it's more on the left of the card. Do I go? Still see that. When I got out, the wind was still. Following the wind. I assume we go left. The wind is going to the west. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, it's, it's hard to do in art. I, I give them credit to show wind and decide which way that wind is blowing. Because I could argue it both ways, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it is on the left of the card. So we'll go west. Okay. So we're going west. Josh says, the seventh continent has taught you well, young adventurer. Who has seen the wind? Well, it, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, and now we're going to check the other side of the clue card. I just wanted to do that before we flip, because that's when you would draw that, right? <laughs> All right, so we got to really pay attention to this side. Super important. Uh, the Forbidden Sanctuary. Every time a character must take one or more 50 cards. Are those the ones that lead to the botany stuff? Is that what the 50 cards are, if I remember correctly? And that history of the island map, that was really cool. That was fun. I won't talk more about it, but that was fun. Um, I think that's what 50 cards are. They may apply the following effect instead. So this is a choice. We don't have to do this. We could, step one, randomly take three of the four, four 50 cards available in the adventure deck. Two, reveal these three cards, one after the other, so as to obtain a three-digit number. The first card you reveal is the hundreds, the second is the tens, and the last card is the ones. Step three, take the card bearing the number you obtained from the adventure deck if able, available. If it's not, you may return the three 450 cards you took and start over from step one. Ah, so they're helping you. So whatever these 450 cards find you, if you get unlucky and see the same three cards making the same number over and over again, you're not screwed. You just get to try it again until you find a card. So I, I like that. I like that it's not like, whoops, you did the same number. Too bad. Try again. You have to do another action or whatever. You have to attain another 50 card. Okay, this is cool. Then return the three 450 cards you revealed. Okay. And then we got to remember we have the spider banner. Spider banner plus 12. So if we ever see the spider banner, which I know is in the underground temple based on my notes. I don't think I made a note of that spider symbol anymore. No. I have a note about that purple snake music. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh, I have, uh, I put rope gate leads to the seed. Remember that seed thing. <laughs> that was, uh, that was fun. Failing it and doing it the right way, I guess. I don't remember the right way what happened, but I remember the bad one was useless. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. So. So we have to, this is important, I guess, we just have to try to get the 50 card thing going. Yule says, the way they show the direction of wind in art is that the direction the wind came from will have the least amount of wind. Okay, that's cool. I, yeah, I didn't know that. I was thinking that there's got to be some way to do it. Because, like, obviously artists... But I've been putting wind in art, I'm assuming it's a thing, but yeah, it's clever. Um, okay. 
It's over here. Okay. I don't know how I'm laying this all out. What's the problem with this game? Who knows where it's going to grow and what's going to happen? Throw that in our satchel over here. Let's just put our satchel right here. This. Oh, this is our character. We don't need these anymore. Okay. Uh, all right, we need ones. Okay, that's good. We're in the ones. Nice. Uh, okay. That out. Nope, wrong one. So uh, from getting all those expansions, I've shuffled a bunch of extra cards in like almost every one of these explore piles. So that was kind of neat to see that, um, that we're going to bump into things we've never seen before. And it might make us see things that we saw a lot before constantly, we see less of, which is neat. So I, I don't know what those will be, uh, but I, I think some came from like the plant cards and those um, animals and stuff, whatever those other expansions are. But yeah, we're going to... We're going to see some new things, and I'm kind of excited for that. So even though we're not playing the curses that came in those expansions, we might bump into stuff um, from them in here, which is neat. All right, so uh, this I will just, I don't know, I'll just put this here. Get easy. Thank you, Sajat. No worries. No worries. Yeah, feel free to drop comments below, Sajat, if you're catching up. Or uh, tomorrow we're back again, um, continuing it, assuming I don't die. And completely lose here uh, so yeah we can talk at the start of tomorrow's stream too thank you so much thank you for all your help I do appreciate it uh, all right so we can go left or right I, I don't know if I've been on this island this is a problem with this game I like I know we have been on a couple different islands So I don't know if this is like a brand new island I've never been on. But based on one card, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> that I don't remember. But we have stone and leaf here, rock and leaf or whatever. It's two to move. And we could do this explore action. Now that explore action, I just want to make sure it doesn't make me like jump in the water or do something stupid because I, I want to go left I, I don't necessarily want to go dive in the water like I did by accident before in another place go see slash investigate so I think we're okay to do that just looking at the tower right maybe we'll get a clue maybe we'll get a clue it's like stuff <laughs> it's a conference dropping the knowledge who Has Seen the Wind is a novel by Canadian author W.O. Mitchell who took the title from a famous poem by Chris, Christina Rossetti. It was first published in 1947. Guess that's why it was a school book. Oh, that's what you're saying. Oh, a book you remember reading in grade four, I see. And Sacabra says, are you allowed to remember stuff from previous plays in this game? Yes, Sakabra, so I said at the beginning of the stream, if anyone watching this live with me remembers stuff or recently watched one of my other playthroughs, uh, feel free to drop spoilers from those playthroughs that I've seen already if you want. It's all good. As long as you remember it's from my playthroughs and not your playthroughs that you may have seen different things, which it might be tough. But if you're not sure, just avoid spoilers in general. But feel free to make tips and suggestions. And if you've never played, and you're watching along with this and you never play on playing this or you don't care about spoilers, uh, feel free to get involved. Bring up suggestions. Remind me about stuff in this playthrough we've seen. You know, ask questions. If you're not sure about rules or some clue or you want me to, to find a card in my satchel and look at it closer again later in the playthrough, play along. Play along with me live. That's part of the fun. So yeah, but yeah, if, if you remember something from a previous playthrough, I made notes. I made notes from like my first two playthroughs but I, I don't think I added to the notes after I played my three curse playthrough. I feel like I didn't go back and add to the notes. And I probably should have, but I, I didn't. So I'm just going with the notes that I had before I played my three curse playthrough, I think. And it's a lot about the jungle temple is what I called it. <laughs> okay. All right, 
Uh, that's great or what? Looks okay. Okay. So this is our character. I'm just going to use this little uh, pawn from Pandemic Legacy Season 0 because it's the most recent one I had lying around. Uh, this was recommended in a previous playthrough because it's easier to see. I do have the little tiny miniatures. i do not not a fan of them. I do have the standees. I played with those laying down before. Uh, but this is just easier to see. I don't know if this is the best color one to use. Uh, maybe it's not. I don't know. I didn't grab the other two. Yeah, it's probably at least the blue for now. Uh, the brown one probably would have been really good, but I do not have it near me. So, yeah, this this is McLovin. Welcome, welcome, McLovin. Welcome to the Seventh Continent. He went back in time from the 1960s to like what is it now? We're in the 1940s or 30s or 20s or something. 1907, 1907, somewhere around there, somewhere around there. <laughs> Stranded CIA agent. <laughs> uh, or the pink one. The pink one probably would have stood out good. Uh, I'll grab those later. Darker color would be easier to see. You know what? Give, give me one second. I, I can fix this in like... Quick. Okay, uh, so yeah, there is this dark, dark one here, like black or brown, okay, black. Yeah, that probably would be better. Or we could be a uh, secret agent. <laughs> that one, that one's probably the best, but we're not going to use that. <laughs> Breaking the theme too much. But we also have a pink. So the cool part is we can switch our outfits. Uh, based on the background color of the tile to really pop out if we need to. So if we're in like a dark dungeon, we could switch to one of these lighter colors. So we'll, we'll switch our outfit. We'll jump in a phone booth, change into our other outfit, and uh, we'll continue on with the playthrough. <laughs> but it's better to follow along on stream rather than use the little standees and stuff. Uh, I remember that was easier to use. So we'll do that. Okay. Uh, we got our character. So we're allowed to use four fire figures. Shout out to my wife, Mel. Thank you so much. She painted the little fire figures. Uh, so we will be using these. So we don't need to use some other solution. We have actual little fire figures. And with the bases painted too, they should stand out on the tile a little better uh, rather than using what we've used before. So we'll, we'll get to see those easier, I hope. Uh, oh, there's Mel in the chat. Thank you so much, Mel. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, are we ready to start? I think we're ready to start. One hour and 40 minutes later. Okay. This is a problem with seven continent, but we're there. We're there. Okay. Uh, girl was lurking. All right. You know what I need to do? Not technically ready to start. Just need to make sure, because it's been a while. 
So we've done everything. We took our character, we took the 777, Satchel and Journal, blue card we looked at, we've built our deck. I think we got everything in there. I have the curses in there and whatnot. Um, we have the discard pile holder. And it has an ability on it. I didn't forgot to look at which one we should take, but whatever. Um, exploration card, we sorted. Obviously, our cards are all sorted. Okay, we placed the foggy side up cards next to. And then read out the text. We're not going to read out that text in the book. Front, oh, look at Read the clue card. Front and back. Big capital letters. And back. Do not forget to read the back. Okay. Oh, Velcro's here. Hey. Oh, yeah. We're ready to go. Okay. So, what do we do? What do we do? We start with nothing in hand, right? There's no drawing cards. I didn't see there. We just start like nothing, right? Just what's in our satchel. Feels weird to have no cards here. Um, I guess you just start building up by taking actions, right? So let's investigate uh, 268. We just have to draw one card and we can look at 268. We found the shovel. I'll just take that in hand. Hey, Pickle. Um, and we'll grab 268. There's only one. Yep, we read both sides of the clue. <laughs> uh, you notice an opening on one side of the tower. Oh, I have been here. I have been here. I have been here. I do remember this. Did I make a note of this? I think I did. This looks familiar. This I think I remember. A good portion of the building is below the surface. If you want to explore it, you may need to hold your breath for a long time. Is this the Penguin Island? Are we on the Penguin Island, I think? You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Let's see this. Let's see this. Oh, I'm already falling in love again with this damn game. A good portion of the building is below the surface. If you want to explore it, you may need to hold your breath for a long time. So it would be the swim action. It's locked. All characters have to be there. Uh, you spend one card. You're looking for one success. This is maybe why the paddle would have been helpful. And it could be a 40 plus 12. We could get a 52 card if we succeed. Now, here's what I think. Uh, <laughs> I feel like if this is the entrance to the Forbidden Sanctuary and we can just swim into this thing, I feel like we need those pages from the journal that the guy took the notes with or whatever we got to do for that. I'm assuming that other action, where was this? I'm assuming this action uh, probably helps us get some of this information and then this information tells us we have to find the other information because we can't leave anything to chance. So I'm wondering if this one is, is like, if you try to enter this without that information, you fail right away. Like, I don't want to do that. Because it's telling us about follow the wind. But like, I don't know if I want to dive in here yet because it's warned us about not taking a chance. I don't know if this really is the Forbidden Sanctuary. I don't know if this is just part of it. We need to just, this is one way to get some clues or whatever. I don't know. This is what I'm feeling. Yeah, I don't know. But we're right here. And we have this. We have the plus 12. But it's a swim action. I don't know if I want to dive in there. One success. 
Clue did say there was some amazing discovery in the tower, right? Did it? See, I don't even remember. John died. He chose wrong. Where is this? But it says, Nichols and I have discovered a collapsed building. And that the tower is collapsed, right? Get inside. All you need is one room after another. We, many traps. Nichols lost his hand trying to pull the... He won't listen. Made an incredible finding. I've taken notes in my journal about how to make it through. Yeah, but the incredible finding, I think, it's at the end after getting through all the traps. And after getting that incredible finding, he then took notes on how to get in room after room through the many traps that Nicholas like lost his hand trying to pull something. John died. He chose wrong. Leave nothing to chance. I left the tower with a few sheets from the journal following the wind. So it's like he left the tower with those sheets. I don't know if we'll find any sheets at the tower. <laughs> hey, Tyler, we're just getting started, to be honest. It was a lot of setup and yapping about ISS Vanguard. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're here. And choosing cards. Yeah, lots of, lots of interaction. We chose some cards for our starting hand. We play with a custom character. Um, so yeah, you're fine. Want audience to help you decide? Yes, I do. If you guys don't know 100% the answer, I don't, I don't want to cheat. But if you, based on these clues, you have some recommendations, like I'm missing something, feel free to get involved. Feel free to get involved. Uh, but like, I, 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 the only worry I have is if, if I go in here, I don't get to come back and then follow the wind. Adam says to swim it. Okay. Okay. Sure. What box did the custom character came in? I think these just came in like the black Kickstarter uh, edition of the game. It's like when you play solo. Create your own explorer. I didn't write a story. You can like write your own story if you want. You can draw your own character's face. But we're playing with this. You freely choose five cards from among those available. Choose up to, uh, you can use up to four fire figures in the game. And then when I move between fire figures, I can reduce the cost of movement for three. That's like the ability on these custom characters you can create. But we went through the whole process of creating that character. They're, they put it right here for a reason. Like, they put it right beside us to do it, I'm sure. Yeah, Andy, I agree. Find, find the clues. Andrew says, Ah, I got the base box and crystal box from the website. Was thinking that custom character would be cool to try. Nice. Yeah, they had leftover uh, the black and the white boxes for a while, but they're not there anymore, at least where I can grab them, so. It's a trap, says Jim. <laughs> this is a survival adventure game. The Seventh Continent, Tyler. Tons of spoilers. If you don't know what this game is, get out of here. There's going to be lots of spoilers. Uh, there's lots of hidden discovery stuff that's part of the fun of the game. Um... So yeah, I'm going to be spoiling a lot from the random island that you wander around on, and, and a lot from, I assume, the um, Forbidden Sanctuary, assuming we get that far. Yeah, okay, so we'll go in, let's swim. You guys want to swim? I can only draw one card looking for one success. I may not get it. But if I fail, there's no, there's no bad failure. It's just like, lungs about to burst, you swim for the surface as fast as you can. Like, it's not like I, I become cold or freezing or tired or whatever they are. Oh, you only play strategy board games anyway. Okay, if you're a quick, I'm just spoiler warning. I just, that's all I want to say. If you want to join along and help get involved and you don't plan on playing it yourself, that's all good too. Would the traps be sprung since they sprung them anyway? <laughs> I like your thinking, Adam. Yeah, yeah. I just follow like where the dead hand is hanging out of the whatever he put his hand in. I'll just uh, not choose that option. All right, so. Draw on one card. I don't have anything to help me with this yet. 
We got a success. We drew an examine the notes. Oh! The 50 cards. Yes, this is all coming back now. I forgot that was a thing in our deck. Wow. Wow, it's been a while. Okay. So I could take that think action. So, oh! Ah! I Okay, the cards we were picking. I should have looked through the regular actions of the game. Like, in our base 35 cards or whatever. I should have done that. I'm a dummy. I should have spread those cards out, and then we could have saw what actions we have covered and which ones we don't. That's probably a good way to pick your cards. So this is how we get 50 cards. This is the way we're doing the botany stuff, right? Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. So we were doing this to get the botany cards going, and, and that other card that that character had. Oh, we could have taken a card that, that helped us with that, right? The botany one? Because it would have helped us get more of those? Okay, so we succeeded. Uh, so we're grabbing card 40. We could grab card 40, but what that does is I think it'll block us from getting any further because if you're not playing with the Forbidden Sanctuary Curse, you draw the 40, it'll be like, oh, you can't get any further or can't get in. Um, is that's the way they kind of lock you out unless you're playing with the curse. They use these little like additional numbers to help you see the things if you're playing that curse. So we need to grab card 52, and it will tell you on the card if you have the right card or not, this is really clever. So on the bottom of a card, it'll, if you're doing some math or pulling a card by a hidden number or something, this says 268 is the card it came from. If it did come from that card, thumbs up, you're good to go. So I look at this. Yep, I'm coming here from card 268. So I'm allowed to flip this card, no spoilers. It's cool that the game has that like check involved. I like that. Uh, whoa. All right, let's check what we got here, what we got. You swim along a flooded corridor for a painfully long time. Just before you decide to give up, you catch a ray of light in the water about 50 feet ahead. With a final effort, you reach an opening where you eventually resurface to catch your breath. Now here's the thing that I, ah, damn it. See, this is the problem. So now we're gonna clean up the board and reset we're going to jump on location 517 okay so we did leave that island kind of or go somewhere different i hope we can easily get back to that previous spot by leaving here eventually to go follow the wind this was my fear is why i wanted to follow the wind and not go in here because this is going to take us to somewhere else on the island probably and i have a bad a, a, i have like bad ptsd from that happening before where we went i chose the wrong thing and we you know, hours and hours were wasted because I wound up somewhere I shouldn't have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are my fears. But anyways, part of the fun of this game, if you're okay with the exploration and you have a spare table to set this game up on, which we're okay, uh, it's awesome. Jim, I know. I should have followed you, Jim. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways, all right. So let's... Uh, Five seventeen. Uh, okay, what do we got here? You enter a circular room with a very high ceiling and a long round throw, uh, trough, sorry, full of water on the floor. I can't hold it still. We gotta use this more. Uh, your intrusion disturbs a few bats, which immediately f uh, flit away. Pinkish, feebly glowing crystals poke out from the walls and bathe the room in a surreal atmosphere. Ooh. These are the ones on the crystal song box. Press control Z and undo your turn. <laughs> Rob passed the wind. <laughs> Today's a snow day. I actually have hours. Awesome. No, I'm okay with this taking forever. It's fine. Like we're playing all day today, we're playing all day tomorrow. I'll continue the I'll continue the playthrough for like the foreseeable future as long as we're alive and we keep going. Let's just like I know what's happened before where I take a wrong turn could lead to a full like five hour playthrough of just wandering unrelated to what we're trying to do. 24 hour stream? Uh no. It could turn into that though. Um all right, so we're going to put these back. So I'll shuffle the fog back in. And then, sorry, I will 
return 149 and 168. Sorry, guys, just put them back in a box or 268. 268. When you return stuff, it just means like put it back in the deck that it came from. So we can get to that spot again, it will be the same. That's what that tells me. Okay. There's no hidden numbers that I see. Tyler, thank you so much for subscribing. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, all right. So we can investigate on the card for free, like with the spyglass, which is search and examine. Or we can use the eyeball action, which is known as spot or observe. And we need, oh, we're getting different uh, fog stuff. So we'll put the ones back away. We need the fours. Oh, that's the threes. And I'm just shuffling mainly because we might have played with these before and because I shuffled new stuff in from the expansions we got recently. Spent quite a bit of time yesterday shuffling in like hundreds of cards into the box and reorganizing it. Um, yeah, kind of nuts. The amount of stuff's crazy. No worries, Scott. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I wouldn't be doing that if you guys didn't watch and get involved and have some fun with us here for sure. <laughs> But the last few seven content playthroughs were hilarious. You guys are fun. We, it was like a good time all around. Sam, shout out to Sam. Had a little soundtrack. Uh, you know, played some songs for our adventure. It was good. <laughs> oh, it was good. So good. All right. This is temporary. This goes into the past. Or this would be returned too, I think, right? Yeah, I think this gets returned too. Because it would be on the board you play it, right? Rob, can you do more than one thing on a card? Yes, you can, unless the card disappears based on you doing an action like that. So right now I have three actions total uh, based on this situation. So I could take, there's an action down here on the bottom. I could take this action here. I could take this action here. I could do it in any order. I can skip them. I can totally say I don't want to do them at all. And I could do this action on this card, this reveal. So anywhere, and even in my hand, if I had any actions like that, you're basically looking for these white squares. And if you can find those squares, you can do those actions. Unless they're blocked by, there's things that will block you from those actions that may happen. Um, but yeah, this is our options right now. That's our options right now. I can zoom in until we start like really, yeah, let's just zoom in a little bit until we really start spreading out and the map gets huge. Um, you guys can see a little better. So five, yeah, 537 is no successes needed. Same with 566. So we'll just do both of them. I'll, I'll go with 566 first, I guess. Uh, so we don't flip any cards, we just get to see it. The best type of actions. They also might be a trick. Search the pool to see if it gets you back to 149. Oh, true. Oh, it probably does. Or maybe not. Uh, so this says 566. An Enigmatic message has been written on the wall in front of you. <laughs> you recognize the peculiar handwriting. It seems to be that of Nichols, the explorer who managed to get out of the Forbidden Sanctuary. His message suggests he was in an extravagant mental state, to say the least. Bloody Professor Smith, that nosy idiot. I've drunk the cup down to the dregs. 
to whoever reads this message, do not knock over, do not knock the cup over. <laughs> what? This guy was drunk. He's just, he was down here drinking himself. Crazy. Drinking himself to death. Oh, yes, I do have an action in hand. Yeah, examine the notes. Thank you, Matt. I do have the examine the notes in hand. We do have this card. I could have done this card, actually. Yeah, we probably should do that. Although, can I? So I, I think examine the notes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but from my hand, I keep this in hand because it has no failure, right? So I could keep attempting this until I get a success. Then it says I discard it, right? So if I try this action and fail, this card stays in my hand, right? That's, I just want to make sure. I don't want to attempt it if I could wait and get another card later to make it more successful. But uh, it says, yeah, correct? Okay, thank you, Andy. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to make sure. I know there's like little tricks like that if you don't realize. Like you might accidentally discard the card and you don't need to. Well, that's cool. So we can keep attempting it over and over again. Make a note, Rob. I think he trapped something under the cup. <laughs> you asked for it. I'm going to do it. All right. Whoever reads this message, and, and here's my chicken scratch. Do not knock the cup over, okay? Don't knock it over. Is there anything else in that card that we need to make note of? Anything else here? There's something with like the one hand finger. Like you always got to look. This game is 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 this is like escape room type stuff in this game, which is awesome. There'll be like little clues in the background in the art we've learned. Sometimes there's numbers on the cards. Uh, yeah. So there's there's clues within clues. Sometimes you just gotta gotta keep an eye out for it. I don't know if that bloody hand is kind of like is it just trying to tell us he only had one hand left. <laughs> oh cool so cool all right uh so next we'll do next we'll do the other the five three seven okay so this says we can't do that action anymore oh this is what i was going to show you so this this little symbol this brown uh brown symbol now or red or whatever that color is uh basically tells you you the card it's pointing at you can't do that action anymore so we can't reinvestigate again. It's telling us you've already investigated. This is what resulted from that. So you're blocked off from doing it again. Uh, so we'll use the little spyglass action 537. Only one. There was more. We'd shuffle. There is a hole of water in the center of the room. Yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. In all likelihood, these flooded corridors should lead you back outside. Uh, okay, okay, so we can get back and forth, right? 149 was that first card. But what this tells us is you have to have all characters on the same spot. That's what the red stairs mean. But in solo, we're always all together. Uh, unless you can get companions or something. I don't know if that is in this game from those expansions I shuffled in, but don't spoil that. I assume that might be a thing. Uh, return all the cards on the board and in the past. Put a 149 into play. Each player places their figure onto it. So it's no success is needed. I can just toss two cards away uh, based on my current status. I have no way of reducing that. And we can get back there. And then it says, finding your way, finding your way underwater proves difficult. You turn into the wrong corridor and fail to find the exit, eventually running out of air, meeting your end. Your adventure ends here. So if you have a way of failing zero successes, how does that happen? 
there's probably a way. I'm just not remembering. But yeah, we could die. <laughs> oh, it's just how we get back. So now, here's the thing. Do I look around down here? Do I wander a little bit further? Because I feel like this is the Forbidden Sanctuary. This is the tower. This is where he took notes. This is where he escaped from. He's giving us a tip already for one of the rooms. I'm picturing it's like a series of rooms with trials, like tests. And if you don't know the answer, like you could guess the answer of the riddle or the puzzle or whatever. But if you can find the information. So we've got one piece of information, I guess, of don't knock the cup over. So that can help us in one room. Is it the next room? Is, does it start down here? Can I even get into that stuff yet? I, I don't know. But this is what this is what's going through my brain right now. I'm trying to be cautious, but you guys want to go further? Should I should I take a, should I do this action first? Should I try to take a, a two fifty cards, keep one, return the other one? But I would instead get to do this action because I'm taking a fifty card. Like should I, I kind of want to know that? I want to see how this works. This may give us a hint of like whether we should. Stay down here or not. Yeah, there is a rule if you're playing with more players. Yes, you could reduce the amount of cards needed to draw and then increase the successes. And that explains how you could fail the swimming thing. Thank you, Andy. You are correct. I just never, never played multiplayer, really. Uh, we did like a couple hours, but that was a long time ago. I don't really remember. Examine the notes, says Matt. I'll go with Matt. Examine the notes. All right. So we're going to try this one. We draw one card. We got it. So, so far, so good. Okay. So we take 250 cards, if we were doing that, keep one and return the other, then discard this. So this will get discarded. Uh, and then it says, if you must take one or more 50 cards, instead we're going to take four of the 450s, but only three of them. So I'm going to shuffle these up. And then I'll take three of them. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, and then reveal them. So here's the first digit. <laughs> the butter the butterfly. And the art on these cards might matter too. So that's kind of, might be kind of important. Looks like it's made up of like a nine. Like is that the number nine? Like you know what I mean? 919 is that a secret number okay second one. Oh, there's a spider spiders like an eight like an eight one four Ooh, look at death look at that eye with a skull in it Now, there's something. There's something here. Like, what's with this thing on the side of the eye? Like, I know that's just your, uh, whatever you call it, but it's like, most people don't draw those on eyes. So, 144 is our number. So, we're going to take 144 if it exists. 44. Four. Uh, coming from 450. Are we allowed? Yep, we're allowed. <laughs> Frank, thank you so much for subscribing. Much appreciated. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. All right. So 144, we have it. Follow your instincts. You pull your journal out of your satchel and open it to a random page. To your great surprise, you find... Dot, dot, dot. Secret of the Sanctuary 1 slash 6. Okay, so based on just that title, uh, we need to find six Secrets of the Sanctuary. And I assume we need to find all six to leave nothing to chance. A partially faded enigmatic note. Enigmatic, enigmatic. Probably not saying that right. Uh, room after room. No less 
then six lethal traps. Six traps, six cards, six secrets. I see something lining up here. Each associated with the eye of death. Oh, oh. If you fail one, you're dead. If you fail one, you're dead. That's what I'm getting from that. I'm playing Dark Souls. This is literally I'm playing the Dark Souls curse. I see it now. Where's the box? I don't have the box. But I feel like the art on this box, uh, yeah, right here. The art on that Forbidden Sanctuary box, it looks straight out of Dark Souls, right? Am I right? Like swinging, swinging traps. You got the spikes going to fall on your head. You got the, the, the dying bones there on the, on the box art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're playing, this is what, what's that one? The serpent? It's like where the snake guys are. What was that temple called in Dark Souls? Uh, it was like full of traps. It had those like thin little stone bridges and those things swinging by. And then all the snake head guys in there. Uh, I forget what that was called. Uh, we leave clues for each of the dot, here's dot, 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 crap. Uh, the trough. Room O. Hundreds of snakes. Dozens of spiders, less than 10 butterflies indicate. Look carefully at the door. Any mistake could have disastrous consequences. What the heck is that art in the bottom left? Is that just the circle of water we're looking at? Or that's probably something in the room. Sen's Fortress. Yes, Scott. Thank you. That's what it was called in Dark Souls. Sen's Fortress. Uh, I forgot the name. Thank you so much. Oh, that brings me back. All right. So we're, we're, we're in Sen's Fortress is what I'm getting from this. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm picturing. Does this fill out some of the text on the clue, Aster Han? Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is probably more of what it's related to, Andy. But obviously Dark Souls was inspired by that too, for sure. Uh, you think that looks like the room you're in now? Yeah, it does, right? Which it is number one. But this first room doesn't have a puzzle yet or anything, right? So you're wanting to know. If we can see all that together. Huh. We leave clues for each of the, the trough, room O, or zero, room zero. Hundreds of snakes, dozens of spiders, less than 10 butterflies indicate. But we can look at this anytime. So when we see some door and we, we know there's talk of snakes and spiders and butterflies, we need to look at this card. I think it'll make more sense yeah, butterfly is important. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's related to the, the, the clue card yet or the room that we're in. But I, I, I don't know. But this room could change. Like the cool part is this room could change. Like we could get a different starting room based on something we do. Could like make something change in this room. But I, I don't, I don't know. Wow. Okay. So we're going to hunt. For all the clues, we found one of six. That's what I get from that. Okay, then what do we do with these again? Oh, I should do that. Uh, then these return the 450 cards. So they go back. They go back to the deck. You know what? I'm going to keep these kind of nearby because I have a feeling we'll need them multiple times. So I won't put them back in there, but we have them. Okay. Hundreds, dozens, less than 10, sounds like another three digit number. Oh. What did it talk about? Hold on. Yeah, it is a three digit number. I agree with that. Snakes, spiders, butterflies. Butterfly. I'm kind of cheating, but the other other card was a snake. It's a four. Okay. Spider. And the eyeball is death. So, 
something to do with that order. Hundreds of snakes. But we'll find out later. But yeah, I, I see it. I think it's linked to these cards. I, th I think it's linked to these cards. But we'll probably get that card anyway at some point by the way these shuffle, right? That's what I think. Yeah, that's so cool. So cool. All right. Uh, Pontus is here. Hey, when did you start? We started at noon, but we did a whole setup creating our character, talking about the expansions we got on the channel and all this stuff. Uh, we didn't really start playing until like 30 minutes ago. Maybe 40, 40-ish 40 minutes ago. So yeah. <laughs> so you didn't miss much. You're, you're still good. <laughs> we did... Change our map already, though, which is pretty crazy that quickly. Yeah, snake doesn't... Yes. Yeah, so based on those, I, I'm not going to take the card, but eventually we should get that card. But what it's saying is snake is the four. And unless we see the snake, butterfly, and spiders again. Uh, dozens is the spiders, right? Uh, yeah, spiders is next. And less than 10 butterflies. So it could just tell us like we need card 441, but like, right, did I do that right? Yeah, less than 10 butterflies, dozens of spiders, hundreds of snakes, 441. That's what I think it's hinting at, but I'm a feeling we'll get in a room and we might see these, we might see these symbols and it might m mean something different. But when I saw those animals or insects or whatever, I thought of seeing what I just saw on those cards, a spider and a butterfly. And I assumed there was a snake involved and sure enough there is. All right. Anyways. Okay. Or, or do we leave? Do we, we, we explore? That's dozens, not tens. True. True. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Which we won't generate. Four dozen spiders is four eight. So it's four nine. it just says dozens of spiders i don't know I, I know what you're trying to do matt i get it but it's like it, there is probably something here we leave clues for each of the the trough room oh hundreds of snakes dozens of spiders less than 10 butterflies but yeah four on the card dozen 400 snakes four dozen spiders Less than 10 butterflies. Look at the back of 449. I was thinking that. I was thinking that. Or 449. Four, oh, there's a bunch of 449s. Oh, there's a lot of 449s. <laughs> oh my god. No, and no, none of them have uh, the little. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> there is a whole whack ton of these <laughs> oh man and eventually a yellow that's a lot of them oh my god <laughs> I feel like we'll be trying to draw those over and over again many many times holy that's not it yeah or it's not related at all to this quest. Those could totally be something different, uh, but that's that's cool. Yeah, we can always just look. Okay, uh, I'll explore. Looks like icy maze tiles. And that's <laughs> that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, would have the thumb. Yep. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's see what's next to us here. Let's see what's down here. 
You shall not pass. The flagstone you step on is a pressure plate that sinks an inch or two under your weight. Suddenly, a massive block of stone glides across and obstructs the way. Immediately after this is revealed, you may discard another visible You Shall Not Pass card from the board. You may take one of the following actions. So for three cards looking for one success, each evolved character takes a 101, discard this. Or we draw seven cards and no more looking for two successes just to discard this. I forget what 101 is, but I'm assuming it's tired. Maybe, maybe it's tired. Not to bring up bad memories. I had fun doing it. I had fun. But yeah, everyone told me Icy Maze is so short. Icy Maze is so short. Oh, I made it long. I made it long. That's all I remember. <laughs> all right. Uh... Do I just leave? Like, I, I could do this to get rid of it, see the next room. Or I just not bother with this, not bother with the next room right now and leave. Go we'll follow the wind. I don't know. Kind of want to see what we're going to get into here. But seven cards? Mm, I don't want to do seven cards. I don't want to do seven cards. Yeah. We could just do three... Yeah, we could just do three and take a 101. Whoops. Could just take a 101. Remember. But a 101 could lead to us discarding more cards from hand because it's another red card. There is nothing left on the first card other than leaving the game. Or I can make a fire. Like I have this action available to me. I could I could try to make a fire on this space. Um or I could take these action. But I've already done these two. They're blocked off. I also could leave via swimming. So I have swimming back through the hole probably. I have making a fire and I have these two options of strength tests to remove this. You shall not pass. So based on these being in the deck, and there's more of them, this is going to make it hard to navigate around down here. So if we can help with strength tests, that might be helpful too. Matt says, I have a theory. Can you check the back of 457? If I'm wrong, I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we don't just check every card in the game. <laughs> Trying to find that one? No, there's no thumbs up. No thumbs up. No thumbs up. Curiosity did what to the cat? <laughs> exactly. This game does punish curiosity, that's for sure. I know this from before. I have no items. I have no food. Uh. All right. Um. Yeah. All right, Andy. I'll go with it. Uh, I'll take the 101 card, I guess. Assuming I succeed on three cards. I'm not going to draw more than three. One. Two. Three. So I have three successes total. Oh, there's Mad Scientist. Not what I needed for that, but it'll help with crafting. Oh, the raft. We got the raft. That might be helpful. If we need to get off our island soon. Woven basket if we go hunting soon. Um, those are good items. I don't know what to take, but we succeeded. <laughs> Only take one card. Uh think the raft because like we have this swim action right here oh but it doesn't reduce cost of cards yeah so it only helps us get successes 
Yeah, so maybe it's not as good right now. Let's take... Like, I like the possibly the woven basket, but this could also help us crafting right now. I don't know. And if we have to do any thinky actions. Might be a bad idea. But I remember there's cards in this deck that can help you pull back cards. So maybe we'll just do that if we need. We see, find a hunting spot or uh, the raft. Basket always helps out at some point. Yeah, it does. I know. That's why I'm, I'm debating not tossing it. But I, I don't like you're, there's no crafting help down here. And back at the surface was stone and leaf. Oh yeah, it would help. Yeah, maybe we do that one. Yeah, yeah, if we can find food, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, if we get back to the surface, we can reduce the cost of making this uh, by two, I believe. We would just have to pay the one from the vine, which would not be bad. Yeah, okay, we'll just throw that away. Okay, so what are we doing? We're clearing this card, right? Well, we take a 101. Which I think there's some new stuff in these too, I think was shuffled in the based on the expansions. But I could be wrong. I don't remember what numbers, but Oh, we're tired. We're tired. Time to face facts. Your body is starving or starting, sorry, to give out as you're completely exhausted. The only thing that's going to get you back on your feet is an extended rest. So we could take the rest action. The only problem is we're only allowed to draw one card and we need three successes for it. So good luck. If you fail, you take a 750. I don't even want to know what that is. Don't even want to know what that is. Oh, probably you're dead. All right. Um, we discard this to the past, which make a pass. Make a pass over here on the side. Uh, and now we put in five four four. Only one. <laughs> I was just talking about a door. That's funny. Oh man, a massive door blocks your way. Oh my god. I just see this on the bottom of the card. Look at this. Your adventure ends here. As soon as I see that, it's like, uh-oh. Uh, it seems that you need to activate a sophisticated mechanism to open the door. How do you... Like, I could pass this no problem, right? Zero and zero. I don't even need to just draw any cards. I get zero successes. So you discard this if you do this. Oh, there's your butterflies, your snakes. I don't see spiders, though. There's something here. All right. If I succeed, it says discard this and replace it with a card bearing what you think is the correct number. If you do not happen to take the right card, this action is a failure. Apply the consequence below. And the failure is as you try to open the door, a yellowish liquid pours down on your head from a gutter above the door. Your skin begins to dissolve and you scream until your throat does as well and you die. <laughs> All right, so based on those other cards, what was it? Death is one, right? I should have probably noted that stuff down. But we wouldn't know what the snake was. I cheated on that one. But we'll pretend like we don't know what the snake number is. But if I did already know what the snake number was, uh, I think it was a four. You just count them up, right? So death is an eyeball in there. I see death is a one. The butterfly is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we know the butterflies. Oh yeah, we have the, the, the clue, right? This thing. Right? So, uh, hundreds of snakes. So the snake. One, two. So is it snakes are three, three snakes? Am I missing a snake? 
So the snakes, there's three of them, so they could be the hundreds, right? So three is the first number. Dozens of spiders. I don't see any spider here on this art. Unless, unless I'm messing something up. And then less than 10 butterflies. One, two, three, four, five. Seven. Seven butterflies. So is it 307? Well, I know of death. I know death was the number one. But I, those numbers on those cards might not relate to this puzzle. It's literally just this. Because remember, uh, I don't think we could guess based on just seeing those other cards, the 450s that helped us get this card. I think it's literally like you shouldn't be able to figure it out unless you have this clue card. Like you should have no way uh, of doing it properly. But uh, maybe you do. Well, I, th I think Adam, what it's saying is the less than 10 butterflies is just a clever way of saying it's like the ones. Like less than 10 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 9, right? So I think that's less than 10 butterflies is just indicating it's the, the, the last digit, the ones column, right? The dozens of spiders is kind of weird, but they didn't put spiders on this in this picture. So we don't have to do math with like dozens or assume it's the tens number. And then the hundreds of snakes is kind of like just saying you have three snakes here, that's 300. But if I do this, I guess the wrong number, we're done. <laughs> oh, I have that relic. We would use our 777, right? And that would be it. It's done. We lose our extra man, we're done. <laughs> and we don't have it for later. And Andy says, I think the fact you, go you coincidentally got the first clue in the first room is good luck. If you're wrong, it's a short video. Not much cleanup to restart though. That's true. I, I, yeah, we would just restart, but. <laughs> oh man. I assume this is the right clue for the right thing. It says, look carefully at the door. Any mistake could have disastrous consequences. The other thing though, it might not be that simple. What, what is with all the little, uh, the little bite marks out of those stones? Like, do those all have to be turned a certain way? Is there something there? I don't think so, right? I think it's just showing that, like, that's how you would turn them or something. And having the death in the middle, is that just letting us know that if you get this wrong, you'll die? Sam's here. <laughs> I think there is an adjustment to less than 10 butterflies. Think Indiana Jones. I, need, I haven't watched those movies in, like, decades. I don't know. Officially the longest, shortest playthrough. <laughs> Is there anything on the arrow? Uh, no, the arrow is just showing you like it. Uh, I know what you're thinking, but I think it's just generically the same. I don't know if it'll, I don't have autofocus on this thing on purpose, but. Yeah, I think all the arrows kind of just have the same art in them. Yeah, I don't think you're ever supposed to like know what's in those, but I could be wrong. So here's the thing. So I'm, I'm not trying to be too hardcore about it, but if I were not playing on stream right now, what I would do is I would have already left. I don't even think I would have come down here. You guys know that was my instinct was like, just follow the damn wind. I think this is a forbidden sanctuary. 
No point in wasting cards and effort going down there yet if I don't have the clues needed, based on what I knew. Now that I'm down here, I'm pushing my luck. We've already bumped into the first trap. We have clue number one, talking about a door. I feel like it's the right clue to the right door. We have butterflies, we have snakes, but we don't have spiders. So what I would do personally, what I'm thinking at this point is just leaving this alone and going and just wandering around because there's a chance this ends the playthrough. I would be chicken and scared away. I'm playing on easy mode. I don't even want to burn my easy mode card already. So I would just say I'm not, I don't feel 100% sure on guessing right now. Because that's the thing, you're still guessing. I'm not, I'm leaving it to chance. Like I have the clue, but is it enough? Is there more of an obvious like straight up like, dude, the door equals this. Like, is there somebody I can go talk to or another paper I find that's like, Here's the answer. Like it's 100% this. Like right now I'm still guessing. Like I know we've kind of solved it. We think it's 307. I would feel I'm like 70% confident on that 307. But the fact the game is telling you like you cannot guess you will die. I would say okay. No. I'm good. I'll go wander around a little bit more. Maybe we see another clue. Maybe that clue kind of makes sense. It's always going to be kind of a riddle. So I hate the way it says don't leave anything to chance. But it's like you're still... Even with the clue, is still you're still at chance. Yeah, but see, see what it happens. It says if you draw the wrong thing, right, right. Like I'm, if I'm playing a little hardcore about it, it says you discard this and replace it with a card bearing the, what you think is the correct number. If you do not happen to take the right card, this action is a failure. So even if even if three oh seven has a thumbs up on the back. And I flip it, it could tell me, ah, 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 we gotcha, you sucker. You didn't have the right number. Like, they could know that, that based on that, we're, we're guessing. And they could have put the thumbs up on a few different cards, is what I think. So I could, yes, thumb through the box, pick a bunch of different numbers, and try to guess accurately. But I think the fun, if you play kind of, like, more serious with this, is, like, if you don't even look at the right number, you failed. So, yeah. It could be wrong. This is what I'm saying. Get the heck out of here, says Andy. <laughs> but we're playing on stream. We're having fun. So, like, whatever. But leaving is an option. <laughs> but obviously, even if we solve this, the next room we don't have a clue for. So I'm, I'm out anyway. So, like, what's the deal? Why even try this? I'm not, it's not like it's going to give me a clue for the next room, I don't think. It's just going to bring me to the next next locked door or whatever puzzle you know so it's like and I, I only have one clue i only have one clue so i can't go any further go to the swamp get out of here sam <laughs> all right we could reset i know we could reset retreat yeah all right but we're here all right, I want votes in the chat. I want votes in the chat. Oh. Okay. The vote will be vote a one if you want me to leave. Vote two if you want me to guess the 307. Those are our options. We're, we're going with the 307 is the number I would do for two or one. We just leave and we come back later and we try it. Finals here. Hey, how's it going? Cursed. Seems like one is the general consensus. <laughs> You're all chickens like I am. I love it. All right. We're going with a one. <laughs> I so want to look in the deck at 307. I do. But if I was playing at hardcore and I was, I, I, I don't feel confident 100% and that clue, if that clue didn't say leave nothing to chance and it didn't talk about a guy losing his hand and death and it's warning us the adventure's over and the eyeball's there and we know that's related to death, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little scared and we can come back later and try. 
There is no treasure chest. Yes, well, there might be a treasure chest, Jim. That's the thing. Never give up, never surrender. <laughs> All right. We're not giving up. We can always come back. All right. But either way, I don't think we have enough to keep going through this sanctuary anyway. So we're going to come back again after we get more clues. We'll still have that clue. This door will still be here, I'm assuming. Uh, so we're not rushing into death here is what I'm trying to say. So I appreciate everyone voting one. I think that's the right choice for now. Based on what we know. Based on what we know. <laughs> but man, I want to look. I want to look. Oh, man. All right. Anyways. Uh... So let's just do this action uh, where we just have to pull two cards. So we're going to take a think to hand. Randomly take up to seven cards in the action deck. You may add one to your hand. You must shuffle the other cards back in the action deck and or discard pile. You choose for each card, then discard this. Okay, we got our first curse card. And Sakabra says, based on what we know, you're a wimp. <laughs> I'm trying to take it a little serious, all right? But I know there's a chance with this game you could, like, it's so obvious you could just be like, I, I remember before there was talk of, like, just keep pulling cards until we find the right number. Like, keep guessing different numbers. And yes, you could do that. The rules don't say you can't do that. But thematically, it's like, that seems a little lame. Just to keep finding it until you have the answer. But yeah. <laughs> that says if you get an envelope with a feather, it's me. Oh my god, still waiting for Nemesis Live. Yes, I know, Sam, I know. We'll get there. We'll get there. Andy says, How many clues could you get with just the 450 mechanism? How many combinations of three digit numbers can you get from the four cards? Somebody, where's Sam? Sam will know. Sam's going to drop us a number in, or Matt. Matt will drop a number in. So based on the four cards, four digits, how many combinations can we see from four digits? I, I don't remember. You just do like four to the power of four, is it? Or, or because it's only, no, it's a three-digit number. Three-digit number, but from four off, four numbers could be mixed in there. I don't know the math on that one. The treasure is on your front porch. Yes, Jim, uh, I did see it before I came down to stream. Uh, I got it. I think it was yours. Uh, we are expecting other packages, uh, but I'm not opening any boxes that come to the house right now because of yours. I, I don't want to spoil it. So if Mel wants to look at the box that is up on the kitchen table, uh, if she's here listening, by all means, go ahead. But I will not open it. But I did see a box. I just grabbed it and threw it in the house. Um, yeah. So thank you, Jim. <laughs> so Andrew says four times three times two times one, 24 total options. Oh my God, really? Uh, Sam, the digits aren't unique. The digits are one and three fours, I think. Yeah, we're just going to look. I don't care. This, I'll, whatever. Yeah. So it's three fours and a one. Three fours and a one. So it's 20, 24 combinations we could see. Yeah, so Cobra, nothing. I didn't check the mail, though. But there was, at the front door, they usually drop, like, larger boxes. Um, but it could be in, like, the little uh, mail thing over at the mailboxes. But it wasn't there on, on uh, yesterday. It wasn't there yesterday. Yes, and Canada Post is ridiculously behind right now. They're, like, super behind is what I've been, what I've been told. Yeah, with the numbers repeating, right? It can only be it can only be four different numbers, right? It can be four four four, and then it could be the one in either column, right? So it could be one four four or four one four or four four one. Yeah, only four numbers. Only four numbers. I should have figured that out. Duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only four numbers. And we've already found one. We've already found one. The only problem is those other three numbers could lead to decks of multiple cards, which we may have to search. More often. <laughs> wow. But six clues. 
yeah, so there's clues other places. I, I, but I don't know if this is one of the clues, you know? But I guess not. It would say it was like number whatever out of six, right? Ah. But, but th those other clues, so we know how to get four of them maybe. So that, that gets you like four of the clues, right? Let's say. Then the other ones are on here. So that port call is crap. We're going there for sure. That's one of them. I, I guarantee in the, in the underground, underground temple port call is stuff. We know there's a spider there from a previous playthrough. That I bet in there is one of them. I bet. And something about the snow, something about a dude offering shelter. He recently tired, offered me shelter, offered him to thank him. Maybe this guy, Nichols, gave a clue to whoever gave him shelter, or he gave him some pages or a book or something. I don't know. Port Cullis crap. <laughs> oh. Tower has pages? All right, so we're going to 149 again, right? Return all the cards on the board and in the past. Pass. Shuffle that in in a sec. All right. Five, six, six. 6, Like I don't know if we'll need these today. So like I want to put them in here just in case. But normally I would like leave this stuff to the side. It's only four cards, so it's not bad. But I have a lot more cards to sort through now because of this expansion, like literally like 50% more cards. Crazy. For entertaining, you know. All right, 149. you explore the area to the west of the hill with the holes in it? I don't know. Like, I don't remember. But I remember the hill with the holes has like a hidden number on it. I remember like sticking our hand in there to grab stuff. I don't remember much else about it though. <laughs> no worries, Andy. No worries. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's go to the one. Let's throw these back in there. Yeah, in a previous playthrough, I think I did, but I don't remember what is there. I don't remember. I could go scrub back through later, but uh, I won't right now. All right. Rafting? So I could craft uh, not that I, I don't know if I'll need it, but 
I can craft both of these for pretty cheap right now. I can craft the shovel for one card. I can craft the basket for only one card. And they're both stamina. So I could use like the basket on top and attach the shovel to it and bump this up by four pips. And then I guess I would hope to use this a bunch to get the pips down. Then as I attach food to it, I build the pips up. Black says, because I remember, because there's one thing I remember when I played that speaks to the clue you have now. Mention it if you'd like. Like which clue? Are you talking about the, the purple clue or the, the, the secret of the sanctuary we just got? I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I remember to the left of that hill is like forest area. There's like animal tracks throughout there. It's like just south of that is all the beach. Like all, all the, the like the yeah, the shore. Um and to the left, more left, is the swamp. And then above that is above that hill is like the escarpment there. And then on top of the escarpment, to the right is like the jungle, to the left uh, across the water is all the desert area. That's what I remember. But I think I've been all around there. I've been all through there. Um, like we've played, uh, if you haven't seen, we played Voracious Goddess. Then we did the Icy Maze, I think, was right after that. And then we played the Three Curse playthrough, where we did um, the one, the Fighting the Beasts or whatever, the Bloody Hunt. We did the Box. And there was one other one. I forget what they were all were called. But we played Three Curses together. It's in the forest area is what I'm referring to. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. But we could go there. If you think that's where we need to go, I, I don't know where this is going to take us, but. But go ahead. Yeah, Black, mention it. It's fine. I've been all through there, I think. Yeah, maybe you can drop like a, drop like a one word hint at like what you're talking about. Or just say it. I, yeah, just say it. It's fine. I think we've been all around there. Or like, when did you see it? That's the other thing. Item spots, right? Okay. So do I craft right now is what I want to think. Because, like, I don't want to start flipping these if we want to craft some stuff that could help us with fighting or something, right? Like, I feel like building the shovel for one card might be okay. It'll help us with digging, fighting, or the key, but, like, I don't know if that's right. But I think I should build the basket while I can only do it for one card. I think that's right. So I'm going to craft the basket, one card. We got a knowledge is power, which helps us with experience, right? Yeah, we get those experience cards. Oh, the old hut guy. Yeah, we met that guy in the icy maze playthrough where I don't think I was supposed to go there. But then he gave us something that I thought was connected to that curse, but then I don't know if it was. I don't remember. But I went to that guy at the beginning of the Icy Maze. I know what you're talking about. The old hunt guy. And that was a long time ago, but I remember going to him, talking to him, and then I remember getting stuck in the swamp, couldn't really get through. Then we had to go all the way back around, and, and he gave us something. 
he gave us something and I thought it, it maybe that something is what we need for this curse is what you're thinking. There was something that was 50-50, either empty or had something in it. Yeah, I remember that old guy. Yeah, I do remember that. But I, I don't remember what, what resulted from it. But I feel like we got something from him that I thought was related to the curse. But then it, it ended up the way I played it. It didn't seem to mean anything or like was a waste of my time. And he says, he seems to have information for lots of curses, that old guy. Oh, yeah, because maybe you're drawing and seeing different cards from him based on the clues based on the curses you're playing so you're thinking i should go to that guy yeah i think i want to go to the underground temple that seems useful if we if we if we naturally get there and it doesn't put us super far away from it I think I heard the clue say, speak to someone. Yeah, the clue does say something like, When I got out, the wind was still, increasingly tired, offered me shelter, offered him to thank him. For days, there was snow everywhere, the freezing wind, hungry, couldn't find the others. So I think Nichols, the last clue, he died somewhere in the freeze with freezing wind and snow or something. Yeah, snow everywhere, freezing wind, he's hungry. So somewhere this guy died. I know. I, I know now. I know. I know I know what's happening. I remember this old guy. It had something to do what he gave us. Had something to do with the cold, and that's why I thought it was icy maze. But somewhere near the icy maze in the snow i think is a grave and maybe that clue whatever he gives us is helps us with the grave or something that's what i'm thinking analysis paralysis go left no but this is jim this is how this game works there is stuff clues for things and you have to remember things from previous playthroughs sometimes and that's the way you'll like you'll benefit and you'll get through things it's like i'm i'm already long term like thinking about all the ways to get clues but yes, maybe just fall in the wind might, might make things more obvious. I know what you're saying. <laughs> but then I also don't want to flip certain unknown information cards if I'm going to do certain things with these cards too. So uh, we built the basket. I'm going to do one more card and I'm going to build the shovel. We got another think, okay? So shovel goes on here. The pips go up to five. I attached it on. We have a stamina item going here. I mean, I don't have to attach it, but I just think it's 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 fine to do so. It just sucks that it'll always be attached until we get rid of the basket. So that, that could be a bad thing to do, but I, I don't want to have two stamina items going. I remember that was like bad to have like so many items like that, but. Okay. Going left. Not if you haven't played before. True. All right. Fireplace. Taking shelter from the wind. Whoa, that's weird. How did it know? How did it know the wind was there? <laughs> Taking shelter from the wind, you spot an old fireplace with a pile of ash and some charred pieces of wood. We could take the fire action minus one and or success then banish this we can do the action for one card looking for three successes put a fire figure into play on your train card banish this or we could just continue on your way and banish this so this just helps us we we could we could make this for free we could just make the fire for free right off this because it reduces by one and also gives us success. So we literally don't even have to draw any cards. That's what that's telling me. I might as well, right? Do what should I? Should I put a fire on here if we need to come back? I don't have any food to eat though. But then I'm also wasting this friction fire, which I might need to build fire somewhere else. 
But I do have other fire items in here. I think there's three. No worries, Andy. Thank you so much. You're still alive. Yeah, I know. I might not be alive. There might not be a tomorrow's playthrough, just FYI. If the stream gets deleted, uh, you know we died. Uh, but you can go set a reminder right now for tomorrow's stream so you get notified when it goes live. Uh, it's already on the channel. It's in the playlist link down in the video description uh, for those who are curious. <laughs> Do you remember the grave in the north area? Not in Icy Maze territory, but like right before. Yes, this is what I'm remembering. Yes, I remember this. I, I think that's what it has to do with. That's where I bet he died. That's where I bet the clue is that uh, the last part of this clue is talking about. That's where I'm putting my money. Uh, the snow everywhere, freezing wind, hungry, couldn't find the others. So that's where I think like he, he died there and, and there's a clue where he died. That's what I think. That's what I think. And then this old man. Oh, but then there's a portcullis. Portcullis, old man. The old man might be connected to finding the clue from this guy. So it's, it's either two or three clues, but I think we're getting four clues from the other mechanic, and we need six. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not building the fire, but it's just an option. Uh, I was just thinking about it. So I'm just going to say banish this, go on my way. But that's on sucks, so I won't see this again for the whole playthrough. So it feels bad, but uh, banish. Banish, banish. Okay, uh, so card 56. 56. I'm also not the type to rush through this game. If anyone's new here and hasn't noticed, I take my sweet ass time. I like discussing things with you guys and figuring things out. So I know if you play through this and you're like, man, I played through the whole Forbidden Sanctuary in an hour and a half. Eat the whole thing, twice. Yeah, yeah, that's not what this that's not what's gonna happen here. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> okay. Rocks peek out from the surface of the water, and if you're careful enough, you should be able to get across without getting wet. Hmm. Oh, I see 254. I see it. I see it. Before we even get going. Right down here, 254, which we take like right away. Yep. All right. 254. Uh, which is coming from car 56, so we're good. This will get. Forget if you, from the hidden numbers, you discard the card or you banish the card. I think you discard it. I'm putting it in the past. I think it has to have that banish symbol. Uh, yellow, uh, the green and the yellow to banish. Uh, you watch every step to avoid slipping on the moss and the lichen that covers some of the rocks. On the way, you notice that something is stuck between two reefs. We can take that, that action there. We need another number one. So yeah, let's just look at 82, right? Hidden are discarded to the past. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> I just couldn't remember. Uh, all right, 82, 82. Hidden number hype, 82. Only one. No, no flavor text on the back. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What's happening? happening you pick up a bottle pick up a bottle and break it a piece of parchment tumbling out amidst the shattered glass immediately after this is revealed take 176 card from the adventure deck if available okay cards after cards
176. Only one. Treasure map. Found this one before? I don't remember. The place this map points to must certainly conceal a buried treasure. Keep your eyes open. Oh, we gotta look for this hole symbol. You have four cards to dig. Take a card whose number is equal to the number of your terrain card, plus 16, from the adventure deck if available. If it's not the right card, return it. Hmm. Okay, so this just goes in our backpack. I don't think it's related to this um curse but it could be some helpful item or something definitely could be helpful we'll just throw that in our satchel um and this says we can't do that action anymore okay so to move on to here plus two and moving around this island is annoying. Uh, so yeah, should I spend any cards from hand first? I think so. Or, or do I try to dig for a walking stick or something? Seven cards. I can add one to hand. Shuffle the other cards back in. It helps. I could also throw curses into the discard, I think, but it does rip through my action deck. Mm. I still have one more hand limit, right? Uh, five? Yeah, I can have five blue cards, four green cards, four items, four stacked high. Okay, so I'm not on my hand limit. I'm not on my hand limit. Did you ever move... Onto the train card to do that. Oh, yeah, you're right. I never moved. I never moved. I have to be on this card. Duh. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. So let me just pitch two cards. Uh, scholar. I'm gonna take scholar. Right. That'll help me with some of the cards in my hand. Or blowpipe fronting. No, I'll do scholar. And then I move to here. Then I do the bottle, right? Yeah, then I do the bottle. Sorry, like I said, I'm rusty. A little rusty. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. I can't just do that action not being on the card. Duh. Okay. Now I'll flip this one. Whoa, weaver fish. Weaver fish. Uh, a weaver fish is hiding in the muck, and you just happen to see it at the very last second. Beware of stepping on a sharp, poisonous dorsal spine. Yeah, see, here's these mandatory actions again. <laughs> and I don't have that card in hand yet. By a sheer miracle, you avoid getting stung. Oh, but I didn't take that card, did I? I didn't take that card. I took the cushion, right? So anyways. <laughs> uh, so if I... I can draw as many cards as I want. Try to get one success. I don't have any automatic successes in hand. Uh, but if I do fail... I randomly discard one card from the action deck. If it's a blue card, like a skill card, the active player takes a 104. If it's a curse card, I take a 108. Hmm. Hmm. So... Yeah, let's just... uh. I took solitary. Yeah, I did take solitary, but I haven't seen that yet. Uh, I'm thinking two or three cards. I feel like I've been lucky so far, but I mean, I've seen lots of stars, like full stars, but I feel like it's not going to keep doing that. So, like, I kind of want to draw three, but I, that might be overkill. But I'd, if I only draw two and I fail, I still have to draw a third, discard it. And then I end up with one of these red cards, which could make me discard more cards. So it's like, I kind of want to do three. To be like, it's still not for sure, but uh, yeah. Failure incoming? No, I'm drawing three. I'm drawing three. We got snowshoes. Half a star. 
Yes, yes. Solitaire, here it is. Yay, finally. This will help us get successes. Yeah, I'm taking that to hand, I think. And then, oh, pfft. yeah, so it would have been good with two, but the third one. Forewarned is forearm. You may discard this. Yeah, I love this one too. Oh, this I need to pull back if I can get a remember, but. Yeah, I feel like solitary is what I take, but then I have to discard something. Um, I think I'll just discard a think. That's what I think. <laughs> Feels bad. Uh, throwing this one away feels so bad, but I, I have a better one, though. That's hard. Uh, okay, anyways. <sighs> Alright, we passed. So this just goes away. Uh, by sheer miracle, you avoid getting stung. So this just goes to the past. We're good. But like this. I just easily see it. Okay. Uh, so we need 125. 25. Uh, there's only one. All right. This word again. Uh, the islet, islet is narrow and uncomfortable. Apart from a few patches of red seaweed, the only type of plant in this sandy soil is a short, sickly weed. Penguins! There's, we're on Penguin Island. We're on Penguin Island, I guess. Is that right? That's where the penguins only are? I don't know. Remember we called it Penguin Island, you guys told me. That's what it was known as. Uh, I see the wind. I see the wind. The wind's like going up, right? The wind's like coming in from the east and going north. And then there's like the mandatory action. Does that mean when I step on that, I have to draw 47? Is that what it means? I have to do that action right away? Or does that mean I have to do it right now when I draw the card? I think I have to do it right now. But then it's on the card, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm confused again. <laughs> I don't see a hidden number. And another fog. Wind off the water. Oh, it's from the north going east. But we don't... The wind's going west, I thought. I thought we already... Yeah. Hmm, okay. Okay. Um... We have to spend three to move on there. So rough. Okay. Oh, you mean... Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because, like, we determined the wind's going west. I think it was Brian explaining to us on art how, like, the wind... To draw a wind, like, I, I was like, how do I know which way this wind's going? But it's like, it's thinner here and it goes, like, thicker over here, maybe? I don't, I don't know. But it is going to the west, I assume, because it's, like, more on the left of the card. So if that's a theory, then the wind continues on going that way and then goes this way. I don't know if it's, like, we're trying to follow the wind in this curve based on a clue. So I think it's, like, we got to go that way if we have options. But I don't I don't see that option right now, but sure. Oh, it's Buell, it's Buell saying it. Sorry, Buell. Thank you. Uh you tell my memory is like getting flooded with info from this game. I can't even remember like an hour ago what was said in chat. <laughs> oh man, this game. Alright. Uh okay, so three cards. A move like this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, 
Learn by doing rope and rudimentary flint. Rudimentary flint is like the same as this one, although I could make a fire on here with rudimentary flint if we want to make it easier to get back. I don't need to. Oh, here we go. This will help me from moving. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take this because the next card is even two to move from that one. Yeah, I'm taking a learn by doing. I have to get rid of something. Three, four, five, six. Uh, oh, I should have done this knowledge is power first, right? Yeah, let's pretend I did that. So I just take a three card, right? Because I can do it because I have this in hand now. Uh, I can reduce the cost of it and have a success. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll pretend I did that first. I forgot to do that to get out of hand. I'm rusty. Uh, yeah, so we got an experience point. Okay. The continent is home to formidable creatures, so matter what, so no matter what you like best, fighting or stealth, make sure you're always prepared for the worst during your exploration. That's our tip. Okay, so this would have been gone. Take one experience card for each other knowledge's power card in the hands of all involved characters. Take one additional. No, whatever. Yeah, so that's gone. Yeah, yeah. I should never have those just sitting there. Once I get this, once I have a way to rip them out of my hand like that, I should just be doing them, right? Like, don't hold them. Rope, didn't that help with the portcullis? Yeah, it did. But, like, we're, uh, like, I think we're so far away from that. And we haven't seen any remembers. So if, like, we actually do get there quickly, we could just grab this with a remember. Like, I, I can't even craft it for a reasonable cost unless I use a learn by doing or I have vine, which vine we won't see until we're in that area anyway. I just feel that's like so far away. But that's, you're right. You are so right. And it is because I'm getting old, Buell. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Did I take the rope and just carry it for a while? I'm also, I like, I just think it's survival right now. I don't have any food. Uh, I don't know, but like, I don't know where we're going. Like, I could just appear right near that underground temple. Not older than 35. Uh, yeah, I'm 40, man. I'm 40. I'm an old sucker. An old sucker. Well, I guess it's relative. But yeah. When does, when does memory loss start? Because I feel like it happened early for me. Maybe. Anyways, alright. That was us moving, right? Three cards. I took that. So we're here. Now we have to do this one, 47. I think that's how that works. I think right away we have to do the 47. We're gonna look at this. I know, I know. <laughs> As you are about to reach the center of the islet, uh, something slimy similar to spit lands in your face. Almost immediately your skin begins to itch terribly. Fun! A colony of shellfish are buried in the sand and do not seem to like being disturbed. This is not, this, it, it is not that their defense system is dangerous, but it's certainly irritating. Every time a character takes an action on the train card this is attached to, its required number of successes is increased by one, unless they have a card with the keyword stealth in their inventory. I don't. Don't. Hmm. So even wa even walking off here is, is is an extra success is needed. Hmm. 
interesting. <laughs> I'm older than you, Ross, so I understand. Okay. <laughs> Ace hugger? Oh no! All right. Uh, based on this information, uh, I think I need to do the uh, like eyeball action up here to kind of like investigate. It says one plus card, zero successes, but now we know this is here, so I need to do extra. I need to get one success. So, but failing doesn't do anything. I would just have to keep reattempting it. I do have solitary to throw away, worst case. But that's a sucky use of it, for sure. Um, mm, yep. I'm going to draw... I'm going to draw one. Problem. That's the problem with being shellfish. Uh, uh, uh. I'm just going to draw one. <laughs> yes. All right. We got the success we need. And pipes. Music, fire, thinky stuff. I don't think so. Music and serenity. Not, not what we're looking for. All right. 46. There is just one 46. Yeah, I know. Follow the wind. That's why, I, that's why I chose that action up there instead of going west or looking west. The eastern coast is bordered by towering cliffs that run for several miles, and you have high hopes of finding a strand further north where you could come ashore. To the south, the ocean extends as far as the eye can see. Yeah, I'm going fall in the wind for sure. Considering the long distance and the cold water, swimming away would neither, would neither be reasonable nor safe. Oh. Should have kept the raft. Oof. Yeah, I should have kept that raft. That's what, not the rope. It's all about the raft. I should have known. I, I should have thought of that. But it's okay. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what island this was or anything. Hmm. Okay. So two plus cards looking for seven successes. Ugh. But I do have a way of getting two right now. That's it. God. I don't, I don't want to do the fail on it on purpose. Because you take a 104, I have to reduce the durability of an item. Then I take a 102, return all the cards on the board, and put myself at 43. I don't know where 43 is, and it could be totally like on another island, opposite side of the main island. I don't even know where the heck it would take us. I don't want to risk it. But anyways. Yeah, I think that's where I need to go based on where following the wind, which is what this clue is telling me to do. Oh, and because of this, I need an extra success. I need eight successes on that card, I think, right? Each time a character takes an action on the terrain card this is attached to, the required number of success is increased by one unless they have a card with the keyword stealth in their inventory. I don't have still. Is there a sub to the left? I, I, I don't think this is that island. But I wish. And sorry if I just spoiled something, but I don't, I don't think there, this one is that. Eight successes, my god. I'm going to do that without like dying, without losing half my deck. I need to find a remember. I think I need to do this think. I think, I think, I think, I think I need to do the think. And then dig for a remember. Okay. I can toss a couple curses out of the deck if I bump in any curse cards. This, I can filter them into the discard pile, which helps me see more successes in the, in the cards that I draw. I grab the remember, I use the remember, and I pull back the raft. 
And the raft in the discard pile, like one of the first cards we saw. It could help give us two successes and turn any sevens into successes. Oh, and it also gets us a different card with the five, right? Because we add that to this. We add the five to the 189. I, I feel like that's a good thing to do. I feel like we want to do that. That's, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. So, based on those, uh, that thing. Uh, so I'll spend this think. Randomly take up to seven cards from the action deck. You think so? <laughs> One, oh, remember it was right on the top. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, I forgot about these cards in here. Those will help at some point, too. Yeah, we haven't seen any of those. God, that was a thing. All right. Uh, so I am going to put this in the discard pile. Get rid of one curse. Okay. Uh, so we're taking the remember, right? I don't think anything else here helps us with the getting off this damn island, so we're not going to worry about that right now. And we get to shuffle them back in. Uh, I'm gonna need to find food because this is uh yeah I'm using a lot of cards and I literally just to move like three spaces it feels I know he went underground or whatever but uh yes only maybe not on this tile since you need extra successes here oh yeah, true. The extra craft I'll need, right? Oh no, yeah, one success. Oh no, but I still have to draw a whole bunch of cards to craft. I'm, I'm assuming I'll still get a success on it. Yeah, there's going to be so much effort just to get off this island. Okay. Cut. So we throw away this one. Choose one card in the discard pile, add it to your hand, and discard this. Raft, okay. okay. Oh yeah, we can learn by doing to reduce the cost of crafting this though. We only have stone on here, so nothing that helps us. We only need one success. I don't know what happens if you fail on a craft. I assume you just can try again later, but like fail on it uh okay so we're gonna craft go is peak left before continuing yeah but what if i flip this and it's like bad i understand i could flip it and it could be something that has vine or something that helps me craft or something but i think majority of the cards hurt you rather than help you unless you're on that like tutorial island like i don't want to do another test to like step on something Oh, hey, John. <laughs> Not staying for spoilers. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Unless you've already played, but yeah. Welcome, John. Welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you for clicking in. I appreciate it. Only way. Okay. Um, Clockworks here. Hey. How's it going? All right. Uh... I could peek, uh, but those damn cards. They are just the ones, right? The ones are the easier stuff. I think that's what's on the, the starting island, too. Yeah, let's flip. Because there could be a life jacket, I think, is in there. Or maybe that was later. There is some good things that you can find. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to flip. Oh, but I need a success to do it. Here's the thing. I, I need one success, right? Because I'm on that terrain. So I have to start spending cards to even look. So I don't think I should. I don't think I should. I don't want to waste this on that. And I don't have anything that reduces that action. Oh, yeah. I think I, I should not do that. And I still don't have anything with stealth. If I had something with stealth, I would. But that's okay. All right. So I'm going to use learn by doing. 
And I'm going to try to craft the raft by only spending two cards. And hoping I get a single success. And I did not. I did not. So what I'm going to do... Should I throw away solitary? Just to craft. I feel like I should. I, I don't want to pull... Because now I have to do... Five cards plus. Like this, this stupid stuff here. I then, oh, I could also take knowledge to power's hand, and then I would have a stealth. Oh, I had a stealth probably, or unless that one wasn't stealth. And I'm all over the place here. No, it was aggressiveness. Okay, it was aggressiveness. We're okay. <laughs> they have different numbers or different things. Oh, this is stealth also, the war paint. Yeah, unfortunately, man. I'll only need seven successes, and they, these. Hmm. Yep, I'm going to throw away solitary. That way I craft the raft. Start a craft and skill pile. I can take either of these cards to hand. I feel like I take knowledge as power. Cost war paint. Uh, I think it adds one to every type of action. I, I don't know. Like, is it literally saying only actions that are printed on the train card? Or is it saying anytime I take an action while I'm, like, standing on the train card? Each time a character takes an action on the terrain card this is attached to, its required number of successes is increased by one, unless they have a card with the keyword stealth in their inventory. I don't. I assume it's punishing us in general, being annoying for anything. That's what I think. I'm taking like the worst of it, but now I have something stealth in my hand. Yeah, standing on it is how I would think too. Yeah, as long as I'm on that, any action, any action I can do, even attached to it or from my hand or anything while I'm standing there, is annoying. Which makes sense. All right, now I want to do this action to try to get the hell off of here. Two plus, looking for seven successes. I don't have anything in hand to help me with that, but I have this raft, which has two successes on it already, and any sevens I see will turn into successes. So I'm looking kind of for five successes on the cards I draw. So I, I don't feel, feel like two is enough. I feel like I have to draw like, I know there's that table that I used to reference. Let's see, there's that table in the rule book, but again, I've already altered the deck. So adding extra crap in, so, or actually it's not really crap. It's really good stuff, right? <laughs> so this is in the rule book. Uh, so if we were kind of looking for like five more successes, uh, drawing six cards is like a 45% 40, chance to get like five plus successes. But we added in those prodigy mode cards, which kind of will tweak these numbers, of course, right? But it doesn't take into account any... Doesn't It doesn't... Uh, doesn't take into account lucky sevens either, which we we do, because we have that uh, we have the raft. What am I drawing? It's a necessary risk. So should I draw six cards? Should I draw seven? Should I draw five? Uh, I'm thinking of six is like the number. Thinking six. 
but we, we know there's still, I think, we only have two curses, so there's three curses left in the deck. So we could draw into one or two of those and see a dead card. We could draw into ones that have a seven, ones that have a seven and a star, some half stars, maybe the half stars don't match. Yeah, it's just been a while. I'm a little rusty on like what the math would be because like I remember we just get used to it and then I would just know like, okay, I'm going to pull this many to try to get this. Six and hope for sevens. Yep. All right. Maybe seven. Maybe seven. Yeah, maybe I draw seven just to be sure. <sighs> that, I don't want to have to draw six and then fail, then draw like seven again and hope to succeed. If that, <laughs> if we fail a second time there, it's like GG. It is a lot of cards, I know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Haven't seen, yeah, we haven't seen those new ones. Yeah, yeah, the Prodigy cards. We haven't seen those. Any, some of those count as like two, right? Because they're a star. They're a star, plus they have halves. I think they have a full star on them too. Like, I shuffled them back in, right? I didn't draw any. But normally by now, I would have been holding like uh, at least one of these in hand to help us. I just threw the Solitary away, which could have been another two. Yeah, that's rough. I do have a, self, a stealth card, so I only need to get the seven successes. Take five? Just do five cards? So I'm, I'm reducing the raft down to three. For sure we're using the raft, okay? For sure we're using the raft. We have two successes of the seven we need. And we have a seven star, which will turn any sevens. I think I'm going six. I'm going six. All right, here we go. Uh, so let's do it in the order we drew. We got one and a half on the left. Club. Two. Rep four out of seven. Three, four, five. Okay. We got another one, two, and we can join this one. There's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And nine. We got nine stars. Nine stars. Now let me read some of these cards because I don't know. A remember. Walking stick. Where were you? You would have been nice to craft a while ago. To help us get across these things. Club. Walking stick, remember. And here's these prodigy mode cards. So as you didn't see, we added these to the deck at the beginning. So I can put this in hand. You may discard this during the cost step of an action you're involved in in order to apply the following effect minus three cost. Lucky star. You may discard this during an action you're involved in in order to apply the following effect minus two and or give you a seven. And here's good old cushion. That's a stealth also. Six was a good choice. Yeah, we could have done it with four, but yeah, whatever, that's good. We didn't get a curse though. So like if there was a curse or two in there, that could have still made us fail, depending where that was. Um, Feel like walking stick. Big prodigy, yeah, it, it kind of helps with with big cost actions. Kind of helps with big cost actions. But like walking stick could help reduce the costs of movement. You know, four times. At least. 
So it will save us cards in the long run, but it costs us two to make it. We could just take Remember and be super flexible. And we could take back uh, Solitary or Solitary, whatever it is. Solitary. Like we could just take back Solitary with Remember. Cushion Stealth. Man, so many good options. Oh, this is a bad one. Bad pull, bad pull. I think I'm going to take to remember. Although, I should know where we're going to land. Is this just taking us to the snowy area? To the, like, north, east of the... Of the... Actually, I, maybe I noted this stuff. Did I note where that boat stuff goes? I remember we talked about it. No, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Oh, no, no, I didn't. All right. I'm just debating, like, maybe I need stuff for walking. Maybe I just need cost reduction. But taking the remember means I can just pull it back out if I need one of these. Yeah, I'm taking the remember. I feel like it's more flexible. The only problem is if uh, a mandatory action flies up in our face, I, I don't have the immediate thing to, res like, to help reduce the cost probably. But I don't know where we're going, and I want to see that first. Okay, so 189 plus raft is 5. Um, there's nothing else in that box that we have to do. So we're going to 194, right? 194. And it's coming from card 46. Yeah. Yeah. So, card 46, thumbs up. You have reached the open sea. Uh-oh. Oh. Okay, okay. If you choose to head north, apply the following effect. After traveling along the cliffs that border the shoreline, you care careful to avoid the current that might push you towards the reefs, you eventually easily berth in a little cove. Return all the cards on the board, on the board, and in the past. Put a 198 card into play. Each player places their figure onto it. That 198 is, I think, it's the one that led us to the shore. At the bottom, you you step onto the shore. Uh, there's like a beach, and at the south end of the island, and then that's where that like box was. There, you can like look in this box. I think that's where the 198 is. But I could be totally wrong. But I feel like we've started on 198 and other quests. We've 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 uh, breached at 198. But I could be forgetting. Are you gaming the game, Rob? What do you mean? I'm I'm using my memory. And then if you choose to head south, apply the following effect. We've done this before. I remember seeing this card before. You leave the continent behind you until it is out of sight. After long hours at sea, you eventually make out a small island and decide to berth there. Yeah, we don't want to go to the small island. We don't want to go to the small island. We'd put a four into play. Newbie Island? Yeah, that's Newbie Island. Yeah, we don't want to go there. I, I, no matter what island it is, I don't want to go that way. We want to go north, and I think we want to go north because of the wind. The way the wind was telling us to go, that's where we go. We're going to go that way. 198. Okay. So these all get returned. Uh, this all goes returned. But I'll just put this stuff in a pile. I won't, I won't put it away right now. Uh, this can just go back in the deck. We haven't even seen that one. That's easy. So these things, uh, all the past... So I'm just going to put this stuff all to the side. These are the cards that will go back in. I'm just setting that off to the side. I'll sort that out after the stream unless we need to grab stuff from there. Um, but I'll know. But I've removed it out of the past anyway. Okay, and 198.
You arrive at a stony stretch of ground running between the base of a glacier to the north and a cliff to the south. Oh no, this is, is this is where I, I, I was thinking originally. This is like that fishing spot uh, on the edge of, on the east side of the um, island. It's like just northeast of the uh, underground temple, like the forbidden temple or whatever it's called. Jungle temple, underground temple, whatever it was calling it. Uh, it gently slopes down to the edge of the ocean. That's what I think. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and I think that's why they put the penguins there to remind you you kind of come from Penguin Island, the turtles there in the water to remind you, like, you can get to Turtle Island, if I'm correct. I don't remember, but... We see a number? I don't see a number. No shoes. A little harder to walk around here, or to travel or move, or whatever it is. Yeah, you can fish here, I'm pretty sure. Think we can fish here. Oh, okay, so we need ones. So the, this would be back in the deck. This would be back in the deck. So we'll just do that. We'll shuffle these in. So we could see some of those same ones. Whoops. We know we have to like go this way down to get to like the temple or somewhere over here. There's there's a hunting hunting around here. Fishing though, I think this is like a hard fishing spot. I don't have any help with fishing. But I, I kind of need food. I, I think I could start eating some stuff, shuffling my deck. I still don't have good stuff for hunting yet. I feel like I've thrown some of that stuff away. I have a treasure map. But I'm not I'm not I'm not chasing the treasure. But I think I know where that is. That's over in the sand area. And that's not where I'm going, and no clue is telling me to go that way really. But if we're in that neighborhood, yeah, sure, but I, I I'm not I'm not going that way right now. Uh what blasphemy. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna tank a whole playthrough for some treasure guys. I don't do that stuff. <laughs> oh man. And the other problem is I don't know if I've gotten that treasure before, so I don't even remember. Is there wind on a card? I no, I don't see any. Don't see any. But, we know we need to go to the underground temple. And we're that close, I should have probably grabbed the rope. I think. Now, now that we... Now that we're here. So, if we're looking at the bottom paragraph there. I left the tower with a few sheets from the journal following the wind. We did. Visited an underground temple. Okay, that's next. That's where I think we need to go. We'll find that portcullis, which I believe is in the temple, and then we go left. It's like south, southwest end of the temple. And then uh, something about a comfortable bed. I don't know what that is. Uncontrollable anger. Don't know what that is. And when I got out, I think it'll make more sense, though, once we get through the portcullis and find that spider thing in that last little, like, treasure room. When, and then when I got out, the wind was still. Now, like this stuff, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, but I think it'll make more sense if we just follow the underground temple and go through the portcullis. I think there was a bed in the temple. Is that what's in that room? I, I remember that like room. There's like something was shattered, and I feel like there was treasure in there. I, I remember this room. I can picture the room. I just don't remember. There was a bunch of stuff you could interact with, and I did make a note. I did make a note. One of them, one of them had the spider symbol on it. From like one of my first playthroughs. In my notes I put um where is it? 
Purple spider banner in bottom left of jungle temple where had to use rope. That's what I put. I, 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 I don't know. Pass Rob doesn't make the best notes, but that's what I remember. Okay. So either way, uh, I think I just investigate the fishing spot. But I feel like it, it's... Yeah, let's do it. Let's investigate the fishing. So we're going to spend one cart. It's another remember. Beautiful. There's three remembers? Nice, nice. Good to know. Uh, okay, 278. The water appears to be weightable for about 50 yards from the shore. There are many fish, and you are rather confident that you will catch some. Oh, I was pointing at that probably, and you couldn't see it. Uh, so this is a fishing spot. Depending on the number of successes you obtain, take the corresponding number of 200 cards. So it's locked at drawing three cards. I need two plus successes. So I'm looking for like probably like five plus successes off three cards. Yeah, I need something to help me with fishing. Reveal them. If at least one involved character is bloody, which we're not, you must discard one of these cards without the keyword predator. Choose one of the remaining cards which represent your catch. Is this where I could see the bear and all that stuff? I don't want to do this if it's going to lead to me fighting a bear right now. I'm not ready for bear fights. I am not ready for bear fights. See why I should have took that fishing card now that was recommended earlier. <laughs> Ugh. I'm not feeling fully well, Jim. <laughs> it's just that that treasure map, Jim. I think is like on the other side of the island. It's far from here. Not that far, but it's far. In game terms, I don't have the cards in my deck to get that far, is what I'm saying. But yeah, we can hunt along the way, but I just, I don't know. I just don't know. It would be something that helps, but I don't know. Then we have to get all the way back. All right, so fishing. Is it worth three cards, two successes? We would use up the fishing spot too. That's the other problem. You have to banish it. So like we don't see this card again for the whole playthrough. Like we don't see, yeah, we don't see it. So I'm going to ignore the fishing spot. I'm going to just check this spot out. Where there is life, there is hope. For whatever reason, you have begun entertaining the idea that this journey might actually have a positive conclusion. No, I haven't done that yet. Oh, there's a new card. It's got this symbol. Nice. Okay. First time seeing this, I assume. Uh, only the active player is forced to take the following action. Oh, you're forced to do the think right now. But I do have a card in hand that reduces... I have Scholar, which reduces the cost by one. And the success is... I have an auto success. So... I could do the left, and it's a red. So if I succeed with one or less card, and I draw any cards, uh, I could put one back into the deck. But I don't think so. If you have more than one... Oh, I have to do the one on the right, because I have more than one card in one red card in hand. Yeah, because I'm tired and I have... Like these two, I do have two red cards in hand. So I feel like I have to do the one on the right. But I already have a free success. If I am successful, you're filled with renewed energy. Randomly take one card from the discard pile. Three... If the event lunch is in play, and shuffle it or them back into the action deck, return this. 
What the heck? Otherwise, the glimmer of hope is quickly extinguished. Banish this. Hmm. Okay. So if I draw one card and I pass, I just take random one card from the discard pile. Could be a curse. I shuffle it back in the deck. Either way, it puts another card in the deck. But I've just spent a card at least. And if I fail, I just lose that card. Or I could add it to hand or whatever. And then I banish this card. Is it worth it for one card? Yeah, this this seems lame. It like I think I need lunch to make this card even matter. So I'll I'll just draw zero. Right? Yeah, I just draw zero. Yeah, I yeah, okay. I, unless I'm missing something here. I'm just gonna draw zero. I fail. Banish this card. Done. Well, I'll never see this card again on the current playthrough, so I guess if we see lunch, we know I don't have the combo for it or whatever. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. We'll see this again in a future playthrough, I'm sure. Maybe we'll have lunch. Okay, that's in our banished. Scott, does the red diamond apply if I have to do the effect to the right? That's just when I'm not sure. Like, is this red diamond also attached to this on the right? That's what I'm not, I don't get. Like, I think it is, right? Red diamond, this symbol, and then all it is is the cost is this or this. But I, I guess, yeah, if I succeed, I shuffle. Okay. So as long as I draw one or less cards and I succeed, I shuffle in. I could shuffle in the one that I, if I don't like. Yeah, okay. Okay, I mean, I'll try it. If Yeah, I'll try it. So, I have one success. So it's like, I'm just drawing one card. I mean, I could keep the card too, if it's good. I, but it is just drawing one card. And if I succeed, so the mastery is, if you draw X or less cards in the action deck, during the cost step, and the action is a success, you may shuffle some or all of these cards back into the action deck during the skill step. So it's like, it's a may. But then I'll get to shuffle another one back in. Yeah, the thinking, so yeah, exactly, okay. All right, we, get, we did get it. We got a knowledge is power, it's a success. So I, I can keep this knowledge is power, or I can throw it back. Damn. Feel like feel like throwing away the friction fire, but I think I might need to make fire soon if we go hunting. But I don't have equipment for hunting. I feel like I'm in a very bad start here. Very bad start. I'll just power. Yeah, we'll return this back into the deck and one at random from here. Yeah, I shouldn't banish it. You're right. I shouldn't banish it because I might find that lunch event later. I don't know. And it's not like it's a bad card to see. It's better than flipping something that's going to hurt me. You're right. You're right. Okay, so this is going back into the deck. And then we'll take one random card from here back in. Okay. Shuffle them in. And this just goes to the past. Oh no, it returns it. Oh, we return it. It goes back into the, the ones. But we could see it again. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't know. I have scholars, so it's like never like bad, bad. Now that's a weird one. That's a weird one. Okay. Sure. Okay. 
New card, new card. Uh, okay, so 214. 214. Only one. Uh, the frontal edge of a massive glacier slopes down from the north to onto the carpet of a luxuriant forest. Especially if you get rid of tired, it's a freebie. Yeah, that's a problem. I have more red cards. Number, see a number on this one. But I know there is one with a number around here somewhere. I guess that kind of applies to almost everywhere on the island. <laughs> Okay. Now we need to go to the threes. I think we have new cards in here. All right, I gotta spend two to move. It's so rough. I should grab walking stick probably. With a remember, I think. Walking stick. Need wood to make it though. So I toss a remember, I get a walking stick. I spend two cards to craft it. But then I instantly get those cards back. Oh no, it's a ho it's a sh uh, the the uh, the snowshoe symbol. Never mind. But this one's a two. I could reduce that. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Man, just moving around in this game is a killer. It's a killer. Locator. Hey, oh man, love me some seventh continent. Yeah. Character mini sculpt is amazing. <laughs> it's visually very nice on stream, so everyone knows where I am. <laughs> All right. I have the miniatures for this game, but they're garbage. Uh, they're super small, and I think they're trash. So I pretend like I don't own them. They're embarrassing. All right. Um... Yeah, we're just going to move. Two cards. Curse and a learning from your mistakes. So we're here. Um, two, three, four, five. I probably should have did the knowledge is power before again, but I forgot because I'm an idiot. Oh, I keep doing that. We're going to pretend that I just did it. We're just going to take a three. So another experience point. Surviving the first hours must be number one concern. So find hunting and fishing spots and gather appropriate equipment. Find a comfortable place to rest and take your experience points into advanced skills. Yeah, I'm trying to find a hunting place. I know, game. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oops. Been harassing me about it. Jeez. All right. Uh, so from here, we're obviously only going one way. So, oh, weather card. We get our first weather. Oh, I remember you saying that. That's why I was joking about the pond. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, ghostly fog. The surrounding area is covered with thick patches of eerie fog. If a weather card is already in play, return it and remove the corresponding figure from the board. Nope, this is our very first one ever. Uh, put the fog figure into play on the card. Put the fog figure into play on the card that will replace this card. If it's not a terrain card, put the figure into play on the active player's terrain card instead. Take a 510 card. 
Okay. So let's find out what the next card is. 264. We know it's a terrain card. As we've traveled it many times, I'm pretty sure. 264. I guess, who knows. You arrive near the border of a forest where you can hear all manner of insect and animal sounds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a number on this one. Yeah, this is the one. I knew there was a number nearby. So we have a 141 in the top here. We're going to go grab 141. I don't see animal tracks yet, but we kind of know where the hunting spot is. Oh, there. Uh, there's walking stick crafting area here. All right, so 141. I'm going to grab that now before we switch. While weaving your way through an entanglement of creeping plants and old twisted trees, you find a passage to the north that you had not initially seen. Oh yeah, it's just a way to kind of like get back. Yeah, so we can retrace our steps. We also get vine. Uh, so the crafting is better on this card. But it's foggy. Oh, and it's, it's easier movement. Easier movement. I'm all about that. I'm all about that. Okay, so this will go into the past. Okay, uh, we get some threes. We'll do the fog in a second. Okay, uh, so the fog figure. <laughs> what the heck is that? All right, a 510 card. Come on, don't be annoying. It's going to be annoying. I don't know what I was thinking, putting weather in the game. Thought it'd be exciting, but I don't know. The fog thickens, and now you can hardly see more than a few feet ahead. Oh, great. Immediately, after one or more character figures, leave the terrain card with the fog figure on it. Take a 528 card. As long as the fog figure is in play, the following effect applies everywhere on the board. Oh, you can be stealthier. Oh, that, okay, I like the weather now. <laughs> when, you are, when you are to return all the cards to the board, return this as well and remove the fog figure from play. So this is a weather card that's just active now. This is just active. I don't know where to put this, but we'll just throw it right here. Okay. Normally goes by your satchel on the board somewhere, but our satchel's in like a card holder, so we'll just keep that there. So we have some extra stealth bonus. But also we take a 528 when we leave this train card, which we have to go through there. And this goes to the past. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, what the heck is this? This is hilarious. Foggy. Okay. Um, I, I think for the movement, since I have to spend two to walk there, I'm just going to spend this one. I know it might seem weird, but a little overkill. But I don't want to waste more cards. So I'm just going to throw that to move over there. And not draw anything. Um, okay. Crafty time. I can make a fire here. I can make a fire. Because it has, like, I can get a fire for free on this space. And the hunting is near here, so, like, I could eat on this spot, right? So dropping a fire figure. I'm allowed to have four fire figures in play, too, with my character's ability. So that might be a good thing to do. It'll help me move back there also. I think the hunting spot is to the left. I also could use the remember and craft the walking stick, the rope. Yeah, I might as well grab the rope now and craft that too. I can attach it to the raft, max out the raft. But I also could get something for hunting. Like a oh, blowpipe is full craft cost.
Yeah, I have nothing for hunting going on. This is crazy. I could just take solitary to have extra successes on the on the hunt. That might be helpful. Or I get low pipe, but it costs me cards. I don't know. I don't know. This is tough. Yeah. All right. Let's let's start the craft. Uh, so I'm gonna drop fire here. I'm gonna craft for free. Uh, friction fire. Drop a fire on the space. Okay. Uh, so we get that out of hand. I, I will toss a remember. Do we need to do that now? Because we can come back here super easy. Yeah, let's not do the rope thing yet. But that is something we should think about doing. But I am going to take solitary, I think. Yeah, I'm going to remember a solitary before I do anything. Okay, let's flip this one. A horrific sight. Just tune in again. Are we still chasing the wind? I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. Uh, okay. Uh, we're, we're trying to hunt, actually. We're trying to find a place to hunt. But I, I don't have much for hunting. But I feel like I want to start getting food while I'm in the area of that one hunting spot. A badly decomposed head is impaled on a stake. Further along, you see other stakes topped with additional human skulls. You would rather do anything than go down this path. A character that is frightened or terrified can neither take nor get involved in the following action. I'm only tired. Uh, so thinky. In the, or th okay, so my cost is three cards, zero stars. Or if at least one involved character is blinded, I'm not. So I could just discard it. Otherwise, I do not want to end up like that. One random character involved takes a 103. So it's a think action. Oh, it does give me bone... I don't have to do this, but to get rid of the card, I do. But right now, I have wood and bone available to me out of nowhere, but I don't have anything to craft. But that's interesting. But that is a thing. All right, so I have this card. I can reduce the cost. Oh, it gets better if they're blinded. I get it. <laughs> so I just have to draw two cards to get rid of it. Oh, bolas, right before a, a hunt. That's good. I'm going to take those bolas. I'm going to craft those bolas. Rudimentary flint, we're good right now. But I think all of our fire things we've seen now. But we do have fire right here. Okay, so this is discarded. Back to the past, or to the past it goes. Do you pay no heed to the macabre spectacle? Discard this. All right. Now we get to see 220. A pool of water seems to have collected underneath one of the larger trees to the north. It might be a prime source for local fauna. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is a spot where we could hunt, I believe. Don't see a number. All right. Three. Okay, uh, we're going to spend one to move. 
Or Warren is forearmed. Nice. Uh, it sucks that we drew this right now. That's Oh, that's three successes. I forgot that was a thing. But it's a success in hand. All right. We're here. All right. Let's uh, craft. Oh, we forgot to craft before moving. Shoot. We'll pretend I, I did that. Uh, so uh, vine. And I just had to draw one card, which would have been that card. And then the next movement would have been a torch. But the bolas would be crafted, their aggressiveness. Uh, they have like a one pip on them. Okay, so we have that for the hunt. We need that for hunting. Do you pull a card for leaving the tile with a fog as well? I did, I did. So I, I need one to move from there, which was, I did that, but we'll say I did it in the opposite order. Because I would have done one to craft and then one for move. You need to trigger the fog as well. Ah, yes, fog. Thank you. I see what you're saying. Pull a card for the fog, uh, which was five two eight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no. Five two eight. Oh, there's a bunch. This. Hat. There's four. What the heck? Uh, nothing on the back. Uh, what a pea soup. You wait until the fog lifts or continue blindly in spite of danger. You must take one of the following actions. Patiently wait until the fog lifts before continuing on your way. Each of all character takes a 106. Or you eventually reach an area that offers much better visibility. I take a three. Oh, that's an experience. So an eyeball could lead to experience. Or I could take the, like, just do nothing. I don't lose any cards, but I take a 106, which is another red card. And if I fail on the second option, every hole in the rock and every puddle in the icy water hidden by the fog makes you trip, slip, and fall repeatedly. I would lose dur three durability off of an item. And each other involved character takes a 102 card. Oh, okay. I wouldn't take the 102. This is each other involved character. Or I guess maybe I take both. Yeah, I probably take both. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. Two successes, eh? I have stuff in hand, but I'm about to do a hunt. I don't know. I'll just draw two cards. Two cards. One. Two. Okay, so I got one success. Uh, I can just throw away this one. I don't have an eyeball helping me. Yep. Here. And then I take a three. It was worth it. But another experience. This one says eating cooked food enables you to regain far more cards than raw food. Remember to make fire. I'm on it. I'm on it. Okay. Uh, whoops. Uh, okay. The past. Annoying. Every time I leave this, I gotta do that. Oh my god. I shouldn't have probably put my fire on that one, but whatever. I did what I did. I'm a noob. Alright. Uh... So... Uh, let's draw one card to see 177, which is a curse. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so 177 is our hunting spot, I think. There are multiple options. Three green and a yellow. This one. 
So you spot numerous tracks in the vicinity of a small pond, an obvious water source for local fauna. The surrounding vegetation is dense enough to provide perfect cover for you to wait in ambush. Depending on the number of successes you obtain, take the corresponding number of 150 cards. We have to draw two cards, and we're looking for one plus successes. We're not bloody, but we know we could be. Based on this fun stuff. Okay. I don't know how many successes I'm trying to get here. Oh. Hmm. Do I use a remember to pull back something right now? To help get me more successes. I don't remember what's in this deck and like what the numbers of things are. I feel like this is the one with like the rabbits and the vultures. Like the 150s. Is there a bear in the 150s? I think so. I don't know if I'm ready to fight the bear. I don't remember. But yeah. Um. So do I sp spend the bolas now? Probably, right? Or do I save those based on what I draw? I forget how the hunting works. Like, I know it lets us draw a bunch of cards, but then based on seeing those cards, I don't remember if there's like a second test. I'm always ready to fight the bear. I'm Canadian. <laughs> uh, I just don't know if to spend the bolas now on the hunt or spend the bolas on a fight. I, I just forget, but I guess the only one way to find out here. Uh, okay. So... I also banished this card too. I think there's new stuff I got and shuffled in the 150s from the expansions. I think so. That'll be an interesting. If you have to fight, there will be a second test. Like I should save my bolas then. I feel like saving the bolas, but then like. How many cards are you drawing? How many successes do you expect? I can only draw two cards. So like maybe I get one. And then I would just draw two 150s. I kind of want to get two successes, so I see three 150s. If I get four successes, awesome. I do have Solitary to help me with the successes. I could remember first is why I'm asking. Should I try to remember a success now or save that for pulling the rope? I don't know. Or will I just eat and shuffle that rope back in anyway and then use the think to grab it? Like, I don't even know. It's like my rustiness is coming through here. We're like managing this deck and knowing... The hunting stuff, but I mean, it's part of the risk, I guess. Part of the fun. I'm lost on the island. I just remember, like, when they get banished, it's like, you could lose, like, this might be a good hunting card, I lose it. And that's like, that hurts me in the long term. So it's like, sometimes you want to go all out just so you see more options and get the right food. I I'll just do the two cards and see what happens. My problem is return the other cards and this is banished. But I do have a way to get two successes. All right, here we go. We got three successes. Three successes, a Valiant Heart shall not fail. We discard this as a, uh, uh, during the result step of an action you're involved in order to apply the following effect. But you have to take a one on one card. And Gourmet. Gourmet. I think well, that's a card we're going to keep to hand right now. Uh, so this, we got three successes. That's three cards, three from the 150. Is that enough? I think so. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. All right, let's find these 150s. There's a whole whack ton of 150s. And it's been a while. I think I put some new ones in here. Uh, 
A snake. Oh, okay, yeah. So you do need to do a fight this guy. Doesn't give you any food, just experience. That's lame. Oh, okay, there's a bear. <laughs> there's the horny bear. An angry, horny, horned bear rears up before you, ready to slash you to ribbons. And a wild boar. Oh, stealth while well, we got fog. Do we leave the bear? I know the bear is like what you want, right? You get experience, you take five food, but then you become bloody. Then you become bloody. I remember that. I remember that now. Or the wild boar. I have two successes already on the sneak. I have solitaire even if I draw no cards. I could still take four food. Oh, but then you take a 105, still get bloody. But like the wild boar seems like a good pull right now just based on this. The bear though, with the fight action, I have the bolas. I have some help from the shovel. I do have solitary, but I need, I'm drawing four cards exactly, looking for eight successes. I, only for one extra food and experience. I could, with the wild boar, draw no cards, toss away solitary, and, or just draw one card maybe, maybe not have to toss away solitary, and I could get four food. Feel the goat coming. I feel like now is the boar. I feel like gameplay wise, I saved the bear for later. He comes back after I save and reset, right? If I, if I remember correctly, because he he just goes. Where does it say? Uh, yeah, you re oh you return him back to the one fifties. So not even after a save, it's just on another hunt attempt. Yeah, I feel like drawing less cards, leaving a bear as an option for later, because I, I could come to the bear later with like tons of more weapons and stuff. And make him even easier. Okay. Uh, so, uh, how does it say? Reveal them. If at least one involved character is bloody, I'm not. You must discard one of these cards with, without the keyword predator. Choose one of the remaining cards which represents the result of your hunt. Okay, so these ones are getting returned. Okay, so wild boar. Uh, I will draw one card. If I get the success, I don't need to waste solitary. We got a bow. Of course, something for hunting. We got the success, though. Could craft a bow on the next... Oh, for fishing, too. Alright, I'm going to toss the torch. Keep the bow. Okay, uh, so we don't need to toss solitary. We have more than enough successes. We're going to take a four one cards. I think they're just all the same, right? Meet crustaceans. These will attach to... basket we're allowed four on oh oh no we can do three additional right on this one seven seven in this pile how do we do this again do it like this <laughs> do it like this oh all right Okay, so these all pop on. These bump this up to six. Those are all stamina. And I take a 105. There could be variations on the meat cards. Oh, okay. I just grabbed four randomly. I, I should have shuffled maybe, but I may have added new stuff in there. 
Oh, true, Kazumi. Yeah, there might be not, might not be extra stuff from the like bundle. I I can't remember what I shuffled in. You just saw the stack of cards I was shuffling in was like huge from all those expansions I bought. I was shuffling in so many. Like I need a whole other row of cards, like fifty percent more cards in the whole set. It's crazy. Okay. You are bloody. Upon closer inspection, you see the bloodstains are smaller than you first thought. You seem to remember reading that when ground up, certain plants can mask the scent of blood. So as long as I jump in water, I can return this. If one of these plants can be seen on your terrain card... Oh, no way. That's cool. Uh, so, don't remember the names. Fortifloor? Is that one of those? <laughs> you may take the following action. And I have the hand. I have the hand. I could do that for free. Yeah, it's on my card. Oh, man. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's finish resolving. So this needs to be banished. Uh, I'll put that in the banish cards. This guy just goes to the past. And yeah, uh, I'll take that action because I see, I see that plant right here is one of those plants. So I'm going to take the hand action, which I can reduce the cost by one, get a free star. Boom. I get to return this to the 105s. That's cool. So they added, like, that's a helpful one. But I guess it's kind of situational. But that's cool that they kind of... Are you from the past? Uh, okay. Um, now, to the south, at the temple's like down this way, I think, not down this way, but like part of me wants to investigate this card, but I can go back to the fog for free, but before going back, should I investigate this? I feel like I should. But I'm not going to go down that way. It just I think this is the camp. Maybe this is the camp. Or the camp's here. The, I forget. I think the hunting spot auto replaces. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I got to finish that. Yep, you're right, you're right. Which was 177. I need to grab the gold, right? Right, you banish it, you take the gold. Among the tracks you spot near the pond, one set is much larger and undoubtedly belongs to a predator. You'll need to be careful. You need more successes. Oh, I could rest here to return this, and then I would grab the next one. I see. So yeah. Like, I could keep hunting, but... What is this? So 24 cards I can shuffle in if I go eat. Oh, plus this. I only take one card from the discard pile and shuffle it back in the action deck. Oh yeah, for each one. So I get a, like a bonus one, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22 8, 29, 30, 31, 32. 32 cards. Plenty, plenty eat. I'm not bloody. It's like, do I just gobble this and then go back and hunt again? Probably, right? Craft the bow while I'm here. That's a will. Start a fourth item. Go back, hunt. Find something else that gives me a bunch of food and just, just store it? I think that's how we used to play. I think that's the right way to play. Because <laughs> uh, going in the underground temple, I don't know when the next time I'll see any food is. That's the problem. I don't know. Okay. 
Damn fog, man. Good, but not. I don't know. All right. Um, yep, we'll just move back for free because of our ability. We can go to fire for minus three. So we'll just, oh yeah, yeah. We'll just go back for free. We're there. Take extra focus, especially when you can build the bow for free. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so we'll go here on this spot. Uh, we'll craft the bow for free. Drop a four on it. Find it. Okay. Um, then we're gonna eat. Randomly take one card from this card pile and shuffle it back in the deck. So one for each of these. Uh, so we're getting we're gonna reduce this by four down to two. These are all going to be returned. So next time I take meat, I'll shuffle that. Uh, and that is six, 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 twenty-four plus another four, twenty-eight cards. Twenty-eight cards. I'll shuffle this up. Oh, is there anything actually I want to grab with remember first before I do such things? I grab the rope before that because I kind of want the remember in the deck. Like if I can draw it back out later or just get something that gives me successes. Yeah, let's uh, let's throw the remember back in because that, that's kind of important. Yeah, let's just take the rope. We can craft that for free too. And we can put it on the raft. Yeah, let's just get the rope out of the way while we're on that tile. Okay, so remember it gets thrown back in. I mean, we might not shovel this back in, but I like, I'd rather have the chance. Uh, so we'll take that to hand. So we'll pretend we took that and then... Yeah, we're heading for the temple. Yes, Sajat, we're heading for the temple. That's the plan. But, like, I'm trying to get cards back in my deck before going in there. Uh, and I guess having a Shafu would be good. So it's just some maintenance is the plan. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 2 3, 2, 4. 28. So four cards didn't make it into the deck. Or warned us for him. That sucks. Uh, yeah, these all are, except for Torch. Torch is okay not to be in there, but the other ones would have been nice. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so let's shuffle these in. At least the Remembers all went back in. That's good. Yeah, I was hoping a curse or two would be sitting there after, but all those are back in. Yeah, that's not good. All right. Okay. Uh, so the rope, we'll craft the rope. We'll throw it on the raft and bump the raft up to six. Okay. Beautiful. This one. So the fog here so we remember it oh, okay and now we're going to and go back and hunt Oh, the 250s. Yeah, it's maybe not as good. Hmm.
Yeah, let's go back and hunt. Uh, okay, so I have to spend one card to move. Curse, okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we have to draw a 528. Oh, what the heck? Oh, this is neat. You see a shadow zipping through the fog. A wild animal is apparently lurking nearby. Depending on the number of successes you obtain, take the corresponding number of 150 cards. Reveal, the, reveal them. If at least one involved character is bloody, you must discard one of the cards without the predator keyword. Choose one of the remaining cards which represents the result of your hunt. So I, I could just do this instead of actually going and hunting. Hmm. Although it's not a lot of 150s. So the bow can get me one success and a seven success. And then the bolas, I could toss the bolas here, but then I don't have enough for fighting the bear possibly. Hey, Rory. It'd be the bear. Ah. <laughs> oh man, hopefully it's not the bear. So I need at least five successes to even draw one off there. Is that even worth it? I mean, I could get four successes just by using those two items. But then I don't have what I need for the bear, I don't think. I'm going to use the bow. Yeah, I'll use the bolus. I'll use the bolus. Okay. And then I'll draw. Or I could just draw cards. Draw a couple cards. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll do bolas. Okay. Um. I'll draw maybe two. Maybe two. I'm already starting with th four successes, and then for every seven is another three successes. So like I want a seven. Do I draw three? Maybe I draw three. Or I could just draw a couple more and not use the bolas. That's the other thing. Yeah, let's draw three. Whoa, no sevens. Ugh, gross. Um, we got one. So, one, two, three, four, five. Just enough to get one 150 card. Oh, that's gross. Oh, I actually could throw in solitary, though. To get two 150s. There's no one like that snake that like just gives us experience. I want food. Then we might not have enough for the bear fight. That's the problem. Deadfall trap. We'll spend solitary. We're going to look at two 150s. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can look at two 150s. I don't know, that feels lame. 
150s, and then we banish this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so the bolas are gone. Bolas three left. The bear and empty handed. I think it's bear fight time. Let's return empty handed. Now the bear, we'd only draw four cards. We're looking for eight successes. Uh, 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 I mean, we have, we could spend the shovel to get a seven star and then a star and a seven star here. Did we do it? I don't know. I don't think so. But if we fail, we take a 104 and a 105 and we must discard one card with the keyword companion from our hand. But I don't have such things. I don't know. I'm going to try the bear, I guess. So I have, and I don't know. Yep, that's the way it's got to go. I mean, I could just do empty handed rest, try to go with the other one. But I think we'll try this. Could be bad, but we'll try it. All right, so I'm going to spend a pip off this one. And a pip off this one. Draw four cards. Come on, give me the money. All right, I remember with a star, great. Okay, a blowpipe with a star, great. A walking stick with a star, okay. And knowledge is power with a star. Damn, no sevens, come on. One, two, three, four, five, that's it. Bomp, bomp, bomp. So we fail. All right, so we take a 104 and a 105. Could be bad. We will try. Famous last words. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So I should take one of these, right? I'm going to take the remember. These will get discarded. Okay. Uh, this guy though, he goes to the past and we take a 105. So we're bloody, okay. Oh wait, I need a 104 first, uh, whatever. I'm supposed to do it in order. Cause you have to do like one at a time, right? Either way, let's do the 104. Okay, so this one, I have to discard cards based on how many reds I had in my hand first. So I got two cards discarded off the deck. A curse and snowshoes, gone. And I take this one to hand. I'm injured. I have to do the medical action there to get rid of it. And then I draw the bloody, which is not one that makes me discard cards. But oh, fun times, fun times. Okay. Yeah, this is sucky. Uh, all right. I don't know. Well, I could rest here. Uh, I could build this deadfall trap. Versus foiled again. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I remember this part of Seven Continent chasing food as being kind of like the lamest part of the game. Like constantly just trying to build up food and you're piling cards, you're just sorting through your deck, you're getting cards back. It, it's fun a little bit, but like I feel like it drives the game a little heavily. So I'm like, I want to take a rest. It's like, but I feel it's like I, I'm not doing anything fun. Like I'm just stuck here. But that's me being greedy, wanting more food, which I feel like, I don't know. I should go in the underground temple with more food because otherwise it's like it'll just get cut short anyway. 
Okay, uh, so if that's the case, um, we could rest to get rid of this. At the 250s, I feel like they're not great for food, right? That's like a bad thing. We need one success. Uh, before we do that, though. One hundred one is tired. Kind of want a different tired car. That one's kind of bad. Mm. I'm gonna remember back into solitary. Okay. Uh, I'll do the. I don't know. I feel like crafting with the Deadfall Trap is probably good. Like two cards. Because I kind of need the rest action anyway, right? So it's like, I'll spend two cards to craft. Maybe I draw into stuff to help me with this. Okay. So I'm crafting. I have bamboo. But I don't have stone. Um, yeah, okay. Examine the notes. Ah, okay, so I need this for the story. But also war paint. Oh, I'll take examine the notes. Okay, so this is being crafted uh, for two. Try that. Okay, so war paint's discarded. Uh, so now I will spend one from Deadfall Trap. No, I'm just going to try to do the return this action. There's no fail on it. I'm going to do that. So I'll draw one card, trying to rest. Okay, that's a good card. I got a success. Where were you when I was trying to kill the bear? Seven would have been beautiful. I seemed like one seven. Pretty sure. Uh, so then I return this. Goes back. Done. Okay, now I have to take this inspect action again. But first, before that, I'm going to examine the notes. I'm holding this in hand so I have the free, no card draw, no success. I'm going to discard that. We're going to do the whole, um, this thing. So we're going to take the 450s. I'm going to shuffle them up. And then reveal them. A four, death. The snake. Oh, look, the snake's in here. Interesting. Snake with a four on it. Good thing I know. All right. Uh, and then a one. Which is different. I know it's different because we didn't see the snake before, right? Uh, but is that card available? Four, four, one. Let's find out. Four, four, one. Uh, it's a card. And it's giving me the thumbs up from 450. All right, see, this This is kind of exciting stuff. I, I need some of this. I need some of this. I can't just sit here playing Hunting Simulator 2020 all day. I, I, need, some, I need some of this sp sprinkled in, so I'm glad we saw this. Follow your instinct. You pull the journal out of your satchel and open it to a random page. To your great surprise, you find... Number two. It's like we're finding these in the perfect order. The Secret of the Sanctuary, a partially faded enigmatic note. Room X is what this one's called. Room X. Make sure to choose the most represented animal. If you, dot, 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 your life is at stake. What do we see there? I see a spider in the water. I see an island. This looks like the island we came from we started at. I, I think that tower in the middle there, which uh, looks a little strange, um, is the tower that's broken. I feel like that is a map of Penguin Island. I think that's just art. I, I, I don't think that, that matters to the clue. I think this is just 
fun stuff like drawings that uh, he made, but it might matter for like the final room, maybe matters all the different art on all the different clues might come together to do something. That would be neat. But yeah, I don't know, this is really cool. I like this. All right. We're gonna throw that in our satchel. More information when we go back to the Forbidden Sanctuary. Beautiful, beautiful. We don't need to do this again and look for another one right now. How many examine the notes are in the deck? Do you guys know? Is it only one or two? I remember we had that like extra one from that one character, the like botany botany one, that helped us rip through that pile. But I don't remember if there's two. But it's like we kind of need to see those. So should I be using remembers on those to kind of like get going? I don't know. I think it's two too, Scott. I, th I think it is two also. Um, cause that'd be good. So then as we draw through the deck, we, we should see one or two here and there and that will help us. Um, but I am going to take a quick break and I'll be back in a couple minutes. Kazumi's saying he looked and it's only one in the deck. Oh, okay. Okay. So. But naturally it'll happen. Like, I'm just, I don't know if it's like stupid to try to rush that or not. Because the next time it happens, we draw more numbers. If, if, we, if the card is not there, we just draw them again until we find one. We, only, we know there's two left. Like two valid numbers. But do those valid numbers have cards attached to them still? I don't know. But we'll need to do it at least twice. And I feel like it probably will just naturally happen as we go along. Also, is it hurting us not pulling 50s? Like not getting botany cards or whatever is probably like hurting us a little bit, right? But I, I, I don't know. I'm not playing the botany girl, so I, I don't think it's as powerful as that. But we're getting less junk to put in our uh, satchel for sure. Okay. Um, all right. Hmm. So, oh yeah, we're going to do this investigate action, right? Because that's why we did examine the notes, to get a card out of our hand, too. So let's draw one card to see the next hunting spot. It's a think. Okay. Need a 177. Right? Is it still the same? Yeah, 177. Grab another one of these ones. 
Uh, same business. Okay, we draw three cards, looking for one success. Okay, that's cool. It's just like a good one like the other one. But before we do that, do we want to use Think to like... We know, like I think there's only one bear in there, so like the bear's gone for now. I think, but at least in the 150s. But I don't know if there's a point in going crazy trying to grab random stuff. Extra successes. Could get some of those clues out of there, or curses, but I know that's not like... Oh, we have three curses already in the discard. Kind of good. And we gotta be careful. We're gonna like need to eat again like super soon. This is like getting stuck in a loop. I don't know if we'll get enough food again. Like we we just lost the bear. I could save. I could save to get rid of this stupid fog. And lose my fire. When you return all the cards on the board, return this as well and we'll remove fog from the board. Yeah, but it doesn't, I don't know if when I save it does it. Because I, if I was standing on that tile, it probably wouldn't, right? How do you save the weather? Probably just keep the card, right? Guard all the cards on the board to into the past, except the terrain card all figures are standing on. Let's discard all cards on the board. And then when you resume the game, you return all the cards in the past to their place in the respective original deck. Put the saved terrain card into play, place the figures of all characters Taking part in the adventure on it, onto it, and on, and one exploration card to each of the orange arrows. I don't know how the weather would work. I don't know. I could kind of just like rule it that it's gone. I don't think it explains it in the weather rules. The super advanced rules here. We got so many. Yeah, all it says when you must return all the cards on the board, but in the saving it's you discard all cards on the board, and you don't return them until you're setting up, and it's only returning the past. So yeah, I think it would stay foggy. Oh man, it'd be nice to get rid of that fog. And it could return the bear. Yeah, let's let's do the hunt. Um, the hunt. Yeah, I'm going to do the think. Seven cards. Yeah, probably just take a forewarned is forearmed. Get rid of that curse. Shuffle the others in. Angie's here. Hey. Wouldn't save the fog, but if the final goal is the temple, you can just go south and east to avoid the fog. I know, but I, I, yeah, true. If I don't care about, um, true. But it's like, what's under here? Do I want to deal with that? Uh, I get free movement back to this spot. So it's like, would that be good? I don't know. Crafting. I don't have anything to craft right now, but yeah, this deck is like empty again. It feels, I was like half empty. Jeez. Oh man, this is bad, 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 bad. Bad start, bad start. Okay, oh, and I'm freaking bloody. Oh my god, injured, bloody, tired.
All right, I'm going to take the hunting action. Uh, let's reduce the deadfall trap. Let's reduce the bow. Okay, we're using both of these. Um, let's draw our three cards. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. So we get one, two, three, four, plus we have a seven, which is a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, whoa. Uh, we get eight plus, we'll get five one fifties. I feel good about that. I feel good about that. These are all great. I think I'm going to take a remember to hand. Uh, should I? No, let's not take anything to hand. Let's just pitch it all. All right. So this is going to get banished and replaced with the green 177, or the yellow, sorry, 177. Okay, that's back. Uh, and 150s. We're gonna get three of them. Yeah, only the resting, I was thinking to get the bear back is, is what I was really trying to get the bear and, and the hog or whatever back in here. But I feel like there's new stuff in here. I feel like I added, added some cards to all like the food decks. But like, I can't remember, so many numbers. And I didn't look at the other side, so I don't know. I feel like it gave a little variety here. We're looking at five of them, is what it was. Yeah, five 150s. A mole rat. It's a goat. A white hair. A snake. An empty handed. Okay. So based on that, uh, and we're bloody, we would have to discard one of these. So empty handed, right? Yeah, discard one without the keyword predator. Empty handed is not a predator, obviously. <sighs> we got a snake, we can fight him for experience, don't care. A white hair for just two food cards, two meat or whatever, mm, not really great. A goat, who I will have no problem cutting him up and eating him, but I know about, it. I remember the, this is related to the voracious goddess, I remember that business, I think, or maybe it was the other one, but I remember it's near there or something. Uh, yeah, because I think I always eat this guy. And a mole rat. And a mole rat's just for like one food. Oh man. You kill the goat for three food. Do I just do that? I feel like I just do that. Murder goatly? Yeah, that's the best food option. I'm all about survival right now, man. I'm not about having a pet. Yep, we're taking the goat. And these are going back in the 150s. Yeah, that was a big, big letdown. Okay. Uh, so he's now a companion. Great. Fun times. Okay, so I'll take the, the attack action here. Um, I'll just draw the one card. Kill the goat. It's a remember. Man, I gotta stop doing that. Uh... Yeah, I'll just get rid of that, that in there, remember. Okay, um, so the goat's done. I take three meat cards and he's banished. No more goat this playthrough, that's fine. <laughs> and... Oh, so many meat cards. Oh, run out of meat. 
the one. You're saying I have some variability in, in what these cards do because now I have expansions in here, possibly. I remember that was before. I always just grab like any ones because they're all the same. One, two, three. All look the same to me. See what happens next time. All right, so these will go under here. Bump this up to a four. Move back for free. Uh, 18, 19, 20, 21. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 20, 21, 22. I have 22 cards. I'm just going to eat now. I'm just going to eat now, unfortunately. This is lame. Flame, but I'm on a fire, uh, so I get six for each plus one extra from this guy. So everything but one card goes back in the deck. So I will just shuffle these and just draw one card to throw in the discard pile, and the rest will go back into the deck. Although I probably should have remembered before that, I, I'm an idiot. So let's pretend that I'm doing that first. Bolas? Bolas, maybe? I'm not going to keep fighting. I don't care. Examine the notes. Let's do examine the notes. It's part of our story. Let's just do it. So remember, I'll shuffle back in. We'll pretend I have this. Uh, then I probably should do this, though, right? Yeah, before eating, right? I'll do this. And then this would go back in. Now I probably have more cards in here, so... So shuffle and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, so two cards in the discard pile. A knowledge is power and an examine the notes. Uh, okay, whatever. We'll do the examine the notes in a sec. Just shuffle these into the deck. I just want to get in that temple, get stuff going, but it feels weird not having any food going in there. Might be very bad. But, like, I don't know what to tell you. All right. Like, I don't think we're going to wander around the temple. We're, like, we're really gunning to what we need to do. Like, we know where we got to go. Okay. Um... What are we doing? Yes, the, the 450s. We're going to shuffle these up. Four, four, one. Is that what we just did? <laughs> Is that the number we just did? I think there was multiple anyway. Yeah, it's not there. We got to do it again. Four, one, four. There is a four one four coming from a four fifty. Looks legit. Looks legit. Uh, following your instinct, you pull your journal. Yeah, same thing. All right. Let's see what this one is. Secret of the sanctuary. Four out of six. A piece of parchment with the tower drawn on it next to a partially faded enigmatic note. Room of the dot 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 H, trust the one that does not look to the east. Yeah, see, look on the, that, uh, the drawing. There's a spider, a butterfly, a snake. Looks like there's a black arrow going like off to the northeast. Yeah, what is the last card though? 
<laughs> what is the last card? That's the question. We have four, four, one, one, four, four. We just draw four. So it's the three fours. The three fours is what we would grab next time. Three fours. Yeah, three fours. Three fours. Okay, that's all done. E we've eaten. Um, let's reveal this one. Scavengers, large birds, circle in the sky. Your experience helps you recognize them as a distinct species of vulture. You can see what has gotten their attention or ignore them and continue on your journey. I feel like this is the dude, you bury your dude one. Unless it's food related, but I feel like it's not, but it might be. B. But it could be food. But I think it's a dead body, but I can't remember. I'm going to, I mean, I don't know. I have the shovel, but then I would use up my basket if needed to dig. Black arrow probably signifies north. You're probably right, Janet. For sure, you're probably right. When we get to that room, like we, I don't know how you know which room's the H and which is the O and which is the X. I'm assuming we'll know by when we get to those rooms, and then we'll be investigating that art like very closely. I think. So like, it, it, hopefully, it matters for the room we're in, but maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it's just. Cool flavor. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll draw a card. We'll check. Mm, I don't know, but I, I can't keep throwing away cards. But it could lead to food. Could lead to food. I just don't want it to lead to me spending like eight more cards to do something on the next one. Yeah, I, I'm going to go on my way. I'm just going to discard it. I don't even know. Just going to discard it. All right, 191. 191. Oh, there's a couple. Oh, this is the, the man-eating plant one, I think, right? Where it's like, you could get a different one. I remember finding like a gun in it. This one? Yeah. Little, little shop of horrors plants there. Oh, this is the bad one because it's five movement. It says you travel deeper into the tangled jungle amidst impressive trees and strange gigantic plants. The canopy blocks out most of the light, but your eyes gradually acclimate to the dimness. Eventually, you're able to distinguish some of the birds nesting in the trees and start seeing some little monkeys swinging from branch to branch, howling and apparently taunting you. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Serenity now, serenity now. High freaking movement. That's so gross. Oh, well, it looks like we're going to the left, I think. Like, I don't have a way of reducing that movement. I don't even have one of those minus three cards, but I, I, I should have kept one. Ugh. But maybe I draw into one, stepping off of this tile, but I think that may be too risky. But going around, it's like spending one, spending two, spending whatever. Like, I think it's all going to cost me an arm and a leg. I could go around if movement's cheaper, but it's like not that much cheaper. And that means I have to go through more of these fog cards. And I don't know what the movement is on this one. So it's like part of me just like go through. Maybe I have to spend like one extra card. Maybe I draw into though. Maybe I draw into something to reduce the costs. And then I'm, I'm happy. But maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to just go into it. Too many unknowns the other way. Oh, and I'm going to do the fog thing too. So I'm going to draw one to move off. It's a club. That's not going to do it. 
And now we draw a 528. If we keep, if we run out of the 528s, we're eventually going to have to put all the cards from the past back in, right? If we go to reach for a card that's not there, we have to then like reset, right? So that's another way to get the bear back. A branch snaps nearby. You're not alone. Uh oh. Pinky, no need to panic. The fog certainly hides you from view. We could get an experience if we pass this. I feel like we have the think here to get us a star. Just need to get one success. We have one in hand, so I'm just going to draw one card. Because I kind of need reduction in movement. So I kind of want to see more cards. And we have a bunch of minus threes in our deck. Yeah, they're all in there. Just draw one. It's not the one, but that's okay. I don't know if I'll keep this. I think the club might be not bad to take. Because I can craft it for free on the card I'm on. Oh no, one. I can craft it for only one. Which is still fine. Aggressiveness. I can throw it on my deadfall trap. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, so I'm not going to keep those two successes. Off Valiant Hearts. Um, but I do succeed. I do succeed. That's the most important thing. And I get another three. Which is another experience. When you craft an item, you will save time and energy if you have the right resources at hand instead of looking for the materials you need. Or whatever, man. Okay. Uh, this one's fast. Uh, yeah, let's craft the club for one card. Nah, not the minus one. Come on, give me one of those minus threes. Uh, okay, so it's going to go under here. Bump this up by three to four. Come on, these little dice are killing. I didn't get the minus three. I wish I could leave fireplaces for less movement. <laughs> uh, I can make fire on this space, but I would never really want to come back to this space. Oh, you know what? If I investigate this plant, that changes this tile. Yeah, I should do it. And I think it's how you can get a gun. Because there's like a dead guy in there or something. All right, I'm going to investigate. 202. Could be bad, but this might lead to worse. I, I'm doing what I said I shouldn't do. Where, yeah, there's two options. But maybe we flip this and we get something different. Okay, let's go with this one. Uh, you pass near a thicket of tall pod-like plants that are swaying in a strange way despite the lack of wind. Lack of wind, you say? Uh, when one of them snatches an unsuspecting bird out of the air, you realize that they are carnivorous plants. Ah! Oh, you can play music. I don't have a card to help me with music right now. I think the cushion would help me with that, right? One of the plants appears to have something large in its mouth. You can try something wily or use force to try to get the plant to release it. If you want to take the following action, you must use a card with the keyword music. I don't have such cards. Uh, but I could just attack it, discard this, and replace it with a 207 card. Yeah, we're going to fight. We're a combat or whatever. Uh, we can just get... I mean, we could use a club on it. That seems kind of weird. No, we have we have successes here. Let's just draw the two cards. We we need that minus three move still, I think. I mean it still might be helpful. Or minus three cost. We're gonna take the attack. We draw two cards. There's one. Yeah. Oh nice! We got it. Okay, one success. Boom, we got three successes. Oh look, we got the freaking music now. A little too late though. A little too late. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna toss woven. Mm. I forget even how in Underground Temple we're getting in there. I feel like there was a lock or something, and we don't have the thing we need. Oh, we have the club. It's a key. Oh, we have the shovel as a key. I, I don't remember what it was. Was it a key? Or was it the decipher thinky action or something? Anyways, I just thought of that. Uh... Yeah, we're going to take the learn from our mistakes. 
and we're going to replace woven cord. The only thing I'm thinking is like keeping woven cord, toss the eating one. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, we don't even have food in our inventory right now. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. You are right. Yeah, because I was thinking of keeping the fire, and if we could put a fire at the entrance door, if we have trouble getting in the underground temple, and then we run out of time, we need to go do some other things, we could drop a fire there so we have a way to like get back for easy movement. That's all I'm thinking. Like having fire in the pockets, nice. All right. Uh, so we succeeded. So we discard this and replace it with a 207. There's only one. The mouth of the carnivorous plant explodes with a wet, splattering sound, showering the area in a slimy fluid. Look out! Immediately after this is revealed, each involved character must either discard one card with the keyword skill from their hand or inventory, or take a 108. Aww. This doesn't... <laughs> doesn't even change the tile we're on. I thought, I thought it would. I thought well, no matter what happens, the tile under us changes. But I guess not. I guess not. Uh, so I have skills. I have the woven cord. So I, have, I, I don't want to be poisoned, because I, I bet that's what it does. Uh, I have this skill. I have the rope as a skill. The raft as a skill. Do I toss the raft? And when I toss the raft, I, I keep the rope, right? Like when I just discard a card out of an item, can it, can it dismantle it that way? Because I know there's like cards that, that like you, like bolos, you can, bolas you can attach and throw away. I kind of want to keep this fire card, but I could just toss the woven cord. But like, am I going to use a raft anytime soon? I mean, oh, I could use the raft to rest. I forgot about that. I could have got rid of this tired. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to toss the woven cord. Toss the woven cord. I don't want to take poison. Okay, so we don't take a 108. Great, so that was useless. I need to play the music. That was the key there, probably. Okay, uh, so... What are you doing now? All right, let's check out this card. That's a threat. I think you keep the stack, but I could be wrong. Uh, you stumble over a trap, a trip cord that stretches between two shrubs. A dart immediately shoots past and ends up in a tree trunk, a few inches from your face. You fear that there might be more traps in the surrounding area. So zero plus cards. Looking for two successes. I'll draw two. I just can't remember the 97s. I feel like they're not that bad. Like, you could get hurt, but you might not. I'll draw two. I'll draw two. Okay, we got one success, and we'll toss a forewarned is forearmed. Wait, read the fail. With some luck, you manage not to set off any of the traps. 97. Hmm. I, I can't remember. I feel like this one is not that bad, or it's maybe even good. I don't remember. But I think it's like a random. I think it could be good or it could be bad. Uh, but I did what I did. We'll just uh, avoid it. But yeah, you're right. I should have, have held off, but it's okay. Take the remember. We got a success. Oh, I still could fail by not spending this is what you're saying. Like, I still want the card I drew. Yeah. Okay, let's fail. 
Well, no, I still drew. I still drew. That's fine. I drew. I'm not taking that back. But I, I could. I, I don't need to apply this. Yeah, let's take a 97. Sure. I just forget what it is. But I know we've come into these many times. I just don't remember. There are... Yeah, there's three of them. There's three. <laughs> oh, man. The trap. Yeah, see, this is... <laughs> okay, now I know. Don't draw these because it could be bad. But maybe that this is drawn, now it's good again. Maybe I got the worst out of all three. So right away, we're going to have a trap, uh, a thing flying in our head. All just eating up cards. This is all just eating up cards. It's killing me. Well. I'm going to draw two. If you, do, if you did, I don't accept responsibility. <laughs> I'm drawing two. Okay, I got two stars. Uh, and then I'll just spend the four warnings for him, so I lose it anyway. Uh... Torch could be good for healing. But again, that's crafting on that. Yeah, I'll just take a think. Uh, so I get a three. You dive to the ground just in time. Otherwise, would have been some poison off the poison dart. If it's a curse. Look, look. I could have failed if a curse card was drawn. Active player ends. Randomly discard one card from the action deck. If it was a skill, I take a poison. If it's a, if it was a curse card, uh, the whole the whole adventure ends. That's crazy. So yeah, we gotta remember that's a thing. Uh, so we get a three. Sometimes it's wise to postpone an action until you have the appropriate equipment, like I should have done for the hunting stuff. But it's all good. We're at five experience points. Some point. Oh, the resting spots. Oh, never mind. I, I I think there's one on top of the the hill, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's only the camp. But resting to spend experience points might be uh, helpful at some point. Okay. Uh, let's see. One forty-three. One forty-three. <laughs> Thanks, game. <laughs> Ahead, you see what looks like an entrance to an old temple or shrine of some sort. The entrance is partially hidden by overgrowth and it appears to descend deep into the ground. Finally, finally we got there. That took forever. Oh, look, it's the wind. Yeah, the wind's going in, right? That's what that's telling us. So if you follow the wind, I think the wind's coming from the direction from above and into the mouth. But it looks like we could have came another way. What I think is we could have followed the wind if we, uh, if we failed. There was something about failing. I think we wash up on shore. That's the like southwest area. Because obviously you could come to here from down south, which we've had to do before, like in Voracious Goddess, you know. But I think that's why it's showing the wind could come from the other direction, maybe. I don't know. That's neat. Or, mm, actually... Is it saying to follow the wind, like go underground, and when we're done, we come out this mouth and we go that direction. And at some point we're supposed to see the old man, according to Black's uh, hints earlier. Or at least has assumed based on the clues. But yeah, I, I don't mind visiting that old man. I think it's relevant. Huh, interesting. Interesting. All right. All right, to move, we're going to reduce that movement by three. We have to draw two cards. Other way to do anything about that. Unless I remember first. No. You know what I should remember is the examine the notes. 
Did I do that? Well, actually, no. I want to see what this is first. All right. Doing two cards for movement. Lucky star. Oh, that could have helped us reduce movement. Minus two and a seven. Curses out of the deck. I feel like we've seen a lot of curses. No, only two are here. A lot. Okay. Uh, now we're going to examine this to get 159. A stairway carved in the rock leads down into the ground. You descend a few steps before finding yourself in front of a massive door that blocks access into the structure. The stone door is decorated with several flower patterns and you get the feeling that their arrangement is anything but coincidental. Forget, I feel like I should know what that, there's like a key to get in here easy, right? There's like something and I forget. I forget, I should know this, right? But the one and the two, I don't remember. Stone door slowly grinds. Okay, so we, we, we have that action. We have help on that action. But yeah, this is like tough to get into unless we had stuff to help us out with that action. Because you only draw three cards and you're looking for four successes. And this will return all the cards on the board, so we'll get rid of the weather. That's nice. But we have to succeed. Yeah, there is some item or something or two items that help us get in here easier. Forget. Maybe that's only like in the Voracious Goddess you see that stuff. I don't remember. Remember. Or maybe, I, maybe I've never seen what helps you get in here easier. I feel like there was something. I don't know. Okay, um, so uh, what can I do here? I have, I have Remember and I have Think, so I could adjust what's in my hand. I have Solitary, which could help us get a couple stars or more if we see lots of sevens. I can add a seven if we get more sevens, if there's like a way to get more stars off that using Solitary for that instead. I feel like we just go in. Like, I, I, it sucks not going in with food. I feel bad. But, like, I just want to keep pushing forward. Uh, I want this to be entertaining for myself, too. <laughs> and not just a stream. Hunting, it gets boring. And I take forever with it. So, uh, we'll just hunt later, hopefully. We'll get some food. Oh, I get a star from this. Could reduce the cards drawn. Yeah, let's do that. Let's reduce the cards drawn. Let's only draw two cards. Because I have one success. I need four. I have one here. Two, three. And you just hope on two cards. I get a success. Do I have a backup if I mess up? Maybe I pull a card out of here first. Yeah, maybe I pull as a forewarned as forearmed first with the remember. Seems lame. But I, I like I could get the exam in the notes, but there is how many remembers that we see. Yeah, there's no remembers in here yet, so I still can use another remember to grab the last exam in the notes. Yeah, let's do it just in case. Okay, forewarned is forearmed. I'm going to draw two. Reducing it with this. Whoa. Whoa. No success is not even anything. Holy crap. That's like I saw the future. Holy crap. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> one star, two, three, four stars. Okay, I don't want to do that action again. I don't want to keep drawing cards. So yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't need to throw away all those cards, but that's how it works sometimes. All right, so all cards on the board, they're going into the past.
Sea of Fog. Past. Yeah, we're just adding them to the past. So this says only return it when you return all cards. Oh no, return all cards on the board and in the past. Uh, duh. Okay, so this all will get returned. This all will get returned. Yeah. So this will go in my pile of stuff I have to put back in the box for the next playthrough. But if we need to draw from some of that stuff, I'll put it back in. I should have probably remembered what card I was grabbing. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> 321. 321. All right. You are in the doorway of a small square room, only barely illuminated by a few phosphorescent mushrooms. The floor is covered with a thick layer of dust and spider webs hang in every corner. Oh, we know this. And we need the four. Okay. Oop. Oh, see, now we need the later one. All right. I don't think we need to check the thing on the wall. And we don't need to investigate leaving. So I'm just going to flip this. Spider bite. Oh, this crap. Oh, unlucky. Spider bite. Your hip is itchy uncomfortably. Ex Itching uncomfortably, examining it, you notice a nasty red spot. You must have been bitten by a spider, and you can only hope it has not laid its eggs under your skin. Only the active player is forced to take the following action. So there's no spider bites of advantage. This I know. We can do the first one. I can use... I can't use anything. Damn, I don't have anything with that symbol on it. I thought I did, but I think I threw away whatever it was. If I fail it, you start feeling feverish and cannot help scratching the wound until it bleeds. I would have to discard four cards because I have four red cards. And for each spider bite card that has been banished, there would have been none. Randomly discard two cards from the action deck and return this. Oh, we're going to try to not do that. Killing me. All right. Three. Draw three cards. One, two, and three. Oh, man. Wow. Five successes. Yeah, I think we did it. I think we did it. I'll remember a blowpipe and a forewarned is forearmed. Take the remember. Banish this. Now we have spider bites banished. So we gotta remember that next time that happens because I'm sure it will happen again. All right, we need 338. Thirty-eight. There's only one. <laughs> it's gross. Uh, dozens of phosphorescent mushrooms in various sizes illuminate a large flagstone room. A few hairy spiders scurrying away into the corners as you enter. All right. So yeah, the mushrooms, bad business. I'm pretty sure. I kind of. I don't remember exactly what happens. I just remember like uh, avoid them. At least uh, maybe they could be good. 
but whatever we did before, I don't think it was good. And it's only one movement. I don't see any numbers or anything, but we are going to the left for sure. Going to the left. Okay, let me get the fours out of here. Okay, it looks like somewhere in the wrong spot. Fun. Fun. This should not be in there. And there's the fours. Yeah, there's a lot. Not for sure a four. Let me make sure. Yep. Let's shuffle these. Just to make sure. I know it's not a lot of fun things down here. I remember some dirty ones in here. There, uh, what was down here though? All right, we'll spend one to move. Camouflage outfit, clothing and stealth. Oh yeah, we forgot this. Uh, okay, we're here. Uh, but before we go anywhere, I am going to try to get rid of tired, I think. So uh, tired is a rest action. I can only draw one card. I'm looking for three successes. But with the raft, which I will spend, that's two successes and a success if I draw a seven. But the deadfall trap, I'm also, I just want this for sure to happen. Uh, I'm drawing only one card. So I just want to get rid of this. I don't want to take whatever the heck a 750 is. Uh, no thanks. So this will go down to three. Okay, five and three. Uh, I still draw a card though. Unless I use Lucky Star. No, I don't think so. A walking stick. Yes, get out of here. Get out of here. Walking stick. That needs to be made. I've been hurting with that one. I should have been valuing that a lot higher, and I didn't. Uh, so this will get returned back in the 101s. Yeah, that no freaking way. That's filthy. Okay, so we got rid of something from here at least. So we have a little bit of less red cards. Um, no wood, but I, I know there is a way to get wood down here to craft that. But I think I could just craft it with Lucky Star. Graham, thank you for subscribing. Graham Hall, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. All right. Walking stick is a will. I throw it on the bow, right? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it right now. I'm getting rid of Lucky Star to craft this for free. Even though I could see wood. I know there's wood like way up in the corner, I remember. But that's okay. That's okay. We're going to throw this on here. And we're going to jack this up to a five. There we go. We have some help for fighting, help for walking. Yeah. What's this? Closed door. Oh man, so keys are going to be important. Ugh. Okay. The hallway you took leads to a heavy wooden door. You press your ear against it, but cannot hear anything beyond. So, the only way to discard this is to get the key for the door. Man, I feel like I'm drawing like the worst cards that are just eating up my deck, like every single bog card in this run so far. I don't know if it's meant to be that way, but I feel like uh, it never was that bad. But, but maybe just where this curse is taking us, but even in like the one cards, like where are all the, like the life jackets and stuff? Like where was all those good cards that kind of give you to help you out? I feel like, uh, I don't know. I know there's cards hidden in there that are like nice in the lower numbered decks, but yeah. <laughs> Where are they? These are rough. Okay, so with the key action though, um, I could use the club. 
I get two stars. Uh, I have one here to get me a seven, but I, I just would use the club. So we're going to use the club. Dropping it down to two. Before I do it though, should I take a remember a success back? No. I'm going to draw only w one card. Yep. We got it. So we got a total of four successes. We only need three. I'll take that to hand, no problem. Uh, and discard this. Okay. 374. The finely crafted vault ceiling seems to have been spared from a rainwater seepage. Oh, well, it's a snake room. We can play some music or something in here. Something with this. Any music. I don't know if you need your friend snake brought here or this is how you get the friendly snake. But I, I didn't build the pipes. I could remember them and try, but uh, I don't think that's worth it. I'm just worried about going through the portcullis there, right? That's the one I'm looking for, I believe. Don't see a number. Okay, so I will spend one card to move here. A learning from your mistakes. Uh, I'll investigate, which is no cards. I just grabbed 384. 384. A massive aged portcullis. Blocks access to this part of the underground building. There is a lever set in the wall behind the portcullis. If you reach out for it, you're sorry, you reach out for it, but it's it is just out of your reach and the portcullis is way too heavy to be lifted. If you had the appropriate equipment, then maybe dot, dot, dot. If there is a swirly banner card in your inventory, which we did that rope just for this purpose, you may take the following action. So yeah, you can't even do it without the rope. It's not like it makes it easier. You're just blocked. Then if we succeed, we're only allowed to draw one card. We're looking for one success. The portcullis slowly slides up into the ceiling. Discard and replace it with a card whose number is equal to 384 plus rope. Plus rope number. We need one success. And I think I have to spend Yeah, I think I have to spend it to use the banner number, right? I think it's what we discussed before in a previous playthrough. Like just having it is not enough. Okay, so oh I have the hand action thing right here. Minus free. Uh so let's spend one on the rope. So that I can add the banner to it. So 394 plus 10, 394. We're discarding this, replacing it with 394. I feel like we're getting somewhere now. Uh, yep, 384 gives us the thumbs up. You are standing before a dark maze of corridors with two entrances. Which one will you take? Oh, this, this, um, this puzzle. I remember this. We can do this quick. I think. So you start from the exit, right? And you start drawing your way back. Uh, four eighteen. Four eighteen. So let's follow four eighteen in and see if we can get there.
Yeah, it's 418. Gonna follow 428 in with my eyes here and see if we can. Well, you all play along at home. All right, 428, let's see. 428 goes in. It's going to the west. Split. That's all dead end down there. Now, 428 is what you take if you need to get to that uh, statue, right? That was from another quest or another curse. Yeah, 428. 428 is the is if you're trying to get to that statue, which doesn't matter right now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Kazumi. That's what I got to. All right, so we're doing 418. Discard this and replace it with a 418 or a 428. Our choice. Oh, I have to spend a card though. What the heck is with this man? Stop it! Why am I spending cards for everything? Killing me. So even to do the puzzle, you gotta spend a card. I'm gonna do it though. Oh, I could reduce it though. Yeah, let's just reduce it. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, even though it's minus three, I'm still doing it. I don't care. I'm not spending jack on it. 418. So let's discard this. 418. Uh, you think you have identified the most possible corridor. Be careful. It's quite easy to get lost in this maze of dim and gloomy tunnels. Ooh. This tunnel leads to a medium-sized room. Put a 402 card or a 347 into play in the space shown, unless it's already there. Each evolved character moves their figure onto it. We have to, we have to get a success for this one, too. Man. Does that cushion have the compass symbol on it? Because if it does, that would be great. It's like, man. If I fail, you wander at length, damp, dark quarters. Each of all characters takes a 102. I could just draw one card, hoping for one success. Then I take a 102 if I fail, then I gotta do it again. I could just remember into a success card. I've seen four of the clues though, or four of the curses. Yeah, oh man, this is 102. I don't know what 102 is. That's probably, I don't even know. Probably something really annoying. 101 was tired. Exhausted maybe, exhaustion. That's like the same thing. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to draw two cards. Yep. I would have failed on just one. So that's good to know. Knowledge is power. Or a fire making kit. Oh, 102 is confused? Ah, that makes sense. That makes complete sense. I forget, I can never remember the numbers. There's like eight different, uh, eight different of those states. I, I never remember them all. I know there's freezing. I remember the art on that one. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. All right, we're throwing away the fire making kit. I don't know if that's the right call. Uh, and then we're going to put a 402. Well, 402 on the other side. You reach a small room that was carved directly into the rock. Here you find worn furniture, a bed maybe? Broken pots and torn clothes all thrown together in a large jumble. Oh, there's the wood. I could have waited on the walking stick. <laughs> well, I still need to move though. God damn it. I shouldn't have crafted that walking stick when I did. I should have held it, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a room. There's a spider banner in here on something. But they're all free. Everything's free. It's just, I don't remember what they all are. I feel like there's loot down here. There's something you find in here. Where the seed was? I think this is where the seed is. Put that. Yeah, I put rope gate leads to seed.
Answer to broken amulet after rope gate is 180. I don't know. The death is always free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the easy actions are the ones like, yeah, well, that's after doing all these actions that cost a lot. Let's just do this free one. Oh, wait, that ended my game. It was uh, curiosity killed the cat. We know this. All right, 402. Where did it go? Over here. All right. Uh, yeah. And then I. Oh, I, I get to move automatically to it. Put the 402, and then each of all character moves their figure onto it. Okay, so at least I got there. Okay, what are we doing in here? I feel like the explore action, there's a way to get out in here, I think. I think this is a way out of here. Maybe that's what it's talking about. Is that a bed in the corner? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's just, uh, let's look at the eyeball thing. 282. No cards drawn. 282. There are makeshift beds. Ah, there are makeshift beds of wooden boards and woven fibers on either side of the room. One of them is obviously in better condition than the other. The worn bed, right? So he talks in here. Oh no, it's comfortable bed. Comfortable bed. Uncontrollable anger. When I got out, the wind was... I think it was worn. I don't know. Anyways. Okay. There's the talk about the bed, though. And here's what the card is. With a little bit of effort, you should be able to make the bed operational. Oh, okay. It's where we can rest to spend our experience points. Okay, I'm down. Gotta spend one card. And we can get rid of tired, which we already did. Aw. I did that too early too. Damn it. <laughs> noob mistakes. Noob mistakes. Noob mistakes. I am a noob. Alright. So uh we can leave that for a sec though. Let's check uh the one with the hand. 422. The ground is covered with mostly broken containers. Curious, you pick them up and sniff at the remains. After finding nothing worthwhile in most of them, you discover a jar containing a liquid that smells of garlic. Immediately after this is revealed, one involved character may choose one card with the keyword Vigilance in the discard pile and add it to their hand. Okay. And now the poison resource is available as to us here. So if we had something to craft with poison, which I'm assuming something in the advanced deck, which we could get to, could need to be crafted, an item could need to be crafted from poison would be nice. That's probably something with the keyword vigilance that we'd probably be able to grab right now, but that's fine. Now let's see. Low pipe. Uh, forewarned is forearmed is a vigilance. So is the torch. Mm, is this hinting that we need to grab the torch? Hmm. Or examine the notes. Hmm. Or examine the notes. Okay. Um. Yeah. I don't know. They like examine the notes. Yeah, we're going with the notes. <laughs> okay, I'll just get rid of a think. I'll just get rid of the think. And I need to spend my knowledge's power first. Okay. Uh, so we're going to examine the notes. And we can do it for free. Uh, we know we're just getting 444, right? Is that what we talked about? Was that the card number that we haven't seen yet? I'm not going to go through that whole process. but Let's speed it up. 
Yeah, four, four, four. Okay, four, four, four. We'll get rid of examine the notes. Yep, comes from a 450. Following your instinct, you pull your journal, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Oh, this is not a good card. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, come on. It's a 103 or 107. This is horrible. Do we have 103? No, we don't have any of those. <laughs> so we have enough clues already. This is it. There's no more clues in that. This is the worst thing ever. I would have done it eventually anyway. Oh my god. Okay, so think action. I'm assuming 103 is better than 107. An incredibly violent and cruel drawing. Your journal falls from your hands and you struggle to suppress your shock and disgust. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thinky action. I have one success already. Uh, so we're just going to draw two cards. And we'll see what happens. I could reduce it down to one card, but I'm okay. Oh, nice. We succeeded. One and two. Three. All right, we succeeded. Learning from our mistakes or the flint. I feel like we're going to learn from our mistakes. Although we may need to put fire down. I don't think so. Let's just get rid of that. Okay. So we take a 103. <laughs> this is not... Man, this is feeling very dire. I don't know. Uh, we're frightened. We could take the think action to try to return it. But if we fail, we take a 107 anyway. My god. At least it's not one that made us discard cards or would have cried. Alright, that's gone. For easy. Okay. That was wrap. Uh, okay, let's look at 359. 359. What a mess. Broken tables, chairs, vases, and antiques are scattered across the ground. Oh, here it is, a spider banner. I, th I knew it. I knew there was a spider banner in here somewhere. Of course, it's the last thing I do. Uh, you wonder who or what ransacked this place, and above all, what they were looking for. Among the many bits and pieces, you find something interesting. You could take a 360, but I could add... I could add spider banner action to give us a plus 12. 372, hopefully it's a clue, but before that, we're going to go shopping. We don't have to do this yet, we don't have to do this yet, especially if it makes us like teleport or something. Okay, let's do this one. Uh, we're going to do the rest action. Oh, before that, sorry. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. It's free. And we'll take another three. Okay, this one says, examine trade cards carefully in addition to potentially hidden numbers. They may contain helpful hints, such as animal tracks suggesting the presence of wild game in the area. We have one, two, three, four, five, six... Six experience points. Okay, let's. Now we want to do this rest. We're going to draw one and, of course, pull in all just power. That's a kick in the nuts, also. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm being told dinner's ready. So, uh, yeah, we'll just uh, see where this takes us. We'll finish up on this one uh, after. But let's. Uh... Please, should we just end it here before we start ripping through advanced cards? No, let's look. Let's look. I want to look. Uh, so we have to take zero 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 zero. The so rest and recuperate is a great opportunity to reflect on your experiences from the last few days and focus on the skills you are developing. Randomly take four advanced skill cards from the game box. This is where we get in the deck building aspect, which I love. Spend X experience points to purchase the cards of your choice, where X is a purchasing cost. Each purchase advanced skill card gets either. The active player's choices shuffled into the action deck or added to the hand of one involved character. 
then return those you did not purchase, then you return this. So I know there's more of those in here. I know I added a few to this. I remember sleeving them. I don't remember what they were. I just remember seeing that they were had a cost. So we'll shuffle this up. But here's where it gets fun. Because now we add more cards to our deck. If we can afford any of them that we see. And we try to look for ones that go with the theme we're working on. Maybe that help us out with the quest. But man, or maybe just get some cheap ones just to throw them in our deck. And we can also look at the sevens and stars and stuff on the side. Uh, and maybe choose based on that. I just like this little process of uh, making some tough choices. Sometimes there's just all bad options. Sometimes you don't have many options based on the experience points you have. You can't choose certain ones. Uh, but you can do this like over and over again. So we could look at four of them, decide not to buy any of them. Then I have to spend a card to rest again. Or I could save a card maybe. No, I don't have any way to save cards with the rest. But I could save with these, but I don't think that's worth it. My deck is running low, so I don't know. We'll see. All right. One, two, three, four. Those other character skills. Put them in the wrong. Oh, they're there. Oh, yeah, I have this. Okay. Uh, so what do we get? We got knowledge is power. So this helps with knowledge is power because when you have more knowledge is power in hand, uh, you get more experience. So that could go with that. That seems very nice, but it's nine. I can't even afford it. But man, that, that sidebar is like sweet, sweet. Stuff. I love it. A fishing rod. This could help us if we can find a place to fish. Craft this for four. Could be helpful. Could be helpful. But that's five. That uses five of our experience. Now here's where we're getting to the cheaper stuff. So there's an ice axe. Which we could just take for three just to have another card. I don't know if we craft this ever. You need to be somewhere where there's bone to even make it. If we're going to be climbing or using the strength action, it helps. But it could just be an extra seven in our deck and another card, which could be helpful. And then speaking of sevens and helpful is another three cost cards. We could just get these two three costers, take the bow drill also. And this is another way to make fire. It's another card that come, could come through our deck at the right time where we could help build some fire. Was I doing it right? I think I was crafting the fire items wrong. Because I think it's like two steps to it, right? Yeah, I was doing it wrong, I think. Because I think I was crafting it, but then I don't know if I put it in my items and then made the fire. I just realized I may have been doing that wrong. Whoopsie. Yeah, where's the other one I did? Fire making kit? I don't know if I drew the two cards to put the fire into play. Now, I'm just remembering. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering. But sorry, everyone who watches this later and leaves me a comment down below telling me I cheated on the fire. Whoopsie. I may have. I don't remember. But I'll, I'll keep, it, keep an eye going forward. It's definitely two steps. Yeah. I just can't remember if I did the two steps. I feel like I got excited and maybe just did the one step and put the fire into play. Hopefully I didn't. I know better. But uh, yeah, I don't know. A fishing rod would be good for survival. It's only buying one card. Leaves me with one experience left over for later. Or I just try to get two cards and I shuffle these right into my deck right now. Just to live a little longer. That could be an extra action. That could be that extra movement I need to get to the next hunting spot. These aren't the greatest... But I just want more cards. Oh. No, I think I take the fishing rod. A any any suggestions? Any anyone has any tips or like what you would choose? I'm curious. Like I would love to know. 
Like, part of me, I'm just feeling desperate. I want to just get cards, and, and I'm not going to go through the deck again. I mean, I could. I could ignore all of these and just spend another card, but I, I also don't want to waste cards and keep digging and digging for, for I don't know what I'm looking for. Yeah, Scott, I'm in the same way. I just It just came to my brain now. I was like, oh, crap. I might have missed that. Now I was thinking about... I was looking at this one, realizing, like, oh, yeah, it's two steps to build fire. Did I do that? Whoops. Um... Yeah, anyone have any suggestions? Like, what would you do? I can't, I would, I mean, I'd love if I had nine, I would just buy this. No idea, it's a trade-off. Yeah, I don't know. Like, this is not, like, useless. But I feel like the ice axe is, like, kind of like, I don't think I'm ever building that unless I get lucky and I have it right when I'm on a spot with bone. And that's, like, I, that's not really common. <sighs> I think I'd take the fishing rod, maybe. Because it could help me later for fishing. Yep. I'm taking the fishing rod. Try to think. What would George A. tell me to do? <laughs> he would be like, no, you need to be efficient with the food. Let's go. Don't take junk cards. Yeah, we're going with the fishing. I'll spend the f uh, five experience. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. It's like uh, the gamer in me though is just like get more cards in your deck. In a game where your your deck is your life, more cards in there equals I live longer. But this has a potential. Yes, I got to spend a bunch of cards to craft it. But man, if I can get that at the right time into my inventory and then use it to fish, I could get a whole bunch more cards back into my deck. So I'm gonna just shuffle this into the deck though. I'm not gonna take it to hand. Like, I have wood, poison, and vine here, but not, not bone. George would say, boost that dex. Yes, that he would. <laughs> All right. So we have one experience point spare. We have knowledge is power. These will go back into the, so we could see some of those again. We could see some of those again, but you shuffle it every time. There's lots of choices. Wait, when did we change to the blue pond? I don't know what you're talking about. It's always been a blue pond, Scott. You're going crazy, I think. I don't, even, I don't have any other ponds. Where are you getting this idea it was a different color? You got to bang, bang your TV. I think, I think the colors are off. <laughs> Smack your monitor. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, so let's do this 360. I want to see this one. I want to see the one with the spider, and then we'll, we'll end today's stream here, and we'll continue it tomorrow. At uh, the same time with the next stream after that. So, uh, 360 with Spider was 372. Oh, we need one success for this. The Spyglass. I'll draw one card. There's no fail. I'll just do one card. Nope, we failed. I'll do it again. One card. Or do I just remember and get a success in hand? Yeah. Let's just remember... I'm not, not going to get in that loop. I've done this before. i take Solitary back to hand just in case. I'm going to draw no cards and just toss Solitary. Uh, no, maybe I'll draw one. I'll draw one if it's a fail. Oh, it's a pass. Okay. Friction Fire. Um... At some point I need to keep fire stuff nearby. Like, am I gonna be eating soon? I need to, or we're gonna die. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just put it in hand for now. All right. Uh, okay, 372, we passed, right? 372. And it says it's okay if it's coming from 359. Yep. See what happens. Part of our curse. You find an old dust-covered parchment. After blowing the dust off, you quickly examine it. I feel like we got another clue. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Secret of the Sanctuary 5 out of 6. We found four of them now, I think. One, two, 
four and six, four and five, one, two, four and five. Uh, partially faded enigmatic note room V. Definitely do not choose the dot, dot, dot of dot, dot, dot. You cannot dot, dot, dot wrong. The correct one dot, dot, dot most represented symbol on the floor of the rooms of the forbidden sanctuary. This forbidden sanctuary is going to have spiders and snakes and, and butterflies all over the floor. So we'll have to like count those up and add them up. Huh. And there's that similar art we've seen on the other one. So maybe the art's not as important, but that's interesting. Cool, cool. Yeah, so we have five, four, two, and one. We need two more, number three and number six. And based on our clues, so we know we can't find any more on this side. So I think on this side, there's clues and we know now, heavy portcullis comfortable bed is what led us to one of them. So then something about uncontrollable anger. When I got out, the wind was still. What does that mean? Increasingly tired, offered me shelter. Yeah, I don't know, but maybe the old man is one, and then that we were talking about the the uh, cold where I think he's dead. Uh, somewhere in the snow or where there's that grave or something up there uh, before you get onto the icy maze thing. That's where I think. Those are the two areas I think we need to get to, and of course they're like complete opposite sides like I, I don't know and coming out of here like we're i don't even know if we're making it out of this place um yeah because this we can't get out of here right like we have to go back around and out the normal entrance but i i, I remember there was like another way out of here there was like some elevator thing i don't know but we're gonna leave it here i think it's where we're gonna pause for today um yeah and we'll just leave it on the table we'll pick it up in tomorrow's stream so i feel good i know you guys say this is short um and like obviously don't take my stream time as how long it normally takes you to play this game or could take you if you're new to this game um but yeah we've been going for over six hours uh we have four of the clues so we need to get two more and if, if they really are to get to the old man and really to get up into the north, that's going to take a while, plus the hunting and food. So I feel like we won't get it all done in tomorrow's stream. So even though this is supposedly a shorter curse, um, it might take some time. And then we have to get back to the Forbidden Sanctuary, which I don't even know how we're getting back to that island. I, I don't know. Do we just do it from the same shore? I, I don't know. I don't know all the directions on the island to go to get back to places we need to go so like we could get a little lost but we need to get food that is the next thing get the hell out of here get back to a hunting spot and get food that's priority throw some fire down and eat i think that's what we need to do anyways that's gonna stop it here thank you everyone for your help thanks again for playing along uh we will be back tomorrow noon eastern same time this stream started we're back live tomorrow you can set a reminder or subscribe hit that notification bell if you haven't already to be notified when we go live assuming youtube sends out the notification some reason it doesn't always um but you can set a reminder too on the stream uh, and that is in the link down in the video description you'll see the playlist to this this playthrough series so if you're watching this in the future you want to get to the next episode check the playlist link down in the video description thank you everyone supporting us on patreon if you'd like to donate on patreon thanks to our new patrons and our existing ones obviously um, but thank you for supporting the channel uh, and help invest in the channel to help it grow uh, links are down in the video description below all right I'm going to get out of here and go eat some dinner, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye-bye.